What's up guys, it's your host Spartanic Arts DxD back with another high school DxD related video. And today we have What If Issei Went Solo, the full series, or the movie. It'll be the complete full series. Thank you guys so much for the support on What If Issei Found Out The Truth. Part 2 will be coming out very, very soon. I have the part in editing as of this current moment, and as soon as I'm done with it, I will release it. So once again, thank you for all that support. It's been crazy. If you guys want to know exactly when I upload such my upload schedule, click the little blue button right next to the subscribe button. So let's try to hit a thousand likes. I know that's asking for a little much on a series again. But it's the full series, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. Issei always felt like a burden, felt weak. He felt that every day since his parents were murdered. No one found the killer and did what he needed to do when it came to surviving in the streets. But how long can a mere 14-year-old boy last all alone? Eventually, he was caught stealing food for the last time, and the townspeople were chasing Issei through the forest near to the town and eventually caught him. They beat him half to death and left him on the forest floor. The crowd left except for one woman who stayed. Issei opened his eyes and saw the old woman smirking and pleaded for help. Please help me, Issei said. The woman looked at him and showed an evil grin. Now why would I help you after I toyed with you, woman, the woman said. Issei retorted weakly. What do you mean? Issei replied. That's when he saw the old woman change her appearance to a young girl around 20 years, old with pink eyes and long black hair, with a seductive body. But what caught Issei's attention was the pair of black feathered wings sprouting from her back. Who the hell are you? And what are you doing toying with me? Issei said. Well, since you're about to die, it doesn't really matter. My name is not important. I am a fallen angel and you are dead. Wait, Wait, Issei said. Before Issei could say anything, the woman picked him up from his neck while choking him and stabbed him in the chest with a light spear. Issei couldn't even scream from the intense pain. He didn't have any energy to move. She twisted the spear a bit and Issei coughed up some blood after he dropped him from leaving him to die. She flew away laughing at her prey she killed in cold blood. Issei lay there bleeding from his chest and Moon saw the spear disappear into thin air. But you see the fragments of the spear in his chest wound. He was losing blood and dying and closed his eyes and accepting his death while thinking about how he ended up here. From being in an orphanage to be put in a shitty foster homes only to be mistreated and forced to run away. Issei thinks in his head. So this is really it, huh? <laughs> My life really was a waste. Just before Issei welcomed death, he heard a voice of a woman and opened his eyes with very little energy. He had left and saw the most beautiful woman he had ever seen. A woman around his age with beautiful blue eyes and long crimson hair, with a body most women would have to kill. So you're the one, huh? My name is Rias Grimmery, and now you're all mine. She pulled out eight pawn pieces and merged them with Issei. He felt life return to his body, but still unable to move it, but it was short-lived until he felt his chest wound burning and the pain was far worse than before. So much it paralyzed him and he couldn't even flinch. He passed out from the pain. Lady woke up in the bed and remembered everything that happened. He checked his chest wound and it was gone, save, and, but it had a massive scar that burned when he touched it. It was literal painful reminder. Rias Grimmery came along with three other ladies and one guy. The woman with long black hair and pink eyes is Akino. The short her girl with blonde hair and green eyes is Azia. The other girl with short white hair and golden eyes is Konako. The handsome blonde guy is Kiba. This is where his suffering will begin now. Chapter 2 The Full 180. Issa was grateful that he was alive but soon came to resent his rebirth because he was now a devil and was forced to become a pawn or a slave in simpler terms. As time passed, Issa was forced to fight again and again and again for five years. In those five years, he unlocked his sacred gear, a small red gauntlet that doubles his power and that's why he was Rias Grimmery's pawn. She and her parage all used him as a meat shield and as a punching bag, even the ability to double his power. It barely made a difference since he was always weak no matter how hard he tried. He endured abuse from his master, was a victim of Akino's sadistic games, who turned out to be half-fallen angel. Kiba didn't care for him, or nor did Konako. Ozzy was there to heal him using his, her sacred gear Twilight Healing, but that was the closest thing to love he got from them, even though he knew that Ozzy's heal was healing him because she had to. Even after all the shit he was going through, he still, he still helped his team emotionally because he wasn't like, he wasn't like them. Issei helped Kiba. 
find the guy who killed his childhood friends during the Holy Sword Project, save Asia from a low-class straight devil named Dodoria, and help Akino accept her fallen angel side which she hated as her mother murdered for giving birth to her and being intimate with a fallen angel. All of them to attend Co Academy as a second and third year students. Everyone was basically worshipped. Rias and Akino were loved by all the students and teachers. The girls looked at Kiba as if he was a rich, good looking celebrity. Konoko was the adorable little mascot of the school, while Azia was like the little sir sister you would die for. Issei, however, was never once to receive any kind of treatment from his so-called friends. Two guys who were in the school perverts saw Issei as the scapegoat. They would go hang out with him only to hide their porn magazines in his bag or drag him to peep on girls and leave him to get beaten by all the girls since he wasn't that fast. He begged for the girls to let him explain, but they refused and made him suffer. After his new reputation as a third pervert, even Azia didn't bother healing his bruises or cuts. One day... They ordered the Devil King Sir Zex, whom Issei saw as a big brother, by the way, to kill a stray devil. As Rias and her parage went to the warehouse where the stray was last reported, Hey, stray shit, come out, Rias says. Being taunted by Rias, the stray devil came out of the shadows and had the appearance of half man, half horse, with a very strong reptile like tail and two horns. It charged at Rias. Kiba intercepted with his speed, but it couldn't cut through the tuft of the stray deep enough to only minor cuts very visible. Kiba made one cut after another until the stray was red all over, losing blood quickly. Kiba eventually got hit by the stray's tail and was tossed through a wall and knocked out. Konoko attacked with brute force, being a rook, and Akino used her fallen angel lightning to critically injure it. It worked as they all used up their strength, since they saw it was stronger than it looked. Azia stayed hidden, and Issei felt like he couldn't fight that thing since it took out the others. Rhea stepped forward and used her power of destruction to erase the stray from existence. She toyed with it, shredded its left leg, and let it bleed to death as it lay there barely breathing. Everyone thinking that it's done for good, they came forward and stood next to it. Azia was busy healing Kiba, who woke up while Rhea's talk to the stray. You put up a good fight. Any last words? Rias said. The stray looked at Rias with anger and decided to play the helpless victim role. Yes, I do. Please hear me out. Everyone looked at the stray directly and didn't notice the tail slowly extending towards Rias. Spit it out already. Die, bitch, said the stray. Rias noticed his tail was about... Rias noticed his tail was about behind her and coming it down at full speed if kiba couldn't dodge it how could she she prepared for the impact but felt a push instead and saw isei push her out of the way only to end up taking the hit head on and hitting the ground motionlessly risei took the chance to kill the stray before it had another chance to strike again isei was immediately taken to the underworld hospital and the doctors said he's that he's in a coma one week has passed and Issei was still in a coma. His master and his parage would come to check on him only because they were required to. One day, Rias and the others were sitting in Issei's room just looking at him with the content then just leave. Issei was physically present, but his mind was somewhere else entirely. In his dreamscape, there was nothing but a darkness until Issei heard a voice. How long are you going to be like this? The voice says. Huh? Who's there? Issei replied. As soon as Issei asked, a large red dragon with green eyes appeared from the darkness and flames surrounded them both. A dragon? I am Drake, the Red Dragon Emperor. You are my host. Your host, Issei said. It's about time we talked. I tried talking to you, but you could never hear me. Perhaps it was because you were not strong enough, Drake said. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm weak. Anything else? Issei said. Issei had a defeated look on his face and it angered Drake. Wipe that damn look off your face. You are the host of the Welch Dragon Drake and I refuse to let this happen when I can change it. And what can you do that I haven't already tried? I trained again and again and fought constant battles yet I barely ever get stronger when my sacred gear. So tell me, what can you possibly do? Issei said. I'll show you the truth you have denied all these years. What truth? That you have accepted your shitty life and refused to do anything about it. You have rage inside of you that, ravels, that rivals a dragon's rage. And that's so saying something. You've never shed a tear fearing that you'd be mocked before. Your so-called master and comrades talk shit behind your back and put you through torment while laboring it as endurance training. Think back, boy. You don't have to fight because you're afraid that you will become like them. A monster who preys on others. Well, guess what that boy. It's about time you did. Give them a taste. No, a full course of their own medicine. How? I'm fucking too weak, Issei said. That's why I'm here. 
I'll help you since we're partners, Drake said. Issei just stood there in silence. Use it, boy. The rage. The burning dragon's rage. And hold nothing back. Don't worry about becoming a stray. I'll help you with that. Now wake up and cut loose. Issei wakes up and immediately anyone that can tell that his dull brown eyes are no more. They had anger in them and a small gauntlet on his arm morphed into a full red dragon arm like gauntlet with two golden spikes, protruding from his elbow in sharp claws. Issei got up from the bed and noticed that his body wasn't so skinny or weak anymore. Power flowed through it like his physique looked like he started working out a little bit. Issei created a magic portal and went to his apartment in Ko Town. Ten minutes later, a nurse... Noticed that Issei was gone and lured Vrius, who was in the hospital cafeteria. He's gone? Well, won't worry. We will find him, so we don't need for the hospital or any authorities to get involved. He's my pawn, so I'll handle it. As you wish, Lady Grimbury, the nurse replies. And that is the end of Chapter 2, a full 180. Chapter 3, Confrontation. Rius tracks Issei's pawn pieces and is surprised to see that he went to Ko by himself. His magic was too weak to do that. Rhea sends Akino, Konako, and Ozzy to check on him since Kiba went to fulfill a client's contract. They arrive at his apartment and bust right in. Issei, where are you? Akino says. Akino demanded Issei came out of his room and into the living room, where the three arrived. Ever heard of knocking? Issei said. Issei never talked back before fearing more pain, but his tone implied that he no longer cares. This angered Akino. How dare you talk to me like that, Akino said. Akino shot her lightning at Issei, and he dodged it with ease. Konako tried close combat and went in straight for a kick, but Issei caught her leg and then tossed her out through the open door and hit a lamppost bending it. Ozzy is stunned from what just occurred. Akino is tending to Konako, who wasn't hurt due to her strength, and defense as a rook. As she gained her bearings and she looked at the bent lamppost, the shock on Akino's face and Ozzy's face, including the raging glare, she was getting Issei. So much that it was her unusual stoic self to show genuine fear. That glare showed to her the Issei they all knew was not him. This Issei is someone or something else entirely. Issei then spoke. I'll say this once. Leave, Issei said. This message was followed by a growl that sent a chill down their spines. The three immediately told Rias what happened. Rias ordered the three to go home and she will handle him. Rias shows up at Issei's door and knocks. Issei opens the door. What do you want? Issei said. Is that any way to talk to your master? Rias replied. Like a fuck to give. So answer my question or just leave. Issei said. The anger rose in his voice and it honestly scared her. Can we talk inside? Rias said. Grunts, but lets her in and closes the door right after her, he says. So start talking, Rias. That's the first time you ever called me by my name in four years. It's always been later Grimmery, Lady Grimmery, or just plain Master, Rias said. Issei gives her a quick glare. Right. I'm about to hear what happened with Akino and Konako. What about it? It was self-defense. How so? They attacked me first. I retaliated. Bullshit. You would never raise your hand or even talk back to us, and now you're acting like this? What the hell happened to you, Rhea said. I just got sick of the bullshit of being your pawn in a meat shield for five fucking years. You didn't think I'd noticed I was being used by you or your parage after I tried so hard to show that I cared for you guys. You could all go to fucking hell, for all I care. Rhea's got angry, too, and quickly to control herself. After everything I did for you, this is how you thank me? I never, ever wanted you... After I saw that your sacred gear was just double critical, I used all eight of my pawn pieces on you just because I had hoped that it was something useful. I would have let that fallen angel kill you, Rhea said. Rhea then covered her mouth after letting the truth roll right off her tongue. Issei widened his eyes from the info, but then closed them halfway and smirked. <laughs> See, you admit that you never saved me because you cared. You knew that I was being targeted, and yet you let her kill me. Selfish and pathetic, just like your, fi your fiancé, Riser. Excuse you? Oh, wait. You don't know? Issei said. No what? Talk, Rhea said. Her power is flaring, but Issei just laughed. You seriously don't know that Riser is cheating on you? Well, better late than never, <laughs> Issei said. He would never. Oh, but Rhea. He is, and is likely doing it as we speak, Issei replied. 
How do you know this, Rhea said. I saw him and the other woman plenty of times. Fear, see for yourself if you don't believe me. Clearly you don't know all about real love at all, Issei said. Oh, like a weakling like you does, huh? Rias replied. More than you since I was the one who used to love you. You loved me? At first, I risked my life again and again. Last week was no exception. I was in a coma for a week but for taking a hit but not anymore. I'm not going to risk my life anymore. Not not have until I'm free from being your pawn. Rias said. Rias then said that would destroy any chance you would have with him. Psh, you know what? You never had my love. Riser's the only one for me, Rias said. If you say so, Red. But don't come crying to me when you see the truth. Now if we're done, leave, bitch. And that is the end of Chapter 3, Confrontation. Chapter 4, Exposed. Rias just storms out the door and goes straight to the other world, fearing Issei's words might hold the truth. She arrived at Riser's house and is greeted by a younger sister, Ravel, a cute girl with blonde hair curled into a drill-like style. Ravel takes Rias to Riser's room and leaves knowing this was a personal visit from the expression on Rias' face. Rias opens the door and her eyes widen. There was Riser in bed with a random woman. Riser notices Rias and panicked. Rias' baby. Rias' baby. It's not what it looks like, Riser says. The woman freaked out and ran out the door after perking up her clothes. Rias, it's not what you think. I was just uh, testing her physical abilities. She wants to be a phoenix like I am, Riser said. Rhea slaps Riser hard. She then started to shed tears. He was right. You're a lying piece of flaming shit. Wait, who was? Riser said. Riser asked, demanding to know who ruined his fun. I did, you piece of shit, Issei said. Issei appeared, and Rhea immediately hugged him. Issei, you were right. I'm so sorry for hurting you. Rhea suddenly kissed Issei, then Issei pushed her off. Don't you dare try that again. Got it? Issei said. Issei gave her one and only warning. Issei? Rias replied. Just because he hurt you doesn't mean that I'm one you can cry to, Issei said. Rias began to cry as the weight of her betrayal of her lover make her rethink her life choices. Her fiancé and sh her fiancé cheated and didn't give two shits about her since she was far too in love with him and it dawned on her. That's what Issei went through and it was only made worse by her and her parage for years. Issei did more for her than her team than anyone else has, and now he doesn't give a rat's ass if they live or die. Rias became so desperate, tried to use her status as Issei's master to make him love her. Issei, I'm your master and you belong to me, heart, body, and soul, Rias said. Rias placed her hand on his chest, a truly pathetic display. Issei grabbed her hand and removed it and then said, my heart no longer beats for you, master. I don't know your so-called love, pathetically enough to deal with the mountainside bullshit that comes with it, Issei said. Rias just froze and her eyes went completely blank. Drake mentally commented to Issei, damn, that is so cold. Riser had enough of being ignored. How dare you ignore me, you low-class pawn. Riser tried to punch Issei but was struck by a large red metal whip and was sent flying back to the wall. Riser got up and looked at hit what hit him. He and Rias were left wide-eyed when they saw that a red metal whip was a tail-like appendage attached to Issei's back. Issei? What is that? And when did you get strong enough to send a high-class devil flying? Rias said. Doesn't matter. I'm out of here. Issei teleported, leaving Rias alone with Riser. How, how dare he attack me, Riser said. Rias just walked up to him and slapped him again after leaving a nice clean cut. I never want to see you again, you lying shit, Rias said. Riser's parents showed up wondering what was the cause of the small shockwave that went through the walls. Rias told them what happened and were disgusted by Riser and arranged a meeting with Sir Zex in two days' time at Co Academy. The following were asked to attend. Riser, his parents, and his parage, including Ravel, Rias and her parage, Sir Zex, and his wife, Gravia. There was tension in the room. Everyone was quiet for the first few moments. Rhea stood on one side with her project except for Issei. He stood by the window alone and just kept his eyes glued to view out the side as to avoid eye contact with anyone. Riser's parents looked at Riser with anger and worry, fearing that Sir Zex, the Devil King, might erase them from existence for cheating on Rhea's. Azia, Konako, and Kiba, and Akano all stood in 
quietly after finding out what happened through Rius. Rius didn't lie to them or Sir Zex since enough damage was done. Sir Zex broke the silence and finally said, Thank you all for coming. Let's not forget, let's all forget the pleasantries and get to the point. As we all know what Riser has been found guilty of cheating on Rius, which is against our laws and moral code. There are a few, there are a few eyewitnesses and myself have confirmed that they are all told the truth. Riser also attacked my sister's pawn, Issei, when he exposed Riser's action. The public sees both Rius and Riser as a perf couple and do not know of what has happened yet. Any last words? Any words from the head of the Phoenix Clan? Riser's father spoke up. My king and my lady Rius, we truly meant it. We truly mean it when we say that we are sorry for what our son did. It was a despicable act and we beg for your forgiveness, but please do not break off your engagement. Rius looked at them with shock, thinking how could they ask her not to break it off? How could I not leave him after this? He cheated on me with the whole time we were together. He'll continue to do it even if we're married, Rius said. Rius's mother, I mean Riser's mother, spoke up. We know that you hate us for asking. But there are so few pure blood devils with strengths like yours and Riser's nowadays. So I'm just a breeding tool? That's not what we meant. Oh, just end it already, Issei said. Everybody looks at Issei and turns to him. How can you not see that it'll end up the worst case scenario down the line? So if Rius does get married, she'll be bound to that narcissistic fried chicken and have kids with someone she clearly doesn't love and will either run away or kill herself. All while she's going out there, anything he wants to just save those poor kids from being born into a messed up life like they had no choice. Issei, Rius said. Everyone just looks at him because he voiced what everyone was thinking. Riser got mad at Issei for disrespecting him yet yet again in front of the devil King Sir Zex, no less. You have disrespected me for the last time, boy, Riser said. Riser and all of the women parage prepared to attack Issei except for Ravel. Sir Zex and his wife, Queen Grapia, flared their powerful auras and made Riser, along with his parage, fees in their place from fear. Their auras combined felt like a death was upon them. That's enough out of you, Riser. If I wasn't the Devil King then, I would have taught you a lesson myself, but luckily the stars that I restrained myself, Sir Zex. Yes, my king, I apologize, Riser said. So how do we resolve this issue, Gravia said. Everyone began to think until Issei said, How about an unofficial rating game? A small private match? No one will bother us, and the winning team decides on the next course of action, Rius, Issei said. I agree. Riser, I challenge you to a rating game. Right here and right now, Rius said. Ha, you can't be serious. I've won seven official rating games and I have a full team. You only have one knight, one rook, one bishop, and your queen in one weak pawn. This weak pawn sent you flying, Issei said. A low-class devil teaching a phoenix how to fly. Oof, Drake said in his head. Everyone laughed under their breath. Looks like the phoenix got burned, Rius said. Hmm, fine, I accept your challenge, Riser said. Rius, you should think this through. Riser has a large advantage. Take some time to train and plan, Sir Zex said. No need. We are more than capable of handling them, Rius said. So what are the terms, Riser replied. If we win, the engagement is off, Rius said. And if you lose, I... Rius didn't finish. You can have me. I'll join the Phoenix Clan, and you can marry Rius, Issei said. Everyone's jaws hit the floor. Issei, have you lost your mind? Rius said. Pretty much. But I know what I'm doing. You'll join us? And what can you offer, huh? R Riser said. If you can beat me, then I can assure you you won't be disappointed. Being a phoenix doesn't sound so bad, to be honest, Issei said. You're willing to leave us? Ozia replied. Oh, fuck the hell yes I am. At least Riser isn't abusive like you and actually cared for his parage, Issei replied. Everyone's surprised at his words. Sir Zex, Grafia, and Riser's parents all look at Rius and her team. Neither her team... Or neither her or her team made eye contact with anyone. Riser was happy to see that he hated her more than him. Ha! <laughs> I'm almost starting to like you. All right, then I accept your term. Shall we begin? Riser said. Sir Zex sighs and Grafia teleports them both teams to a small field, while Sir Zex and Riser's parents watch through the screens from spectators both. Booth. The field has large boulders and trees that can be used as cover. Some plants, ferns, and mushrooms were growing too. Each team has 10 minutes to plan. Your time starts now. 
Rias looks towards Issei. Issei, why did you offer yourself to him? I have my reasons, Issei said. Care to at least share that with us? No. Now, just focus on the match. He's a phoenix, remember? Issei replied. Everyone went quiet and began to plan. Clearly, he didn't want to talk to them. After five minutes, Rias had a plan. Akito, you can handle his queen. Her explosion magic is too strong, but you're the only one who can handle her. Use your holy lightning. Konako can handle the rooks. They, like their master, are too arrogant to make them train, making them easy targets. Same with the push-ups. Kiba, I want you to set a trap for his two knights. Azu, we need you to heal any injuries. And Issei, Issei looks at her. Think you can handle the pawns? You can promote, but so can they, Rias replied. I can handle it. Then I'll fight Riser, Rias said. Just keep him busy long enough for me to get there after I'm done, Issei said. Issei, we noticed that you're a lot stronger, and you have a few days ago, but to fight Riser alone, he can regenerate. It's a signature ability of the Phoenix Clan, Kiba says. That's not going to help him. What do you mean, Azia said. You'll see. He has a crazy grin on his face and sent shivers up their spine. And that is the end of Chapter 4, Exposed. Chapter 5, The Unofficial Rating Game The match was underway. Kiba used his speed and the tree as camouflage and set up traps. Konoko and Akano moved forward and waited for Riser to make the first move because due to inexperience, they dared not try. Seconds later... Two knights from Riser's team came in head-on with malicious grins, but didn't notice the traps. They triggered and pitfalls fell in and followed by large boulders being pushed in by Konako, not before Kiba fought them to divert their attention from the traps and fell for them. Both Riser's knights retired, Gravia said. Two bush-ups and four pawns came in next. One pawn held a staff. One was a fist fighter while the other two carried chainsaws. Konako shattered the ground with the rook's strength, and Kiba used his sacred gear sword to birth to create multiple swords from the ground. Without any proper balance, both bush-ups and three pawns were impaled. Riser's two bush-ups and three pawns retired, Grafia said. The fourth pawn used her staff to push herself away and promoted to rook. She and Konoko were in close combat, none having the upper hand during their seven minute fight, but fatigue started to set in. Konoko barely managed to dodge the critical hit from the staff, but took the chance to break it. She then punched Riser's pawn in the gut and sent her flying through the trees. Riser's fourth pawn retired. Kiba already tired from digging the traps, and Konoko wasn't doing too well either, but could still fight. As soon as she caught her the second wind, she was hit with an explosive spell and hit the boulder nearby. Konoko looked up and saw Riser's queen, aka the bomb queen. Konoko was no match for her and prepared to get blasted again until she heard the lightning strike. Akino flew up and challenged the bomb queen one-on-one -on -one fight. The two queens attacked each other relentlessly with lightning and bomb magic. Both were injured in pain and nearly made them pass out. Then Akino was enveloped by a green light and her injuries were healing. What the? How are you healing your fellas? Bomb queen replied. I'm not. Our bishop is our healer. You guys have phoenix tears. We have her. Akana replied. The bomb queen looked towards Azia standing next to Rias. She notices her sacred gear rings on her finger. This infuriated her that she was distraction Akana needed. She used her holy lightning to max and struck down the bomb queen. Riser's queen retired. Only Riser and his four pawns remained. Rias calls her team through a communication circle and orders them to regroup. Back to base, everyone. Take a small break and recover. We can still win this. Everyone except Issei returns to Rias. All right, so now only four pawns remain. Wait, where's Issei? Riser's last four pawns retire. What the? Team Rias in surprise. Issei returns to base a minute later with his hands covered in blood. The others just look at him and ah. Uh, Issei, is that blood? Kipa said. Nope. I just took out the last four pawns while Riser was busy looking at you guys fight. He nor his pawns noticed me after I sped by and I beat them with a hint of blood. Issei said. But how did you beat them? Just drawing blood from punching them isn't enough to stop them? Akino said. There were a few poisonous plants here. I used the shards of wood to prick their skin and waited for the poison to take effect. The poison will paralyze them for a while, but it won't kill them. They'll be fine, Issei said. That's a really good plan. Nice work, Rias said. I don't need you to tell me that, Issei said. He glares at her. Rias could have sworn that his eyes almost turned green for a split second. Just then, Riser appeared in the middle of the field and called them out. Rias, this has gone on long enough. I invite you and your team to fight me, Riser said. 
Reyes and the others looked at her and nodded in agreement. They made their way to Riser. Glad you came, Riser said. Oh, shut it, Riser. We beat your whole parage and still have all our members. You can't win, Reyes said. Ha! People think I'm arrogant. I told my team to take it easy on you and let you, you let you guard down. I wanted to take, f I wanted to take the fun of taking you and your whole team down all by my own, just to teach you a lesson. Riser said. Why would you do that? Rhea said. Because you look at your team. Not only do you lack members, but they were barely ready to fight. Just look into their eyes. They are distraught. But I commend you from taking out my team in your current state, Riser said. Rias looks at her team and notices that Kiva, Akano, Konoko, and Azia were distraught as if the weight of the world was on their shoulders. You should have taken some time to train and compose yourself, I said. Like I said, Riser said. I hate to admit it, but you're right. So I'll take you on alone. Her team immediately refused. Like hell you will. We fight together. Kiba and Azia. Yeah! Heh. <laughs> Issei just replied. Rias notices that Issei didn't bat an eye or even look at her. He just shot on a rock. Rias was hurt after Issei told her that he doesn't care about her or the team and won't help her now that he was proving it. Her heart shattered. I'm sorry, everyone. I was impatient and dragged you all into this. I'll fight him alone. And that's an order from your king. Everyone except Issei were about to refuse, but Rias made them stay. Rias walked up to Riser and wasted no time attacking. She hit Riser with her power of destruction, not even holding back, but Riser's regenerated his injuries every time. Rias erased his limbs, his organs, and even his head, but Rias regenerated those too, but Riser regenerated those too. If blasting his head off won't kill him, then what will? Rias was completely drained and fell on her knees. Are you done soon? Riser said. Rias was just getting hit by realization. She and her whole time were on the edge of she and her whole time were on the edge of giving up, but she couldn't give up. If she gave up, then she'll lose to Issei. She wanted to make things right with him, and now her team was too tired to fight a guy who was basically immune to all of her attacks. Just give up, Rias. You can't win, Riser said. Rias was on the verge of tears in hopeless situation. She was a horrible master and hurt them, and she was forced to marry Riser. Karma is a bitch. Issei got up and walked towards Rias. Looks like I'm up. Why don't you go back to the others and let me handle it, Issei said. Rhea snaps out of her pathetic stick and just looks at Issei. He can regenerate. How can you beat him, Rhea said. That's what I'm relying on. Wait, what? You heard me now. Now go back and let me end this, Issei said. About time you stepped up. That raging look in your eyes has me all fired up. So much I might actually end up killing you, Riser said. You won't get the chance. Issei replied, and that's the end of chapter 5, the unofficial rating game. And that is where we're going to leave off for part 1 of what if Issei went solo. Now I know exactly he hasn't gone solo or rogue yet, whatever you want to call it, okay, but he will eventually, I promise you that. This story is absolutely amazing, I really hope you guys are enjoying it so far, it's it's seriously so good. It's called The Fallen Dragon King, all credits to the author down in the description below, of course. I'm just the narrator, I fix some dialogue here and there, and that's why I mess up sometimes, because I get confused reading it sometimes but thank you guys all for support let's try to hit 600 likes as i said okay again the support on my channel has been absolutely fucking crazy if you guys want to know exactly when i upload join the little blue membership button a little blue button right next to the subscribe button and thank you guys all for your support you know it'd be amazing if we hit like even a thousand likes on this video that'd be fucking crazy because this series is gonna go hard i don't even know how to tell you but thank you guys again i don't know how many times i gotta say it thanks for all the support thanks for all the likes thanks for all the subs i appreciate y'all man without further ado spartanic arts dxd out what's up guys it's your host spartanic arts dxd back with another high school dxd related video and today we have what if isei went solo part two let's try to hit the like goal of 600 like again and if you guys want to know exactly when i upload click the little blue button right next to the subscribe button Thank you guys so much for the support. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. Chapter 6, Showdown. Issei promoted to Rook. He and Riser charged at each other, both took a punch in the face. Both stumbled back, but Riser recovered quickly and went for him for another punch. Issei dodged to the side and parried his punch, then countered with a punch to Riser's temple. This distorted Riser and gave time for Issei to bust up Riser's knee. He kicked in Riser's knee and crack sound very, very audible. And so was Riser's scream. Konoko and Azia flinched at the sound. Riser's healing factor would kicked in and his knee healed completely. Riser then kicked Issei only for a... 
only for it to be blocked. Issei broke his leg again and then tossed his riser through a boulder. Issei picked up a large rock and tossed it at riser. Riser dodged, but it didn't expect the small rock coming towards him at super speed. The rock went right through his chest and he healed almost instantaneously. But Riser was getting angry and stopped holding back. He charged at Issei faster than before and punched him in the face. Issei was sent through several trees but got back up and made his way to Riser. This time Riser sent fireballs at him and actually hit Issei directly in the chest. The burning sensation made Issei scream from physical pain. He was breathing heavily after that and didn't notice Riser about to tackle him to the ground. Issei looked at Riser and saw a face of a pissed off phoenix way too close to dodge. Riser tackled him to the ground and engulfed his own one hand in flames while the other one choked Issei. Issei could barely breathe and his root promotion timed out. You fought well, boy, but you lose. Rius will be mine and I'll have fun torturing you starting now, Riser said. Riser pressed his flamed fist on Issei's chest started, and started burning Issei without killing him. Issei could barely let out a scream since Riser was choking him. That hot burning sensation was the same as the day he was killed by a fallen angel, and now he's reliving it again. Issei's eyes rolled back in the back of his head and Riser stopped thinking he killed Issei. Whoops, looks like he's dead, Riser said. Everyone was staring at Issei was laying there motionless, while Riser just stood up and grinned at his victory. Rias got up and flared her aura from rage, but it vanished after a few seconds and Rias broke down crying instead of the rest of her team. No need to cry for such a weakling, Riser said. That's when everyone felt a dark energy, and it was enough to make Riser tense. They looked at the source and saw it was coming from Issei, who was now standing. Riser backed away and started to sweat. Issei emitted a dark red aura, what no one would have expected. Even Sir Zex and Gravia, along with Riser's parents. Issei looked at Riser with killing intent and said the two words that no one will forget. Balance. Break. A full red gauntlet appeared on Issei's arm and his energy skyrocketed and what everyone saw was the red dragon with green eyes appear behind Issei. It let out a powerful roar and descended upon Issei embracing him. A red light revealed Issei clad in full red armor with the same very metallic whip. Like a tail he hit Riser with a bigger and stronger. A pair of red dragon wings and a helmet with two golden horns. The two golden spikes protruding from his elbows. The spikes were hollow. Issei officially made his debut as the Red Dragon Emperor for the Devil King and Phoenix Clan. Issei, you're... Damn, Rhea said. Issei ignored her and ignited his thrusters and flapped his wings at the once, which he set him rocketing towards Riser, and Roundhouse kicked him in the ribs, easily breaking them. Issei then uppercut Riser and sent him several meters into the air. Before Riser could even spread his wings, fire wings, Issei appeared from above and kicked him straight down. Riser hit the ground enough force to create a small crater. Issei landed next to Riser to see if he was still conscious to pleasure he was. Riser stood up quickly and was breathing heavily. So, this is what you meant by having a surprise. <laughs> Riser took more deep breaths and steady himself. Not bad, all kid, but you won't win. Riser gathered a massive fireball in his hands above Issei's head. Issei chose to strike before Issei scorched the field and everyone on it. Issei radiated his claws and from the spikes on his elbow erupted flames. Issei went straight to Riser and pierced his chest with the help of thrust on his elbows. Issei grabbed Riser's heart and said, Give up or die painfully. Are you stupid or something? Crushing my heart won't do anything. I'll just regenerate, you fool. I warned you, Issei said. Began squeezing Riser's heart and it twisted without damaging it. Riser suddenly started shaking and screaming from pain. What are you doing? It hurts, damn it! Let it go! Why does it hurt? Riser said, That's because I'm not crushing your heart. Just stop the blood flow. Enough to hurt you but not kill. Right now your regeneration is useless. So there's no damage to any of my arm going through your chest. I'm giving you a heart attack. Alright, alright, alright. I give up. You win. Let go. Please, Riser said. All right, but only if you said please. Issei tossed Riser aside and Riser retired. Riser's phoenix has surrendered. Rias Grimmery wins. Nobody could believe that Issei went from being one of the weakest to being the strong enough to beat Riser, who is well known as a high-class devil on his own. Issei dispelled his armor, and only the gauntlet remained. Well done, partner. Achieving complete balance breaker on your first attempt is a feat that none of my previous hosts have achieved. Be proud, Drake said. Issei was clearly drained of almost all of his energy using his balance breaker and going all out against Riser. Thanks, Drag.
Issei said. Issei walked towards the tree and sat down, then leaned on it and tried to catch his breath. Rias and the others took their sweet time to come over their senses, but then again they can't be blamed as the situation did a full 180 and they won. After processing what happened, Rias got up and ran towards Issei. Issei gave her a glare and stopped midway and closed his eyes. Rias just stood there feeling conflicted. So many emotions, but none greater than regret and sorrow. Sir Zex appeared, along with Grafia and Riser's parents. Issei stood up and bowed to them, since he still respected them. Issei, I am truly impressed by what you did. Congratulations, Sir Zex. Thank you, my lord, Issei said. Issei, I already told you you're like my brother, so no need to be formal with me, Sir Zex said. Yeah, sorry, Sir Zex. You are uh, the devil king, after all. <laughs> well, that's true. So, Issei, I was thinking since you turned the tide, I'll grant you any wish you desire. I thank you, but if it's alright with you, then can I have some time to think about it? Of course you can. Now the rest of you, go get your injuries checked, except for you, Rias, you should stay. Sir Zex said, alright, Rias replied. Akino, Azia, Konako, and Kiba go to the medical room via teleportation. Riser's parents came forward. Issei and Rias, we apologize for everything our son has put you through, said Rias' father. If there's anything we can do to make it up to you, let us know, Rias' mother said. We appreciate the offer, but there's no need. What matters is that it's all over and no one will know, Issei said. I hope I'm not wrong to say this, but I'm glad you won, Rias' parents, uh, Riser's parents said. Issei and Rias looked up with a surprise. Riser was too full of himself, and despite our best efforts to teach him on humility and respect, but hopefully his loss will teach him that lesson. We'll be better get going now and check on Riser and Ravel. Take care, Riza's pa Riser's parents leave. But they both teleport away, leaving Gravia, Sir Zex, Issei, and Rias. Now, will someone care to explain what happened to your team, Rias? They were barely good as their usual selves. Yes, do tell, Sir Zex said. Both of them were dead serious. Even though it was hard, Rias told the truth everything that happened in the past five years. Both Grafia and Sir Zex were livid at how Rise treated Issei, but calmed down enough to think rationally after hearing the recent events a few days prior to the match. I'm really disappointed in you, Rias. Normally I'd punish you by handing over your territory of Ko to Son of Citri and revoke your high class status, but I think you've been punished enough. Issei, I'm sorry that you went through all of this, but why didn't you come to us about this? If you were so unhappy and no longer loved Rias, I would have done something, Sir Zex said. I did because I owed myself for saving my life, even though she was partly the reason behind my death, but I didn't want you to trouble you with something like that, Issei said. You think that's what you went through was little? You suffered for five years and fourteen before that. You suffered every step of the way, Grafia said. Yeah, but no more. I'm done. I've saved her life, she saved mine, so now we are even and I'm no longer the weakling everyone knew, Issei said. You did get strong, and to be the Red Dragon Emperor, wow. It was awesome, Sir Zex said. Thanks. Well, we should all go home. Is that all right with you? That's right. You should have school tomorrow, but it's understandable. If you want to take a day or two off, that's fine, Grafia said. I actually want to. There's something I need to do, Issei said. Like what? Rias replied. You'll see. It's going to be fun. Fun for whom? Grafia said. I guess we'll see, Issei replied. All right, you two go home and get checked by the medical team, then go home. Both Issei and Rias bowed and then left. And that is the end of Chapter 6, Showdown. Chapter 7, Broken. Team Rias were all sitting in the medical room and got patched up from the injuries. The medic allowed them to go home and they were all teleported to the park in Co Town. Everyone was silent and just stood there. Issei looked at the night sky and felt the cold breeze. He then looked at his phone. It's almost midnight as he plans tomorrow then begins walking towards his apartment. Issei, wait, Akuna says, what is it, Akano? Issei said. He asked in an annoyed and angry tone. Thanks for saving Rias. Also, we're sorry for how we treated you. We just wanted to get you stronger. Akano, stop, Rias said. Issei is now extremely livid. You wanted to make me strong? Cut the fucking bullshit. You guys turned me into your fucking punching bag under the presumption that you're doing it all to help me. After all I did for you spoiled bitches. Kiba, I helped you with the holy sword shit. Saved Azia from getting raped from the attorney from that weak shit to Doria and helped you and Akuna with your fallen angel side even though I hate them as much as you did. But there's a difference, Akuno. Humans killed your mother and not fallen angels. Only I was the one they killed. By the way, Rius, when you reincarnate someone who was killed by a light spear, make sure they don't have shards of the said spear still embedded in their fucking skin, you dumb bitch. 
You only made me suffer more than I already did. It still fucking hurts to this day. To feel my body burning, not being able to breathe, it was just like five years ago. You were... There, watching as the fallen whore impaled my chest and twisted that fucking spear. Do you have any idea how that feels? Fuck, why did I even think I could love you? Love any of you? They all stayed silent, and he let out everything he held in for years. After a minute or two, Issa continues, but in a low and broken voice. <laughs> no one wanted me. I was cursed, but my life gave my life to you because you gave me a place in this world. I thought I was finally doing some good, but... You are, Rhea said, meaning you was the worst luck of my life, Issei said. Issei finally let it all out, to the point where even he shed tears. He didn't. He couldn't even look at any of them in the eyes. If I had known how this... If I had known this is how I would be treated, then I never would have helped any of you. Ozzy, I can tell you saw me as a burden. I always saw your expressions when you healed my injuries. You were hated healing me. A part of me is grateful for you, but now I wish you never did, and unlike a certain redhead, I wish you have let me die. Everyone was stunned by Issei's words. He was so cold and heartless towards them, and they finally, and they were just like him. And it made them see he was telling the truth. This was their breaking point. Everyone started crying, but then again, what else can you do after that? I'm done with this. I'm just done. I helped you guys, and I saved Rius. My debt is paid. Also, congrats, Rius, on being free. Now it's my turn. Wait, what? Rius said. Issei summons his gauntlet and envelops it in green energy, then puts it right through his chest. Everyone got up to stop him, but were pushed back from a burst of energy. They opened their eyes to see Issei holding eight pawn pieces, and he dropped them on the ground. Why, why would you do that? You'll die! Those were linked to your soul, Rius said. Issei starts to have a nosebleed, and his vision becomes a little blurry. Like I even care anymore. Oh, and don't worry. I set up a barrier so no one can hear us. Goodbye, master, Issei said. Issei walks away and disappears into the darkness, leaving the others feeling rejected and miserable. Rias picked up the pawn pieces and noticed that they were went from red to full white. This were nothing left of their magical properties. Rias immediately contacted her friend Sona, asking help via communication circle. Hello, Rias, Sona said. Sona, I need your help. It's an emergency. Just come quickly, Rhea said. Teleports to the park. She sees everyone on their knees and crying in a panicked voice. What happened? Sona said. Rhea just shows her eight useless pawn pieces. Sona just covers her mouth from shock. Those are Issei's pawn pieces. Don't tell me he's dead, Sona said. He removed them by force and now we have no idea where he is. Please help me find him. Sona nodded and contacted her team and ordered them to spread out. He couldn't have gone far after they didn't know what Issei was used to his balance breaker wings and flew to his apartment. Issei grabbed the essentials like cash and ID just before leaving Issei started to cough up blood. Looks like the Gremory girl was telling the truth. You're dying, but I can help fix that, Drake said. How so? Issei replied. Since you're human again, I can turn your body into that of a dragon. You'll have powers again, and be stronger than before, and use Balance Breaker for longer periods of time, Drake said. But, Issei said, you'll have draconic features over time, and it won't be painless, it'll take months. I'm used to being in pain, Issei said. Very well. Then we should go somewhere secluded. I sense devils coming towards us. The mountains. They won't suspect me to go there. There's even a forest beyond that. It'll be safe there, Issei said. We should leave now before it's too late. What's your plan at school? Drake said. I can execute it later. Let's get out of here, Issei replied. Issei flies away into the forest just a minute or two before Sona arrives with Rias. They looked around and noticed that Issei isn't here. Where is he? Rias said in a worried, panicked tone. Rias, look, Sona replied. Sona pointed towards the blood puddle on the floor. Oh no, 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 Rias said. Rias started sobbing uncontrollably, while Sona just hugged her friend. Sona called Rias' team and let them know what they found. News later reached her sex and Grapey, and they were too broke down after Rhea showed them the pawn pieces. No, not my little brother. Why didn't I look after him? Sir Zex said. He went through so much, and we just let him go without helping it or comforting him, Grapey said. We need to have a search party out, ASAP, Sir Zex said. And that is the end of Chapter 7. Broken. Chapter 8. Return. No one could find Issei anywhere, almost as if he vanished. Surzex himself searched for a long time with Team Rias and Team Sona. They checked every part of Ko, no trace of Issei's energy at all. It's as if he was truly dead, and the blood in his apartment along with the memories of him were all remained.
Everyone decided to go home after a fruitless all-night search. They knew Issei wouldn't survive more than an hour after forcefully removing his pieces, but Rise, Rias refused to stop looking. Team Rias and Team Sona still had the attend to go to school the next day, but Team Rias didn't care and continued to search for him for two days. Straight. Even searched the near them by the mountains but to no avail rius and her team along with Zex and grafia were devastated at the loss of isei only an hour or so after showing his power as the red dragon emperor they were completely guilt-ridden and giving up after finding no evidence that he's alive they declared him dead news spread throughout the school that isei was dead and rumors about his death gave everyone mixed emotions some were happy but some were actually sad because isei never really hurt anyone those two perverted guys showed no sense of loss over their friend they eventually had to live their lives, but it wasn't the same. Rias never really recovered and lived with the guilt, as did her team. All four of them kept one or two of his pawn pieces as a reminder to be better and treat others right regardless of their strengths and weaknesses. For the first month, Rias would have nightmares of Issei laying in a pool of blood. Repeating those words, he went when, to them when he was still alive. She would wake up screaming or start crying or even tried to avoid sleeping as to not have nightmares but lack of sleep made her hallucinate and would see a glimpse of Issei. What hurt more was seeing that not even the hallucination smiled because he never did ever since he, she reincarnated him. Only anger, sorrow, or tear stained face, Rhea says to herself. Issei, I'm so sorry. I just wanted to make things right, Rhea said. Her team and Sir Zex would come to check on her since they feared better as compared to her, since they fared better compared to her. No words brought her peace and stayed alone. She tried to appear strong, but everyone, including the kids in the school, noticed that she was clearly in pain. It started when Issei died. Now back to Issei. Scene break. The night he went deep into the forest, he sat under the tree and spoke to Drake. Alright, now let's do this, Issei said. Drake, right. Since his Drake sends his draconic energy through Issei's body, and Issei grunts from the pain. His body becomes more muscular. His eyes grow from brown to emerald green with slit pupils. Scales appear on his body, along with claws in his teeth, now that had long, sharp fangs. The pain finally stops, and Issei relaxes. Sorry about the pain. I had to accelerate the process to save your life, Drake said. I'm glad you did. The quicker, the better, Issei replied. Drake, it's not over yet. Your horns, tail, and wings will grow soon. It'll be more painful than what you experienced moments ago. Why am I not surprised, Issei said. Rest for now. We will begin training your newfound power in a few days and adjust to your new senses, Drake replied. Sounds good, Issei said. Also, you continue to surprise me. Hmm? What do you mean, Issei said. Not only did you achieve Balance Breaker, but became the first devil who removed his pieces by force and lived, then turned into a dragon by your own volition. Ha, <laughs> thanks, Drake. Dragons are way better than devils anyway, Issei said. Ha, <laughs> that's right. Now rest. You need it, Drake said. Sounds good. Issei immediately falls asleep. He started training and lived off in the forest for a few months, but made his own way to town every now and then. In the time, he became stronger. His horns, tail, elbow blades, and made an appearance, but both were hollow and flames like blowtorch erupted endlessly, which Issei learned to stop releasing and even used them in various attacks. His wings, however, were taking some time to develop. Drake kept Issei's aura from being depicted by anyone. A few months have passed, and Issei eventually decided that he's strong enough and that he doesn't want to live in the forest anymore. Plus, he's got the shit to deal with at school. It's about time he has made an appearance. The next day, Issei used his magic to make himself look presentable. He wore black jeans and sneakers along with a nice red t-shirt and white black jacket. And with a black jacket. He tried his now long hair in a small ponytail and used his magic to hide his dragon features thus looking like more like human self and now he's taller he went from 5'7 to 6'2 Issei walked into the school one morning and everyone was staring at him no one recognized him at first but one of the girls Murahama she walked up to him and said Issei is that really you? yeah it's me Issei said OMG Issei you're alive! Murahama exclaimed for all to hear to everyone was shocked to see the dead, weak, skinny pervert was now this good-looking, strong, tall guy. The news spread like wildfire and reaches the ears of Rias along with the two perverts. Rias didn't believe it. She spent months mourning his loss and still haven't recovered. These two perverts got to Issei at first and said, Issei, my man, you're back. No way. We're happy that you're back, dude. Now that you say we're going to go check some girls for old time's sake, Perv2 said. 
Issa got pissed and grabbed him by their necks and lifted him in the air. You fucking pieces of shit. Even after all this time, you still haven't changed. I came here to clear my name so I can get on with my life. And now you two... And since you two are the cause of it, then I'll prove it to everyone. Both were barely able to speak. Dude, we're friends. Why would you... What are you doing? Perv 1 said. Yeah, man, we never did anything wrong, Perv 2 said. Issa slammed both of them and knocked them and knocked out the wind out of them. You don't know what it means to be a friend. You're going to confess that bastards you set me up. Issei said. The crowd gathered around them and started recording on their phones. Now then, tell them you were the ones who put those magazines in my bag and locker. Tell them that you made me peep on the girls and let them take the fall when you were spotted, Issei said. What are you talking about? <laughs> Perv one said. Issei broke his hand like a twig. Each lie will turn you a broken bone. And now you have five seconds to tell the truth. Yeah, we never did- <laughs> Perv 2 said. Wrong answer, scumbag. Issei broke his arm and bent it 180 degrees. Some of the people in the crowd screamed and gagged. They never knew Issei was so brutal. The screams caught the attention of both Rias and Sono, who came in to investigate but had to get through the crowd, large crowd, and but Rias heard a familiar voice. Tell them the truth now or I break your dicks next. Okay, okay, I admit it was us. Yeah, we all did. We're sorry. Now please let us go. Have mercy. Both started while crying. I did show mercy. Both of you... I did show mercy. Both of you can still jerk off with your own arms. The crowd went, oh snap. Rias finally gets through the crowd and sees the two perverts, each with a broken hand and arm respectively, then looks at the man who stood tall and was clearly the one who did this. It was him. It was Issei. Issei began to walk away after doing what he came for. The crowd began to diverse and pervs ran away from the crowd of girls that were going to kill them for using Issei as their scapegoat. Rias ran up to Issei and just hugged him. You're alive. You came back. We all thought you were dead. Rias began to cry for tears of joy, and people noticed Rias Grimray was now smiling tears of joy hugging Issei, who broke the bones of two perverts less than a minute ago. Did she like him? Issei noticed the crowd whispering inside. Rias, let go. As far as everyone is concerned, the Issei you all barely knew is dead. No, you're wrong. You're still the Issei we love. Please just come back to us. I won't let you go till you do. Rias said, Akino, Kiba, Konako, and Ozzy came over to see what was happening, and Sona just looked on. She knew something bad had happened, but no one wanted to talk about what had happened. Only that Rias broke off the engagement in that Issei beast riser. Rias' team all came up to Issei and saw it really was him, and now that he's stronger than before, he's got so much raw power in him now. Issei removes Rias' hand by force and looks at her. He noticed that she doesn't look like her usual self, judging from the dark circle skin. I don't want to make a bigger scene, so let's go to the ORC room and talk. Also, call Sir Zex. I actually miss that guy, Issei said. Rias and the others go to the ORC, then call Sir Z Rias then calls Sir Zex. Issei only said that he misses Sir Zex and not them. Ouch. Rias, do you need something? Sir Zex said. There's someone here to see you. ASAP, you sound serious. I'll be right over. Sir Zex appeared through a magic portal with Grapia and asked, All right, who's the one that you want me to meet? He notices a tall man in the room and noticed the similar energy. I can't believe my eyes. Is that you? Sir Zex replied. Issei, Grapia said. Hey, guys, I missed you. Issei had a genuine smile that none of them had seen in years. Both Sir Zex and Grapia just hug him right with the tears in their eyes. We missed you too, little brother, Grapia said. And that is the end of chapter 8, Return. Chapter 9, Reunion. After hugging for more than a minute or two Sir Zex, and first to let go, Issei, where have you been for the past few months, Sir Zex said. We looked everywhere for you, Akana replied. Issei completely ignored Akana and responded to Sir Zex. I guess I owe you an explanation. I simply had enough of my life and wanted to be free. I removed my pieces and went deep into the forest. From there, I asked Drake to change my body from human to dragon. I can sense a dragon's aura, but you look completely human, Sir Zex said. Oh, wait. Issei dispelled his magic and his eyes changed from brown to green, dragon-like eyes, his horns, claws, nailed, and elbow spikes, but no flames were released. What? Everyone said. I wouldn't have survived if it wasn't for Drag. Issei summoned his sacred gear on his arm. Greetings, everyone. I am the Welt's dragon, Drag. Sir Zex and the others greeted Drake and thanked him for saving Issei. He, Sir Zex, and Grafia all had drinks together and caught up like the old friends while Rias and the others just sat there in silence. They all just stared at Issei and thought about how he was actually laughing with Sir Zex. He never laughed with any of his teammates over, he even smiled. 
The fact that Issei would rather die than spend another minute with them kite right through their souls. Issei, I'm really glad that you are right, but there's one thing I want to know. It's about whom I will join, right? Issei said. Yeah, I've thought about it and I won't join anyone. Everyone was saddened by in response. But I'll be your ally since you and Gravy have been kind to me. However, there's one condition, Issei said. Which is, I'll help you and Serzex only. No one else. I won't join your spoiled sister's parage ever again. Issei said. Rias and the others dreaded those words. Sir Zex and Grafia noticed that even their hurting inside, so they decided to change the topic. So I heard you broke the arms of two guys here. What was that about? Payback. They look. They made me look like a pervert and made my school life hell while all pretending to be friends. Just because I was weak. I became a target, but now everyone here knows the truth. They recorded it, and I might ask one of them to share the video with me. Their screams and bones breaking in is music to my ears. A chill went up everyone's spine. Why didn't you go to Sona for help? <laughs> I honestly, I don't know. All that crap was part of my everyday life, so I guess it wasn't worth it, Issei said. I wish you did tell her. That could have helped. We could have, Grapia said. It doesn't matter now. I handled it and I cleared my name. It's very satisfying, Issei said. Issei had a mad grin and it made everyone a bit nervous. Now that I think about it, I've been gone for months, and after of my third year, I have a lot to catch up on, Issei said. Should we tell him? I'll do it. Tell me what, Issei said. After you were declared dead, the school decided to give you an honorary graduation cer certificate in memory of you. Really? But I was so hated, so why, Issei said. The administration didn't want to do it because of the title pervert forced upon you, but the students protested saying that you were treated unjustly and eventually the admiration yielded, so the congratulations on finishing your academic life unless you plan on going to university, Grafia said. So I guess there are some people with humility here, and no, I'm done with my academic life. I'm almost in my 20s now, and I want to be free as a dragon should be. So did Sona take part in it? Issei said. Yes, yeah, she also insisted on it. Good. I should stop by and say hello. It's the least I can do. All right, before you go, there's something you should know, Grafi replied. Yeah? Issei said. We received word the fallen angel Kokovil is coming to Coat Town with a small army of fallen angels. Issei got angry, to the point where flames were releasing from his horns and his elbow spikes. His aura flared and knocked his former teammates to their knees. Why are they coming? Issei said. Kokovil is a war maniac. In all of the factions that cease fire, he's lost his mind, Sir Zek said. I want in. I need to see how strong I got, Issei said. Sure, but you won't do it alone. Rias and her team will fight as well. I have to go back and stop people from freaking out about the other war. Fine, but Kokovil is my target and mine alone. When will he revive? Arrive. In a few days, Azazel, the governor of the Fallen Angel, tried to stop him but was unsuccessful, so he contacted us. He also said that Kokofield plans to attack the school first, Grapia said. No, he won't get the chance. I'll kill him way before that, Issei said. I think you're the only one who can. All right, Grapia and I are going to the Underworld. See you guys later. They need to know what the Red Dragon Emperor is back, Sir Zek said. Take care, Issei said. Both teleported away. Issei got up to leave and visit Sona, but Rhea stops him. Issei, wait. What do you want, Rias? Issei asked in a cold tone. Can we just talk for a few minutes alone? Rooftop, five minutes, Issei said. Rias nods and happily to talk to her. They both leave to talk and the others waited in the club room. They were happy that Issei is back but not dare say anything because they are afraid of him and his power. At the school rooftop. So what did you want to say? Issei said. Rias couldn't contain her excitement. She jumped on top of Issei and kissed him hard. Issei was not expecting that he broke the kiss, then puts her down. Rias, stop. Just stop. I told you, I don't feel that way anymore. But I do. I fucking do. I've been in loving you since you saved me, Rias said. Flame shot out of his horns. Even his mouth went from anger. Don't mistake adoration for love. Don't make my fucking mistake. What? I've had some time to think in a few months and I realized that I mistook my adoration for you as love. But I do love you. I know my true feelings now. There's so much more I want to say. I don't know where to start, but maybe apologizing the right way to go. Issei, I'm sorry for making you suffer. All of us are. You helped us through our personal problems and all we did was hurt you. You helped Kiba, saved Azia, helped Akino accept her past, and fallen angel side. You helped everyone get stronger, but they were the only ones who called me my first name because you loved me. Who was I then? You saved me from Riser. You helped everyone. That's where I messed up, Issei said. What? Rias replied. After I did all of that. 
after you became stronger, you guys stopped being the people I cared about because you started to belittle me and abuse me. I used to love you for giving me another chance in life despite all the shit I went through, but the last straw was when we fought that stray. Rias just stood there in silence. Tell me, Rias, did anyone tell? Did you, did anyone? Tell me, Rias, did anyone tell take that hit for you? Kiba had the speed, and Konoko had the defense, Azia had the magic, and Akino had all three. So why didn't they save you? They were capable, if not then even more than I was. Yet I took the hit and was in a coma for a week, Issei said. Rias just sat there in silence. If you're giving me to love, you can forget it. Let me prove that we have changed. Rias pulls out Issei's pawn pieces and shows them to him. We've kept your pawn pieces. We mourned you for months. I had nightmares every time I closed my eyes and hallucinated when I opened them. I cried to myself, sleep, only to continue seeing vivid nightmares of you dying of a pool of your blood. No smile, no laughter, nothing but pain. Rias jumps on top of Issei and pins him against the wall and she cries into his chest. We really did miss you. We wanted to make things right, so just give us a chance, please. Rias then continued to cry. Drake mentally commu can can communicated with Issei. Partner, she's not lying. I really do sense that she's being honest about everything she said and wants to make things right. Yeah, I know. I do want to forgive them, but I'm not ready yet. A part of me still wants to hurt them, but if I do it, I'll be no different, Issei says. Issei stops talking at Dra to Drake, then looks at Rias. He says her name in a soft tone, Rias, so desperately wanted to hear. Rias, I want to move on. I want to forgive, but I'm not just ready yet. I don't know when I'll be able to forgive. It could be a week, a month, years, a decade, or centuries for all I know. Rise looks at Issei. She could tell from the look in his eyes that he means it. All right, we'll give you some space, but please stay. The last few months were hell without you, Rias said. I'm not going anywhere. Not yet, at least, Issei said. Are you sure? I didn't oppose to fighting alongside you guys, now did I? I just don't want to be on your team anymore. None of that master pawn shit. I just want to fight Cocaville while you guys take care of the small fry, Issei said. No, no you didn't, Rhea said. Now let's go. The others are waiting and I have to visit Sona. Rhea smiles and says, yeah, let's go. And that is the end of chapter 9, Reunion. And that will be the end of part two. Thank you guys so much for the support on this series. It's been absolutely amazing. Okay, I thank you so much. I, I've worked so hard on that thumbnail. I thought it was so fucking sick when I was creating it. Like, I can't even lie to you guys. Again, thanks for all the support. 23,000 subscribers. What a fucking dream come true. It's absolutely amazing. Again, thanks for all the compliments on my voice, even though I'm just a normal guy. So chill out, all right? But again... All the what-ifs that you guys want me to do, leave down in the description. I will be continuing this one just because I am in love with the story specifically. So again, thank you guys all for the support. Let's try to hit 600 likes again. You guys already know the vibe. Let's try to get this shit. Let's get it, boys. So without further ado, thank you guys all for the support. It's been truly amazing. Pa -pa -pa -pa. Peace. Spartanic out. What's up guys, it's your host Spartanic Arts DxD back with another high school DxD related video. And today we have What If Issei Went Solo Part 3. Now you guys already know the light goal, since we hit 600 so easily in these last two videos, let's try to hit 700. And if you guys want to know exactly when I upload slash upload schedule, click the little blue button right next to the subscribe button. Thank you guys so much for the support on What If Issei Went Solo, it's been absolutely amazing. Truly, truly thank you, like seriously. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. Chapter 10. Hello, Sona. Rias went to the club room the moment she entered her barrage surrounded then asked her. So what happened? Does he still hate us? Kiva said. Rias will give us a chance to talk to him? Akana replied. Same question, Konoko said. Rias just had them like before and said. Just give me a moment then I'll tell you everything, okay? Rias said. Everyone had a group hug, and after a few minutes, Rias was calm enough to tell them what both of them said. She, re she revealed that she had nightmares and hallucinated. Everyone also admitted that they went through the same thing, but were all too afraid to tell anyone because they believed it was their punishment. All five of them let out their pent-up emotions. Rias, the ruined pr princess, Akano, the half-fallen, half-devil queen, Azia, the former nun, Kiba, the knight, and even the stout Koa all cried together like little children. Issei was outside the club room and listening to their every word and sob. I believe they have suffered enough, partner, Drake said. Maybe, Issei said. Issei didn't visit Sona after talking with Rias. He hid his presence and used his dragon hearing to find out what the others were saying now that he's back. He was actually surprised that they really did regret hurting him. Issei had his proof and walked away to visit Sona. He knocked on her office and opened it. 
It was Sona Queen Tsubaki who opened the door. Sona was sitting on the chair behind her desk. Issei, is that really you? It's good to see you, Sona said. Good to see you too. How have you been, Issei replied. I've been doing okay. It hasn't been the same since you beat Riser all on your own. Word got out all over the underworld. You're a legend now, Sona said. I was hoping to avoid that in all honesty, Issei replied. It, Subaki, it was unavoidable since it was quite the feat. So I assume you saw the match, Issei replied. It was recorded. If it's alright, can I ask you something, Subaki said. Sure. How did you come up with that plan to beat Riser? People tried seals, magic, force, you name it. It never worked, Subaki said. During the match with Riser, always regenerates, any part of him that was destroyed, so I came up with the idea to squeeze his heart to the point where it wouldn't be damaged, but it couldn't pump blood to the rest of his vital organs. Basically, I gave that guy a very painful attack. That was just brutal, Issei. You could have killed him, Sona said. Believe me, I wanted to, but I don't want under, but I don't want the underworld on my tail. No pun intended. Also, how is Riser? Is he still an arrogant fried chicken? Subaki giggles. Actually, he's better now besides health, Sona said. Huh? Issei replied. After getting his ass handed to him by you, his ego shattered by a low-class devil made him have a more clear outlook on life. Also, thank you, Issei, Sona said. For what? Issei replied. For teaching those two perps a lesson. They won't be peeping on any of the girls anymore, Subaki said. We couldn't force them, but now a fully graduated student can. Also, here's your diploma. Issei takes the diploma. Thanks. Now all the small tuck is out of the way. You want to know why I left, don't you? Issei replied. Sona and Sabaki are not surprised that Issei knew what they wanted to ask. There's no point in denying it. We want to know why you're hate and your new, now former master and comrade so much. I can show you, Issei said. Issei used magic and projected his memories on the wall. After seeing all of Issei's memories from the start of his hellish life to the present, both Sona and Tsubaki were angry. A lot of info was kept secret from them. They had the right to know since Issei was a fellow devil who fought alongside them for five years. From your expressions, I take that you didn't know everything, Issei said. We were only told that Riser was found cheating on Rias, then you challenged him for her freedom. You saved her then, after a while, you went missing, then presumed dead. Only your pawn pieces were found. Right now, I want to slap Rias, right through all nine circles of hell, Sona said. I can't believe that Kiba and the others did were so cruel. And to think I liked him, Tsubaki replied. I still haven't forgiven him or the others, but there's something you should both know. Rias and the others have changed for the better, Issei said. Both of them go, huh? Issei tells him about his talk with Rias and about what he heard outside the club room. Both were shocked, especially Tsubaki. Kiba cried? I've never seen him cry. Tsubaki said, I know, it's strange coming from me, but we get to know him. Issei said, what? Don't get me wrong, I haven't fully forgiven them, but I won't be cruel to cockblock the guy. He's not the guy that came to hate a few moments ago. Sona, I know you're a good friend of Rias, but now that you know all the details, please help her fight. Please help her after the fight. Issei said, of course, we need to deal with Cocaville first, Sona said. Yeah, it's getting late. I've taken enough of your time, so I'll be going now. Take care, Sona. You too, Issei, Sona said. Issei left the school and went back to look at his new apartment. He found one and paid a few months rent ahead in advance with the money he shaved from up from his contacts during his devil nights. Issei sat on his bed and listened to music. His favorite song, Billie Eilish. Lovely. Issei may have lived off in the forest, but not always. <laughs> then the day arrived. The fight with the war-loving crow was now about to begin. And that's the end of Chapter 10. Hello, Sona. Chapter 11. Murderers. Sona and her parage were in charge of creating a barrier to contain the fight. Issei, Rias, and her team were in the club room. It was tense in the room and the upcoming battle intensified it. Everyone was silent and made glances towards Issei who didn't look at them. He only stared out the window. His eyes were filled with bloodlust. Rias and the others don't know whom they were more afraid of. The fallen angel army or Issei? Azia broke the silence. So what's the plan? Azia said. Issei didn't look away from the window but responded. You stay behind. Konako, Kiba, Akino, and Rias, you four can kill the Fallen Angels and I'll take on Kokaville. There's something I need to ask that fallen shit, Issei said. Which is it? Akino replied. The name of the bitch that killed me, Issei said. Issei said as he kept his hand over his chest where the Fallen Angel impaled him. The thought of the day, the thought of the day that made Issei like cry a scary growl. 
Then the sound of a hundred pairs of wings were heard. Issei and the team Rias. Issei and Team Rias walked outside and saw a hundred fallen angels, but one stood above them, a fallen with black ten wings. His menacing smile proved that he was Cocaville. I'm disappointed. Only the Gremory girls are worth a parage, whereas Sir Zex, Cocaville said. He won't waste his time with you, just go home, Rhea said. You've got some nerve talking to me like that, Cocaville said. Then talk to me, you little piece of shit, Issei said. Who dares? I do, Issei walks forward. Now this is a pleasant surprise. The Red Dragon Emperor makes his appearance in months, but you were said to be dead, Cocaville said. Do I look dead to you, motherfucker? I'm more alive than you'll be very soon, Issei said. Cocaville is visibly angry after being insulted. Why, you little- All of you attack, but the Red Dragon is mine to fight, Cocaville said. Cocaville orders his small fry to attack. Balance Breaker Issei, and Issei enters his balance breaker while Rias and the others attack as well. Issei and Cocaville almost equally matched. Issei battles Cocaville mid-air. Both exchange punch after punch. Issei dodged light spears and even killed other fallen angels that intervened, but Issei's stamina was running low. I want answers, Cocaville, Issei said. Oh, like what? Cocaville replied. I want to know of the name of the fallen bitch that killed me five years ago, Issei said. Beat me, and then I'll tell you. Ha! <laughs> Cocoville replied, have it your way, Issei said. Now Issei was fired up. He held nothing back and began to push Cocoville over the edge. Rias was killing the fallen angels left and right like her team. Now they had the fighting spirit since Issei was back. Half of the fallen army was either dead or wounded. Before she could kill another, she was tackled by a woman. Quite the displeasure to meet you, Rias. Rias got up. Who the hell are you? Oh, you remember me. I should have killed you five years ago, Rias said. You really should have. I wasn't strong enough to kill you back then, but I was but I was strong to kill that weakling pawn of yours, and now I'm strong enough to kill you. The fallen showed Rias her four pairs of black feathered wings. By the way, my name is Rainair, and I am the one who killed him. Rias was pissed off and then both enraged in combat. Rias was mainly engaged in her hopes that if she kills Rainair, then Issa would forgive her and just maybe she could forgive herself. After a while, only a dozen or two fallen angels remained, but they still kept Kiba, Akano, Konoko, and Azia occupied. Rias was still fighting, but close to losing. Issei, on the other hand, was kicking Kokoville's ass. Kokoville was falling out of the sky after Issei ripped his wings off. Kokoville landed painfully on the ground. Issei lands next to him. Now answer my question. Issei stabs his claws into Kokoville's back where his wings used to be. Kokoville screamed in pain. All right, I'll talk. Just stop. Now what's his, the name? Oh, I'll tell you. But don't you want to know who killed your parents, Cocoville said. What do you know about that? I'm the one that killed them, and Rainier killed you on my orders, Cocoville said. Issa was just about to rip him apart. Why? You were too dangerous to be kept alive, Cocoville replied. Issa used his tail. Issa used his tail to pierce Cocoville's back, rupturing his organs. Cocoville, ah! Now before I kill you. Where is Rainair? She's over there about to kill your girlfriend, <laughs> Cocoville said. Issei looks towards Rias, and he sees her pinned her against the wall with fallen angel with eight wings and about to put a light spear through her. Issei flew towards the fallen angel. She already killed him, but she won't kill Rias. He won't allow it. So Zex and Grafia would be heartbroken, and another war would break out when she was killed. Say bye-bye, Red. Ah, <sighs> Issei? put his arm right through her chest and grabbed her heart. Rainer looked at Ise. You, you're still alive. Unlike you, Ise replied. Ise ripped out her heart and she dropped dead. You saved me again. Thanks, Rhea said. I did it for, for Zex, not you. Rias felt hurt but smiles nevertheless, and then feels blood splatter on her face. She looked at Issei and was horrified to see a light spear go through his chest. Experience it the second time for both of them was too far much worse. Rias looked at the direction from where the spear came from, and saw Cocaville standing with his arm in the air. He was laughing, laughing because he threw the spear, and it hit Issei in his chest, damaging his heart. Issei looked at Rias. Rias. After uttering her name, he collapsed on the ground. Rias was looking at Issei, who was dying before her eyes yet again. She snapped. 
Ah! She released a massive wave of her destructive powers and killed every Fallen, including Cocafield. Everyone, including Sona and her team, rushed to Rias and saw the Fallen disintegrate into nothing. They looked at her and saw Rias and saw holding an Issei and destroyed the spear in his chest with her bare hand. Her hand was buried and she didn't care. Azia, get over here! Rias said. Azia ran to Rias and started to heal Issei, but the damage was too great. Rias, the damage is too great. I can't heal him. Please, just try. Issei, wake up! Rias said. Issei was nearly unconscious, but suddenly a woman wearing a black red Camino with a yellow obi. She had two black tails and cat ears with the most beautiful glowing golden cat-like eyes, her long black flowering hair, and nice wavy ends. Half of her DD-sized cleave was visible. She crouched down and put her hands on Issei's chest, and Wound was used for magic to heal him. It was working. Kuroko, what are you doing here? Konako said. Wait, Kuroko? The SS class straight devil? Akana replied. Yes, now is not the time for normalities. Focus on saving Issei, Kuroko said. Get away from my Issei, I don't trust you. He's dead, if you don't let me help, so be useful for once, call, and just let me help. Everyone was silent. Sona was the first to snap out of shock, and advanced and teleported everyone to the Underworld Hospital. Issei was taken to the ER and his wounds were surgically closed, but Kuroka still didn't stop using her magic. It kept Issei alive and doctors let her continue. They found Issei still holding the heart of a fallen angel and put an organ in storage unit. Eventually, his wounds closed and Issei stabilized, but his heart was damaged beyond repair. The doctor told Rias and the others, We closed his wounds with the help of your friend, but his heart is too badly damaged. We don't know how long... But we are con conducting tests. If he wasn't a dragon, then he would be dead already, the doctor said. The doctor walks away and let the others with their thoughts. Rias went numb. So did the others, but Kuroko went to visit Issei. Sir Zex and Grafia came to the door after Sona informed them of the situation. He runs into Rias. Where's Issei? Sir Zex replied. He's in there, Rias said. Sir Zex and Grafia immediately enter Issei's room and followed by Rias and the others. Both Sir Zex and Grafia see Kuroko come in the room. Grafia blinds her using a magic seal. Grafia, stop! Rhea says, She's a SS class stray. She killed her master, Sir Zex replied. She helped save Issei's life, Akana replied. Both Sir Zex and Grafia went silent then looked at Kuroka. Grafia unbinds her. Is she telling the truth? Grafia says, Yes, Kuroka replied. Why would you help us? Kuroka begins to blush. It's because... because... Issei replied, She's my lover. The bomb was just dropped just like the jaws of everyone in the room except for Kuroka and Issei. Your lover? Rias replied. That's the end of chapter 11. Murderers. Chapter 12. New love. Your lover? Everyone says in surprise. Yeah, she and I have been dating for over a month now, Issei said. Yeah, it's true. He's my dragon, Kuroka replied. And she's my little hellcat, Issei said. Kuroka winks at Issei and he blushed. Reese's heart breaks right there and then she puts on a fake smile. Congrats to the both of you. If you'll excuse me, Reese. Reese said. Reese leaves the room and everyone knows why, including Issei. But Kuroka doesn't. What just happened? Kuroka replied. I'll tell you everything when the time is right, Issei said. Everyone else just looked down and was sad. The doctor suddenly comes in. Everyone, I have some news, the doctor said. What is it, Sir Zex immediately replied. The doctor immediately bows in respect and then continues. When we were taking Issei to the ER, we found him with an actual heart in his hand, and we took it for testing and we checked the blood types, the doctor said. Are you saying that Issei can have a heart transplant immediately? Grafia replied. Yes, but the heart belonged to a fallen angel. Since he's a dragon, I'm not sure if his body will accept it, but there's a chance it'll work but it requires her help. The doc gestures to Kuroka. How can I help? Kuroka replied. You use sage magic to save him, correct? Yeah, Kuroka replied. Then we can use it to make the transplant a success, but I don't know if there will be any side effects, and that's where you decide if it wish for us to continue with this experimental procedure, doctor said. I'll do it, Isi replied. Everyone except Kuroka. What? Guys, think about it. I may be a dragon, but I'm not that strong. If I don't do it, then I'll die. I have nothing to lose, Issei replied. Are you sure about this? Akano said. I am, Issei replied. Then I'll prepare the ER. We will begin right away. Everyone else, please wait in the waiting room, the doctor said. 
Rias is already in the waiting room and the others enter. They tell her about the procedure and she is visibly worried and terrified. Sir Zex comforts her. The surgeons and Kuroka perform the operation and it goes well. It took a few hours. It went as well as we hoped. I'll tell them the news and he'll wake up after a while, the doctor says. No, I'll do it, Kuroka replies. Issei is taken to the recovery room and Kuroka goes to the waiting room. Rias goes up to her and asks her in a broken voice, Will he be okay? Kroka smiles and nods. Everyone immediately cheers. Konako just hugs her big sister. Rias just stands there shedding tears of joy. Alright everyone, I'd like to say something. Miss Kuroka, you helped save my little brother's life. And for that, I'll remove your status as a stray. Consider it as a thank you from us, Sir Zex replied. Sir Zex bows to her. Kroka is bewildered at the sight and even more so as the others bow to her as well. There's no need to thank me, I just did what I could, Kroka said. Regardless, you are now a free devil, but I have one request. You must tell a, you must tell us about how you met Issei, Sir Zek said. Kuroka blushed. How about we wait for Issei to recovery and we will tell you the full story from both of our perspectives, Kuroka said. Everyone agreed and took turns looking after Issei. Rigis and Kuroka were up first. Everyone else went home to rest. As both ladies were sitting next to each other, next to Issei's bed, Rias could tell that Kuroka was trying to ignore her existence. I know you want to say something, so please say it, Rias replied. You wouldn't like that, so what I have to say to you, Kuroka said. Do you love Issei? Rias replied. Obviously. I've known him for months. I know all about him, Kuroka said. I've known him for five years, Rias replied. You know of his existence, but nothing of his hopes, his dreams, his favorite type of music, foods, and hobbies, etc., Kuroka replied. Rias just sat there in silence. Do you even know his last name, Kuroka said. Rias just sat there in silence once more. It's Hyoto. Five years and you don't even know that. I'm also aware of his past, but I want to. Why? Why, Rias, Kuroka replied. I don't. No, Rhea said. Give me a real answer. I don't know, okay? I don't know why I hurt him again and again. He saved me from the stray and got hurt. He saved me fighting Ryzer alone, and he saved me from being killed by that fallen that killed him five years ago, and his heart beats in his chest because of me. I could have killed her and saved him without letting her twist a light spear in his chest. I kissed him twice in my life and he hated it he hates me and i can't blame him after all i put it through when after all i did was he did to save me and for me who i am he saw me as rius just rius not the gremier or, or the ruined princess just me and i was too blind to see it he could have been the one but my pathetic excuses for of love that berg blinded me rius said you kissed him twice kuroka replied rius lets out a small laugh yeah, I did. I'm sorry. Since the night he left after the match, he removed his pieces and we thought he was dead. I thought he died hating me, and I had nightmares every time I closed my eyes and saw his face. I then realized he never smiled or laughed as long as I've known him. Believe me when I say that I regret everything I did and said to him. I just want to make this right. As Rias, Rias wiped her tears, Kuroka used her sage magic and saw that Rias was telling the truth. She complete, she was completely broken by everything that happened. Kuroka understood the heart of a maiden in pain. Listen, Rias, Issei made the choices of his own violation. He would have done even so that he does hate you, Kuroka said. A gauntlet appears on Issei's arm. She's right, Rias, Drake says. Rias jumps at the sudden voice calling out her name. <laughs> Nice one, Drake. That was funny. <laughs> Kuroko said, I didn't mean to stall you, Rias, but there's something you should know. Issei's rage is quite equal to that of a dragon, said he wants to let it go. That's the kind of person he is. He wants to forgive you and the others, but you'll have to be patient. Then I have a chance to make it, right? Thank you for telling me, Drake, Rias said. Glad to be of help. Issei will wake up soon. I'm currently strengthening his new heart. We shall speak again soon, ladies. Take care. Drake replied, and with that, Drake went silent. I knew he was really angry, and rightfully so, but still wanting to move on and make peace. He continues to make me fall for him, Kuroka said. So you two really are in love. I have no chance to be with him, do I? Rias says. Rias, I'm sorry, Kuroka said. Don't be. I can only blame myself. Issei grunts and wakes up. Issei, you're awake? How do you feel? Said both girls. Tired, but alive. Looks like a heart transplant worked. Thanks, Kuroka. What would I do without you? I'll give you two a moment, Rias said. Rias leaves the room and contacts everyone with news that Issei woke up. Everyone immediately arrives and hugged Issei. For once, Issei actually felt the love. The doctor came to check up on Issei and ordered him to relax for a month or so. Issei was discharged and they all went to his apartment. All right now, everyone. Since he is back to full health, I believe we owed a story. 
What do you say, Issei? Time to tell your story. Sure, let's begin. And that's the end of chapter 12, New Love. Chapter 13, Red Dragon and the Black Cat. Flashback. The day after Issei, the day after he left, Issei had started running, turning into a dragon slowly. His horns, elbow spikes, and tail were slowly forming. His body was being transformed on a cellular level, and no one said that it will be quick and painless. Issei was still emotional after everything happened yesterday with Rias, and the others in a physical pain was just making it worse. Issei was at the emotional threshold and decided to take a walk and eventually recognized a place that brought back painful memories. Issei ended up at the same place where the fallen angel Rainer killed him. To end up where, back where he started, from one hell to the next. Why? Why me? What did I do to suffer so much? Issei said. Issei's power flared and Issei went berserk. He started to fire energy projectiles and ripped apart the forest floor. Issei roared from the pain and his anger and his horns. Tail and his spikes grew quickly because of the dragon's power flows through rage. Issei, I understand your frustrations, but you have to calm down before you fully transform into a raging dragon. It'll attract others' attention, Drake said. Issei can't hear Drake, and all but continued to destroy the forest. He created a massive fireball and made a huge crater in the ground. Issei roared again with tears running down his face as he's still in all the manners of pain. Issei eventually calmed down and just sat there on the crater's edge. His mind was in disarray, then suddenly felt calm. It was honestly a new experience for him. Only then did he register the sensation of two slim hands holding him from behind, one on his head and one on his chest, as he expected his chest pain to flare up, but it didn't happen. Don't move, I'm trying to help, the woman said. Why help me, Issei replied. You're in pain, let me help, Issei, uh, the woman replied. Issei was conflicted. Why would a random woman help him? And what were her intentions? Should he let her? She did. She did just calm him down, and it felt good. He hasn't felt like that in years. If she wanted to hurt him, then she would have done so already, as he defend himself if she tried anything. After deliberating, Issei decides to give her a chance. Thank you, miss, Issei says. Kuroka, my name is Kuroka. Now don't talk. Your mind is in disarray, your key is unstable, and your heart is running on a marathon. I don't know what you went through to put you in such a dangerous state, but I'll try my best to help. Thank you. I'm Issei, Issei said. Issei closed his eyes and Kuroka was using her sage magic to stabilize Issei, which was working. Issei felt calm and his mind was clearing. His heart palpitations were becoming normal. After a few minutes, even the pain from the transformation stopped. You'll be okay. This was just a temporary fix. You'll need to sort out the cost for yourself, Kuroka said. Issei turns around and looks at Kuroka. He notices her Kimomomo. Her two black tails and cat ears, her golden eyes, caught his attention the most. They both stare at each other, and Issei snaps himself out of his trance. If only if it was as easy as it sounds, Issei said. Issei gets up, and so does Kuroka. Do you want to talk about it? Kuroka replied, no, Issei said. Issei goes and sits by a tree. Kuroka goes over and to him and sits on his lap. Well, what are you doing? Issei said. Full disclosure, when I saw you, I felt something pulling me towards you, and it wasn't just your power, Kuroka says. Kuroka was right, just the right size. She fit perfectly in his lap and cuddled him. Issei was confused as to why. Why would she help him since they just met? Why is she clinging to him, and why can't he find the will to push her off? Issei was confused, and yet he knew she was there to comfort him. The one thing he longed for, Issei just hugged Kuroka tightly, and she hugged back, and both lay there till the sunset. Both watched it go down together and fell asleep holding each other. Kroka could feel Issei's heart, and it brought her joy knowing that Issei is okay. Issei and Kuroka would begin to spend time daily for a few months. Issei was still emotionally distant and didn't talk about his past. Kroka didn't force him, but she gave him a reason to trust her. She told him about her past. I know you're still... You still have your guard up around me, and I understand, but I want to earn your trust, Kroka said. Issa just stood there in silence. Six years ago, my little sister Shrone and I were part of the Devil's Parage. Our master was secretly performing an illegal and inhumane experience on us to make her stronger. They were a success, and he was about to perform them on my little sis. She was too little, and there was no way I would let that happen. I killed my master and his parage. My sister and I ran away, and I was marked as a stray. Eventually, we were hunted down by Grapia of all people. I knew that was I was no match for her. I tried to escape with my sister, but she managed to grab Sharone. I was no match and ran away, Kroka said. 
Does your little sister have white hair, short, and has one cattail? Issei says. Yeah, but how did you know? I know Graytheans are sex. There are only kind-hearted devils around. I used to be a pawn in Rhea's Grim Race Barrage. Your sister is a rook in that team. She's strong and she's doing fine, but doesn't talk much. Has a stuck pr expression on her face most of the time, and she goes by the name of Konako. Kuroka is overjoyed that her little sister is alright, but then it clicked. Wait, what do you mean, used to be? Kuroka said. <sighs> you trust me with your past? It's only fair that I do the same. Look into my memories, Issei said. Are you sure? I'll be going right through your memories, Kuroka replied. I have nothing to hide. Alright then, I trust you, Kuroka said. Kuroka puts her hand on Issei's head and closes her eyes. Using magic, she sees through his memories from his young age. Hearing about his parents' death, running from one orphanage to another, and being abused, surviving on the street, having a light spirit put through his chest, five years of being a pawn, being used by his master who knew about the fall and attacking him, being in a coma, revealing Riser's secret to Rias, her sudden guilt and kissing Issei, fighting Riser then removing his pieces in a massive red dragon surrounded by flames. Kuroka only saw glimpses of it, but it knew it was too much. Kuroka let go of Issei and jumped back, breathing heavily with tears running down her face. Just what the hell did they do to you? Kuroka said. What haven't they done? I'll kill that bitch Rias when I see her, Kuroka said. As fun as that sounds, you better not. You're still being hunted, and it'll make things worse for the both of us, Issei replied. I can't believe that she had the nerve to do that, to start loving you just because Riser hurt her feelings, and after, after you loved her from the start... The fuck? Kuroka said. After all that you saw, what's got your attention? That's what's got your attention, Issei said. Issei deadpan. Kuroka blushed and stammered. No, 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 you misunderstood. Well, you see, I mean to say, uh... Issei cuts her off by kissing her on the lips. Kuroka's eyes widen and then closes them to say really kiss. She didn't really feel something... She did... She really did feel something for Issei and knows that it was love. Issei breaks the kiss after a couple of seconds. I trust you enough to say that I feel something for you too. And I think I just proved it, Issei said. Yes. Yes, you have. Now more. Issei and Kuroka, Issei made out for a long time. <laughs> End of the flashback. I would use magic and disguise myself and sneak into town. Got a few part-time jobs, used my cash I saved from my contracts, and Kuroka stayed with me in my apartment since... And now we are here, Issei said. Kuroka just snuggles up to Issei and stayed by his side the whole time. Riz looked jealous as fuck. If you came into town daily, then why didn't we notice your magical signature, Akino said. Because I became a dragon. My very being has changed, so that's why you couldn't find me. I could have walked right by you and you wouldn't have noticed. So that's why you left, Konako said. Yes, I knew that you would be okay because Lady Grafia was kind enough to protect you. I could tell by her aura. Strong and, and compassionate, Kuroka said. She's right, Issei replied. You're too kind, Grafia said. That explains why you didn't visit in five years, Konako said. I was astray. I was being hunted. If I showed up, then you would have been found out and used against me, Kuroka said. Miss Kuroka, you said your master experimented on you. Please shed some light on that subject because I was led to believe you went berserk, Sir Zek said. Of course, it's the least I can do. Back when my master was experimenting on me, I saw him take notes on everything he did and kept them in an item where he hid it in plain sight. I wanted to show it to a Lady Grafia that day, but she was gunning for me and any action taken didn't result in my survival would have been the death of me, Kuroka said. Your master was a friend of our family, but we never knew of his actions. I was too angry at this to think rationally. I should have tried to look beyond my anger. I apologize, Grafia said. No need to apologize. I hope you can forgive me for killing your friend. I had no choice, Kroko said. You saved Issei's life. How could I not, Grafia replied. Sir Zek smiled. So you mentioned that he kept his research hidden, and you know where it is? If you provide that, you'll clear your name, Sir Zek said. I would love to. She has it. Kuroka pointed to Konako. Everyone looked at her confused, who was just as confused. How would I have his research? Your hair clip. The one with the black cat on it. The research is hidden. He picked one hell of a hiding spot, Issei said. Yeah, my master Shalva was quite the clever, but never too, but too power hungry, Kuroka said. Konako, would you be so kind to give us research? Sir Zek said. Yes, sir. Konako gives Sir Zek the hair clip. 
Interesting. There are dozens of seals planted on it to prevent the content from being viewed. This will take a long time to break. Ajuka and Azazel I can help me. Everyone here continue enjoying themselves. I have work to do, take care. Sir Zex teleports and Great Thea follows. Everyone else just continue to enjoy themselves. And that is the end of chapter 13, Red Dragon and the Black Cat. Chapter 14, Research and Plumage. In the underworld, scene break, Sir Zex and Grafia go to the research center and meet up with a fellow devil king, Najuka. A tall man with green hair stands in his lab doing his research. Hello, Najuka. How are you? Sir Zex said. Ah, Sir Zex and Grafia. I'm busy as always, so what brings you here? Something that may change the course of history, Sir Zex says. Sir Zex says in a serious tone, making Najuka alert. Whatever you use your tone, I can tell you are serious. What's going on? Ajuka says. Sir Zex tells him the story Kuroko told him about him in the hair clip. Ojuka examines it and notices there are quite a few power seals on it. The seals alone make me worry. Just what was Shalba doing? Ajuka said. That's what we all want to know. So I came to you. I know that you can break the seals, said Sir Zex. I'm glad you have faith in me. This will take a few days or even a few weeks. It's hard to say, Ajuka says. As long as it's done, that's all that matters, Grafi replied. I'll get right on it, Ajuka said. Did you find why Issei's pawn pieces lost their abilities? No, but I do have a theory. That when he removed them, he was absorbed the properties. If that's the case, then I don't know what changes may have occurred in Issei, Grafia said. Interesting. Guess we will have to wait and see. In the meantime, why not ask Kaseto to help you? He's a fellow scientist after all. Excellent idea. That would actually help out a lot, Ajuka said. Both Sir Zex and Grafia leave to do their jobs as Devil King and Queen. Ajuka calls Azazel, who appears via the teleportation. So what's the interesting news, Azazel says. There's actually two. One involves illegally research related to enhancements sealed in his hair clip and two of the forcefully removed pawn pieces which lost its attributes after its owner removed said pieces. Interested? Hell yeah, bro! I assume the owner of the said pieces is dead, right? Azazel replied. He is very much alive. Issei Hyoto is a unique existence. He's the first to survive such an event, Ajuka said. Wait, Issei? Respawn? I thought he was dead, Azazel replied. Nope, he's doing just fine, Ajuka said. I missed that guy. He was my drinking buddy. I used to form contracts with him under an, an alias, but he never figured out my identity and was a good listener. I should visit him, Azazel said. He's also the Red Dragon Emperor, Ajuka said. This kid is something else, ha, <laughs> Azazel replied. Wait, you made Issei drink with you since when? Azazel was now scared. He and Issei have been drinking before he was even turned 18. Uh, well, shit, Azazel replied. Azazel, run, Grafia said. Azazel started running. He bolted and she was right behind him. He's going to be in pain for a while. Now, we're back to Issei. Issei and Kuroko were finally alone in their apartment after the others left. Both were tired, so they went to the bedroom. Looks like things are finally looking up, Kuroko said. Yeah, I'm alive and you're a free devil now. What do we do now, Kuroko replied. I want to sleep. I'm sick of passing out from pain or near-death experiences, <laughs> Issei replied. I want, the sa I want the same for you, and I've used up most of my magic and didn't get much sleep last night, Kuroko said. You used it saved three times to save my life now, back when we first met, after the fight with Kokoville and during the operation. What can I ever do to make it up to you, Issei replied. Ooh, I'll let you know, Kuroko said. Kuroko winks at Issei, who returned a smirk. Issei sits on his bed slowly, and he lets out a small grunt. What's wrong, Kuroko said. My back hurts. I feel pressure in eight places. Issei takes off his shirt, and he feels four thick lumps. There was definitely some pressure built up. What the hell are those, Kuroka said. Do me a favor and cut the skin using your claws. There's something under my skin, Issei said. Are you nuts, Kuroka replied. Yeah, but please do it. The pain is increasing, Issei said. All right, the sting would it sting a little. Kuroka takes out her cat clothes and all it lumps at once. What came out of the four pairs were black fallen angel wing with red edges. Some of the feathers detached as soon as Issei spread his wings. The red scale of Issei's body had a black edge too. What the hell? Kuroka said. Issei looked in large mirror hanging on the wall. What the actual fuck? Issei said. That's my line, bub, Kuroka replied. I am so confused right now. It seems that this is the side effect of the transplant. When Kuroka used the sage magic, it merged with your heart 
in your body and the different DNA combined. You, Issei, are the first fallen dragon. Hope you're not too disappointed, Drake said. Honestly, I don't know what to think about it. I'm not. I never hated fallen angels, just Cocoville and Rainer because of what they did, Issei replied. Yet her heart beats in your chest, Kuroka said. She destroyed mine like she ruined my life, but now it's my heart. Each bee is a reminder that she's dead and I am alive. My old self is dead and so is my old heart. I have a new one and this new one beats only for you, Issei said. That's the most morbid yet romantic thing you've said. Thanks, lover. She kissed him. You sure have an interesting outlook on life after all you went through. Yeah, I guess I do, Issei said. Issei looks at his wings. Kuroka comes closer and is curious like the cat she is. Issei, do you mind if I touch them? Go ahead. Kuroka runs her hand through Issei's plumage. The center was black as the darkest night from the center and slowly became blood red towards the edge. Issei twitched at Kuroka's touch as the fallen angel wings were sensitive. Through Issei found throughout first hand. His face went red from the sensation and Kuroka took notice then smirked. She was going to tease him about this. Then Kuroka felt it. A gentle warmth coming from his wings. She never felt something like this. Wow, your wings are really soft and warm. Coming from it is one of a kind. I can't get enough of it. Issei, I have a request. Hmm. What? Issei says. Wrap me in your wings tonight, please, Kuroka replied. If it makes you happy, let's do it. Winter is coming, Issei said. Yes, Kuroka replied. Both go straight to bed and Issei wraps her in his new wings as she cuddled him. She was completely enveloped by a gentle warmth and fell right asleep. Sleep tight, my little cat, Issei replies. And that's the end of chapter 14, Research and Plumage. And that's where we're going to be ending off. Thank you guys so much for the support that's been going on in this series. We seriously hit, like, I think we're at 20,700 subscribers currently as I'm recording this video. Thank you guys so much for all the support. Seriously, once again, I can't thank you enough. It's been absolutely amazing. The support on this series is kind of crazy. It's really cool to see it. You know, it reminds me of what happened with the What If Issei Was Betrayed series the first time I ever tried it. I guess I found that little niche. I guess I'm just good at narrating. Thank you for all the nice compliments once again. I'm so glad we've been hitting the like goals. It's fucking crazy, like seriously. And without further ado, Spartanic Arts DxD out. What's up guys, it's your host Spartanic Arts DxD back with another high school DxD related video. And today we have What If Issei Went Solo part four let's try to hit a thousand likes and if you guys want to know exactly when i upload slash my upload schedule click the little blue button right next to the subscribe button thank you guys so much for the support on this series i'm sorry i haven't been uploading as much just kind of going through it at the moment so thank you for all the support let's try to hit a thousand likes i know that's a big request but we've been hitting it like every time i finally up the like goal because these people are crazy with the support thank you so much without further ado let's go ahead and get right into it chapter 15 gift in little kitten Suzex is in his office with Graphia the following day. I was thinking about everything that Issei went through up until now. He saved Rias again and stopped another from war breaking out between the three factions and nearly died if it wasn't for Kuroka. I should do something to compensate him and help Kuroka, Suzex said. You already made Kuroka a free devil and cleared all of her charges, but Issei definitely deserves something, Graphia replied. But the question is, what? Suzex said. Suzex and Graphia started thinking. Sir Zex takes out one of the pawn pieces that he borrowed from Team Rius. He just stared at it, and then... I got it, Sir Zex said. Griffia nearly clung to the ceiling from this sudden exclamation. First of all, never scare me like that again. Two, what do you got? Griffia said. She jumps down. Sorry, but I have an idea. Why don't we promote Issei to a high-class devil? He's stronger than one, and his contract reviews are through the roof. He's clearly loved by almost everyone and is already a legend in the underworld, Sir Zex said. That's actually a perfect gift. I'm surprised your idiotic self thought of it, she teased. I didn't see you coming up with any ideas, honey. Ha. <laughs> Shots fired. And then Grafia hit Sir Zex. Ouch, Sir Zex said. Sir Zex and Grafia talked to Ajuka and Azazel and Sona's older sister, Seraphal Leviathan, who was a fellow devil king. All were informed of the Issei's heroic actions and came to the agreement it was decided that Issei will be promoted. As a bonus, it was also decided that Issei will be given a rare forbidden piece, the king piece. Why? Simple. Issei suffered for years because he was weak, nearly died several times protecting the others. Years of pain and abuse caused him to snap at those who hurt him, but he controlled his dragon rage. This was a feat itself and it still chose to help him in the time of need even if he didn't want to. 
If anyone deserved this power, it was him. Never again will he be unable to protect the others or himself. Now, scene break, we're back to Issei in the morning. Issei and Kuroko wake up. They were still in each other's arms. That alone was enough proof that they both had the best of their life so far. Morning, cat. Morning, my little dragon, Kuroko replied. Want some breakfast? Always. That would be the best night's sleep I've ever had. I honestly didn't want to get up, Kuroko said. Issei stretched his limbs and wings. Same here, but I'm hungry. I really had anything to eat since before the fight. No, the gross hospital food doesn't count. I want to eat real food, so I'll get started on breakfast, Issei said. Issei makes breakfast while Kuroko freshens up. Overall, it was a pretty uneventful, peaceful morning. Both decided to keep Issei's wings a secret for now. One more change has occurred. Issei's horns released flames from normal yellow to red. As both of them finished eating, Issei saw a look of confusion on Kuroko. What's bothering you? Issei said. Kuroko snaps out of her train of thought. Hmm. My bad. It's nothing, Kuroko said. I can tell there's something up with you. There's no point in hiding it. Tell me, Issei said. Fine. Yesterday when I told Sharone the truth, she still looked like she hated me. She's young. She needs time. I would know, Issei replied. I haven't seen her in five years, and back in the hospital was the only time she hugged me. That means you're still her big sister and she clearly missed you. You just need time to process and accept it. She knows the reason behind your disappearing act, Issei replied. Hello, Mr. Kettle, Mr. Pot called. He says you're black. Ha, SAO bread reference. Nice one. Issei said. Thank you. I think we should talk about Konoko and spend time with her. That might speed things up. Good idea, Kuroko said. We can start after Konoko finishes her classes. Maybe you can train her in Senjutsu. That would be perfect, Kuroko replied. Both agreed to talk to Konoko after school. As the time came, both of them approached her and were honest about what they wanted to do. They went somewhere private to talk. However, Konoko was hesitant. Why train me, Konoko said. It'll be a chance for us to catch up and you to accept your Nekomanta heritage. Konoko just sits there in silence. Konoko, if ha have something to say, just say it. I I want to know. Kuroko just said, I want to know why. Why didn't you try to leave a sign? I thought you were a terrorist. I thought you abandoned me. I don't know if I can trust you. I know the truth, but accepting it is something else entirely, Konoko said. Konoko finally let out all of her emotions. Her expressions face finally showing all kinds of emotions. She finally cried after years of holding it in. Kuroko just hugged her, and then both stayed silent. Issei watched Konoko, but she had caught his attention. Konoko called his sister a terrorist, and he'll ask about that later. I know you're angry, and you have every right to be, but I was scared that if I tried anything that you would be in danger again. We both got off lucky last time, so that's why I couldn't risk it. I'm sorry, Kuroko replied. <sighs> well, it all wasn't that bad. Sir Zex and Grafia gave me a, a home, and I was doing okay, Konoko said. I'm just glad things are finally looking up. Yeah, Issei, there's something I want to say. Yeah? I'm sorry. I was guilty in making your life a living hell when you joined us. You have every right to hate me, but you don't. Why? I have my reasons. The biggest one is that I just want to move on. I don't blame you, Issei said. But I want to do right by you for once, so I can make it up to you, Konoko said. If you really want to make it up to me, then talk to Kuroka. Train with her and try to be sisters again. Consider it done. Really? Kuroka said. Yes, Konoko replied. I can tell from your aura that you're happier now. Now let's go to the, my place and have dinner. I'm hungry. Both girls said, same. The three of them went to Issei's apartment and had dinner. Konoko notes that both Issei and Kuroko are happy together. They laugh together as if they have never had a care in the world. They were very close and loved each other. Seeing that, Konoko finally smiled like never before. Now she was happy as well. As it got dark, Konoko decided to go back to the club room. I should get going. Rius will be worried if I get there uh, before I go there. Is something I need to say, Issei? Yes? Be good to her, okay, bro? Both fist bump each other. You know I will. Kuroko almost tears up at the sight. Konoko is happy to have her back. Sees Issei as her brother and he's basically forgiven her. Konoko then goes to the club room. Rias sees Konoko enter with a huge smile. Somebody looks happy, Rias said. Hey boss, 
I was with Kuroka and Issei at his apartment. We were having dinner and chatting. Oh, about what? Rias said. About everything. I see. I assume it went well, judging by your smile. I'm happy for you, Rias replied. Thanks, boss. I'm happier now than I've ever been. I used to be afraid of my neck amount of powers. But now that I know the truth, I'm going to accept it. Konoko's white cat ears and tail finally appear after six years. I'm done running. Rhea says to herself, Easy, you continue to change things for the better for us all. I finally saw Konoko smile for real this time, and she's more open with us. Thank you. I'm proud of you, Konoko, Rhea said. Shirone, I'm going back to my I'm going back to using my birth name. Is that okay, Rhea? said Konoko. Yes. It's fine, Rhea replied. And that is the end of chapter 15, Gift in a Little Kitten. Chapter 16 Unwanted Attention. A month has passed and everyone continues to live their lives. Issei and Kuroka were out on a night on a date. Issei hid his dragon features and Kuroka hid her cat tail and ears. After the movie, they were walking up to the pier to enjoy the sunset. As they walked arm in arm, the two guys walked up to them and Issei recognized them. The two pervert arms were in cast and they were pissed. Remember us, asshole? Perv1 says. Wish I didn't, Issei replied. Not only are our arms broken, but we got the worst beating of our lives because the girls chased us. You'll pay for that, Perv2 said. Kuroka looks at Issei. Babe, we'll miss it, Kuroka says. Yeah, I'll make this quick. Issei walked up to the pervs and punched both of them in the gut. Before the two could even react, both were on their knees clutching their guts. Hey, honey, do you love it when I slap fools? Issei said, oh, you know I do, Kroka replied. Kroka enjoys the sight of Issei literally slapping the two perverts silly. When will you two learn? Just because you're sad about your life, you drag others down too? Just give up, you pieces of shit, Issei said. Both pervs are completely bruised and beaten again. Did you really think that you two could jump me? Ha, <laughs> Issei said. Go to hell, perv one said. Been there now? Been there. Now let me show you, Issei replied. Issei picked up the two pervs by their collars and brought them close. He showed them his green dragon eyes. Fangs let out with a deep, slow growl. Both pervers went pale and froze from beer, then pissed themselves a little bit after Issei floored his ar flared his aura in a way that even the two could see it. Who knew your fear smelled like piss? Gross, Issei said. Issei tossed the two in a dumpster, then walked away after changing his appearance from dragon to human. That was hilarious. But who were those fools again? Kuroka said. The morons that made my school life a living crap, Issei said. Oh, I remember. I saw their faces through your memories. They have nothing but lewd thoughts, it seems, Kuroka said. That's all they ever have, Issei replied. Pathetic, Kuroka said. Both made it into the pier in time and enjoyed their time together, but something caught their attention. They sensed Rias following them. She's following us, Kuroka said. Looks like I need to have another talk with her, Issei replied. No, I'll handle it. She needs to see that you don't feel the same way about her, and you tried, but clearly it didn't get through, Kroka said. Then let's give her a reminder, Issei said. That's just cruel, Issei. I love it. Both share a deep, long kiss. Rhea saw them from a distance kissing and just turned around and walked away with a broken expression. You're happy with her, but I'm not giving up. I will win you back, Rhea said. Rias goes back home and starts thinking of a plan to convince Issei to love her. Issei and Kuroka are on their date and still will no longer sense Rias watching them. And that's the end of Chapter 16, Unwanted Attention. Chapter 17, The First Fallen King. The next morning, Issei contacts everyone and tells them that Sir Zex summoned them ASAP. They all arrive at Sir Zex's office and go inside. Ah, everyone is here, right on time too, Sir Zex said. Do you have a mission for us? A stray devil again? Rias replied. Rias was hoping for one that she could fight alongside Issei. Not at all. There's going to be a ceremony, Sir Zex said. What kind? Azia replied. It's a surprise. Issei, would you please step forward? Issei is a bit confused, but does it as he told. Sir Zex gives Issei a box. Issei opens it and sees a chest set. The energy it gave off immediately and proved that they were evil pieces. They didn't? contained 15 pieces but full 16 including the king piece everyone was bewildered by it sir zex is this what i think it is isei says yes all of the higher ups have decided to give you your own evil pieces as a reward for helping us avoid another great war and no i will not accept your refusal sir zex said isei knew sir zex well enough to know that once he makes a decision he won't change his mind he looked to grave for aid but i said accept it dumbass isei gave up I accept, 
Thank you, Issei replied. Issei bows in gratitude. There's something you should know. You also have a king piece. It will increase your power far beyond your expectations, Sir Zek said. But aren't those rare and illegal? Rias replied. But considering his efforts and the kind of person Issei is, we decided that he should have this power. Why me of all people? Issei replied. Because you showed perfect control over yourself. And you care about those around you even if they hurt you. You want to protect them with this and you'll achieve your goal, Sir Zek said. You know me too well. Issei said. Issei smiles and so does everybody else. Now let's move this along. Accept the king piece into you after your channel your power into it. Issei picks up the king piece from the set and channels his energy into it. It changed from glowing red to red and black. It radiated its new energy and the other pieces changed. They mutated and are similar to the king beast but have lower stats. Everyone looked at Issei and gave him a concerned look. Issei, that energy... Is that what we all think it is? Akino says. Issei looks at her. I guess there's no point in hiding it. Issei shows them his eight fallen angel wings. Everyone had mixed emotions except Kuroka. I know you all have the same question, but Drake explains it the best. Drake, a red gauntlet appears on Issei's left arm. I'll make it short. After Issei got the heart of a fallen transplanted into him, Kuroka's Senjutsu magic merged Issei's dragon DNA with the DNA of a fallen. As to not wreck Issei's body, rejecting the heart, his body accepted it and it was altered. Issei now has the powers of a fallen and a dragon. He's the first to be a part of both worlds, Drake said. But to have eight wings and yet none of us could sense it? Rias replied, because Issei only has the wings so far. He has yet to unlock the powers. I can train him with the dragon's powers, but the abilities of the fallen are not part of my expertise, Drake said. I'll teach him. Azazel said. Everyone looks behind them. A man wearing a suit and head of black hair with golden bangs. Oh hey, it's you. Sorry that I couldn't join for almost your whole the join you for almost your whole year, Azazel, Issei said. So you knew who I was the whole time? Yeah. I know the power of a fallen when I sense it, and your power isn't exactly small enough to hide completely, Issei replied. You got me. He laughs awkwardly. So I'll train you, but I need to know just how powerful you'll become with the king piece. I want to see, Azazel said. Alright. Here I go. Issei accepts the pawn piece and it merged with his body. Issei's power was now a hundred times stronger. His eight wings became twelve and were bigger. They had far more power in them. Issei's brown hair turned black with a streak of blood red. His scurrula turned black, but his iris remained green. Issei's gauntlet morphed. Think like the fourth liberation for context. But the round jewel on his back in hand now, and had a thin golden gem with red and black energy floating in it. Boosted gear, evolution, Drake said. This power, I feel like I can do anything, Issei said. Issei, you're almost as strong as I am. This is beyond what I expected, Sir Zek said. Everyone was in awe after seeing what just transpired. Incredible. Issei, before we begin training, come to the Gregar. I want to know why the pieces mutated. You got stronger but didn't turn into a devil. Since this is the first time, we need answers. Come tomorrow, okay? Azazel said. Sure, some answers would be nice, he said, replied. So you're a dragon, a fallen, and a king. I think I have a new nickname, you, my love. How about the Fallen Dragon King? Kuroka said. Was it because it suits you, or was it because I said it? Kuroka said. Why not both? Get a room, you two, everyone said. Both got caught flirting and turned red. Well, now that's all that's left is for Issei to find members in his parage. Congrats, Issei, Sir Zek said. Everyone else also said congrats. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Issei smiled with, at all of them with no hate. Issei was really getting closer to forgiving them and moving on. Everyone went back to their daily routine. At Issei's apartment, scene break. Hey, Issei, there's something I need to do. I'll be back soon. I have to meet up with some old friends and tell them about being a free devil now. It's been close to a year since I saw them, so I'll be gone for a few days, Kuroka said. All right, honey. Call me if you need anything, Issei replied. Kuroka kisses him and leaves. Issei is alone, and now he can put his plan into action. Hey, partner, Issei said. I know what you're thinking about, and I say yes. She would be a perfect queen, wouldn't she, Issei? She truly would, Drake said. Kuroka as my queen. I can't stop smiling at the thought, Issei said. How about Kuroka as your wife, Drake said. Issei's fate went super red and his knees began to shake. That would be 
bliss, Ise said, and Drake just laughed. And that is the end of chapter 17. Chapter 18. Training. The next day, Issei teleported to the Grigar. Ah, Issei, welcome to the Grigar, Azazel said. Thanks, it's good to be here, Issei replied. As both walk around and talk about Issei's upcoming training, another fallen angel approached them. Yo, Barkil, what's up, Azazel said. Hello, Azazel, I need a moment with Issei, Barkil said. Sure, I'll be right back. Azazel walks away. So how can I help you, Issei said. You have done more than enough, son, Barkil said. Beg your pardon? Issei replied. You saved Akino. She accepted her fallen side and she started talking to me again ever since you disappeared. She and her team were miserable and I assume it was because your absence, but I do not want to know. But I do want to know how and why you disappeared, Barkil said. I'll show you, but please don't hate Akino. Just know that I'm close to forgiving her, Issei said. Barkil was really concerned now but kept an open mind. Issei showed him his memories. Barkil was now hurting inside after seeing what his daughter has become, or at least a few until months ago. I can't believe she would do that. After all you did for her, as her father, it's my duty to set her straight, Barkil said. No need. She's been punished enough, you know that, Issei replied. You're still willing to forgive after all they did? You continue to amaze me, Issei, Barkil said. I just want to move on. I was thinking about having her train with us. During her fight with Riser's Queen, she said she was barely able to win. She needs to get stronger. I just recently became a Fallen. E even I'm stronger than her, in her com team combined, Issei said. In that case, we should train together. Did you just say that you're a Fallen Angel? Barkil replied. Spreads his 12 wings. I have been for over a month now. But how? You were a human turned devil, Barkil said. Then I turned into a dragon to survive the evil piece removal and had a heart of a fallen implanted into me to replace my damaged one, Issei said. But we tried using artificial means to make fallen angels such as blood transfusion and organ transplants, but bodies always rejected them, Barkil said. You need sage magic to bond the two different types of DNA, Issei replied. We never knew sage magic had such power, Barkil replied. Sage users exist is very few numbers, and they rarely showed their abilities so it would make sense that no one thought to try it, Issei said. As the two engulfed by their conversation, they didn't even notice Azazel standing there grinning like an idiot. He was getting so much valuable info from these two. All right, you two, sorry to break up the conversation, but, Is but Issei... We have to go to Barkil and so do you. Right, sorry, both replied. Barkil goes to his office and thinks about what he just saw through Issei's memories. Issei still hated Akino and Rias for what they did and Barkil was truly disappointed in his daughter. How could she be so cruel for so long? Barkil began to cry, blaming himself for not trying to be there. He even thought Akino didn't want him around after what happened to her mother. He also thought about what Issei said. He's still willing to forgive her and even spend time training with her, but questions is, is why he still cares for her. No normal person would. You truly are a rare soul, Issei, Barkil replied. Issei and Azazel decided to start his training, his hidden fallen powers. Issei will start off by making a light spear. How do I do that? I tried, but nothing worked. The trick is to just create one. You have to visualize it. Don't try to copy any spears you've seen so far, but create your own design. Think of a shape, the type of damage, etc. Azazel said. All right, that actually helps, Issei said. Issei closed his eyes and begins to concentrate. Issei began to visualize a spear with a cyclone tip and three edges. That would actually cause the target to bleed out if the spear is removed. A truly deadly design. The... Then Issei made the bottom of the spear hollow, but with two spikes, like cat ears for reference, as to release a small flame strong enough to give it some extra power. The design was done, but Issei still had to add color to it, and then Issei smiled. He made it jet black with a tip of blood red. Issei created the spear in his palm and swing it around, each swing releasing a slow, dazzling golden flame. Azazel was blown away. Azazel could just tell the deadly sp how deadly the spear is after just looking at it. The perfect spear for such a being like Issei, it radiated power. That spear, wow, just wow, Azazel said. Thank you, Issei replied. The tip would kill, it would kill even without its magical properties. 
But why the hollow base? Azazel said. Issei smirked and ignited the base, releasing a max thrust after throwing it at the wall. It went straight through the wall after wall. Several fallen angels screamed after nearly being impaled. Mother, fuck, son of a monkey, mommy, all the screams came. One fallen was taking a bath and the spear destroyed the floor under the tub on the front side. It began to slide downwards. No, the fallen angel said. He falls through the floor and takes the tub with him. Issei and Azazel were watching through the hole. He immediately made the spear disappear, then looked at Azazel. They both just started bursting out laughing. Issei fell on his knees and Azazel held his ribs. That was freaking hilarious, Issei said. Azazel nodded after wiping his tears, then looked at the wall. It made a three-point star-shaped hole, and the edges of the hole were red hot. Is Zazel says in his mind, I better not get on his bad side. He's already stronger than I am and did all that damage just because I asked him to. He may become one of the strongest in existence if he gets serious. All right, he said, you clearly made a powerful spear and know how to use it. We'll skip to the physical training that includes flight, Azazel says. If you say so, Issei replies. Issei and Azazel begin training. In the first two days, Issei mastered his spear in flight. He learned to harden and sharpen his feathers, both for defense and offense, respectively. Issei would use his wings to block and would fire his feathers to cut his opponents down. Many testing dubbers fell victim to it. Eventually, Barkle wanted some combat action as penance for nearly getting impaled two days ago. Issei called Akino later on because he knew that she and Barkel needed to spend time and let out their frustrations. Akino was surprised to receive a call from Issei. Issei, I'm honestly surprised that you called me. How are you? Akino said. I'm good. You? Issei replied. Akino was happy that he was finally talking to her with the little most no hatred. I'm good now. Listen, I need your help. Do you want to train together? Training? I would like that. It's about time we did some real training together, Akino said. Meet me at the Gregor. I'm with Azazel. I could use a few magic lessons. I'll be right over, Akino says. Akino teleports to the Gregor. She never liked the place, but ever since she started talking and spending time with her father, it started to grow on her. Thanks for coming, Akino. I was surprised that you called me even though we had barely spoken since you last came back. Yeah, but now we are both different people, so let's get started. We need to get stronger. Akino, Issei, and Barkil trained together. Issei learned to use the elemental magic. Akino's holy lightning became more effective and both of their magic reserves increased. Barkil and Akino spent some time alone and talked about everything they felt. Akino finally accepted that it wasn't her father's fault that her mother was killed, but those members of her clan who did the dark deed and no longer have hatred to her father, but regret blaming him. Barkil forgave her and both bonded like father and daughter once again. The week was almost over. On the last day, Issei and Akino were training alone and just sat together after they both expended their energy. <sighs> training was tough, but fun, Akino said. Yeah, we both worked hard, but you did more, Issei said. Issei, you called me here for more than just training, didn't you? Akino said. Yeah, I called you to talk about your dad and really talk to him and also to apologize. Apologize? For what? Akino said. For what I said before I left. I used your past against you. It was a low blow and I'm sorry for that. Don't you dare, Akino said. She looked at Issei. I was cruel to you all these years and used training as an excuse to use my sadistic tendencies on you because I was too angry at myself and my father. You hurt me far less than I deserve, so please don't apologize. No, I do need to apologize. I was being cruel unnecessarily, Issei said. Issei, please just stop. Akino hugged him and he hugged back. He whispered in her ear, We should get along starting now. Both of us are half-breeds. Akino looked at Issei and says teasingly, why, are you asking me to be your mistress or queen? Kuroka and Rias will get jealous. Issei chuckled. Neither Kuroka is the only one I should be honest with, and I know you won't lie about what happened here, right? Issei said the last in his word in a cold tone that made sure Akino tells the truth. Ugh, Akino said. Besides, I already have my queen, and she's all that I need. I was thinking that we could be friends and for real this time. Akino fist bumped Issei and then went home. That sounds good. I'd like that. And that's the end of chapter 18 training chapter 19 the eight Issei and Akino teleported together Akino had a smile on her face from finally getting some peace hey Issei thank you Akino said for Issei replied for helping me again years ago you convinced me to use my fallen side now I know the truth about what really happened I finally accepted it and it that's all left is to do is right by you from now on Akino said 
I'm happy for you, Akano. I really am, Issei said. Akano nods, then gives Issei a thank you kiss on the cheek, then said teasingly, Hope your queen doesn't get jealous. Akano winked, then flew away. Queen? Yeah, that sounds perfect. Thanks, Akano, Issei said. Issei had uh, chosen his first member, Kuroka. The next day, Issei lay in his bed, listening to music and thought about how he could use his new abilities and who to add his parage. Issei sensed a familiar, familiar presence enter his department. Hey, Han, welcome back, Issei said. Hey, babe, Kuroka replied. Kuroka ran to Issei, then jumped on his lap, then looked at him with the cutest look ever. Whatever Kuroka was about to request of Issei, there's no way he'll be able to say no to it. I know what that look means, so just say it, Issei said. Issei couldn't help but blush at his girlfriend's cute antics. Well, I went to visit some old friends, as you know, and I may have invited them over, Kuroka said. May have? That means you legit invited them, Issei said. You know me so well, love, Kuroka said. So these friends, they would happen to be of the Chaos Brigade, would they? Issei said. Kuroka's cat ears dropped. You knew? Since when? Kuroka said. Since Shirone accidentally blurted it out, Issei said. Do you hate me? Kuroka replied. Never. I love you and friends of yours are always welcome. So when are they coming? Well, the eight of them are coming next month, Kuroka said. Wait, eight? My partner is only good for two, which brings you to the next part of my request. Both said at the same time, We need a bigger ass. Ha, huh? jinx. Also, fair warning. Three of them are crazy strong and still wanted criminals, so I was hoping that you could ask their Zex for help. Hmm, I'll see what I can do. So what did you do this week with your friends? Issei said, hung out since it's been months when I last saw them. Why wait so long to visit them? Oh, I had other prior engagements, Kuroka said. Kuroka ran her slim fingers over Issei's chest and started making out with them because why not? It's been a while. Issei then gets a call from Sir Zex. Hello? Issei, I need you and Kuroka at my office ASAP. Sir Zex hangs up. The way he spoke made them alert and teleported to his office. Sir Zex, what's going on? Issei asked in a serious tone, only to Sir Zex smiling without a care in the world. So, sorry to call you so soon, but training it couldn't wait. What couldn't? Kuroka said. Sir Zex gestured to come closer. As they did, Sir Zex teleported them to a big house in Co, one near the school. Um, why not just ask us to come here directly? We went from one part of the town to the underworld, only to return to a different part of the town. Dramatic effect, Sir Zex said. So do you need us to do something? Issei said. Yes. Enter the house, Sir Zex replied. Both look at each other. Then they approach the door. They felt familiar, familiar, several familiar energy signatures. They open the door and... Surprise! Both go at the same time. Huh? Welcome to your new house, Grafia said. Again, huh? Both replied... I'll explain. Since you've been back, all we wanted to do something so that both of you are the family. So we get this house. Eight bedrooms. Each room has separate bathrooms in one large bath. Just for the two of you, Rhea said. Guys, we can't possibly accept this, Kroka said. Actually, you both already own it, Grapey replied. How so? Issei said. After you defeated Riser and became a legend in the underworld, the video became so viral that people would request us to tell them about you. Edit your videos, remaster it, even create a TV show, Grafia said. All that from one match, Issei said? Yes, and since you're the Red Dragon Emperor, you have the access to copyrights and royalties. All of that paid off nicely, but we did have some of the cash to pay for productions, Grafia said. Just how much are we talking about? Sir Zex pulls out a tablet and shows Issei's bank account. 50 million. Both Kuroka and Issei, all that, both of their souls nearly left their bodies. Oh, no, you don't. None of us want to go through that again, Rias said. Rias grabs their souls and forces them back into their bodies. Whew, thanks, Rias, both said. You're very welcome. All of these are your personal funds, so use them as you wish. Oh, I have an idea. Drinks on us, people. Let's party, Kuroka said. Everyone said, woo! All had a party and were drunk as a single girl in the bachelorette party. Sir Zex and Grapia were flirty drunk, then into... Then went into one of the eight bedrooms. Azia, Sharone, Kiba, and Konika were passed out drunk. Rias was quiet but honest drunk when asked a question. Issei and Kuroka actually managed to keep their senses. Rias just kept looking at Issei as Kuroka as they have fun. Kuroka leads to go to the restroom. Rias walks over to them. Yo, Issei, can I talk to you? Rias said. Sure. Look, now that you're a king and all, have you decided on your queen? Why do you ask? Issei said. Because if you haven't, then please make me your queen, Rias replied. Issei did the mother of all spit takes. Rias, are you nuts? Issei replied, no, I'm serious. Make me your queen. Not gonna happen. You're a high-class devil with your own parage, Issei said. 
Please give me a chance. I said no and it's final. I already have a queen in mind. It's Kuroka, isn't it? Yeah. I have no chance to earn your love, Rias said. No, Rias, I won't fall for you and I'm sorry for that, he said replied. I see. Then I should give up, huh? Probably better for both of us, Rias said. It's the best thing to do, Issei replied. Can you at least tell me why you want to forgive us so quickly? Five years of mistreatment and willing to forgive us after you come back? It would make more sense to hate us as hell even want us dead, but you don't. Why? Don't get me wrong. I still hate the shit you guys put me through, but for some reason I still care about you guys. I already forgave all your Paraj members, and I'm just about ready to forgive you too, Issei said. Thank you, Issei. As much as it hurts not being on your side the way I hoped, I can be in another way. Just wish I could get a kiss goodbye, Rhea said. That can't happen between you and Issei, Kuroka said. Kuroka showed up and overheard Rhea's last comment. Rhea looked at Kuroka right in the eyes and then her lips, the ones that Issei kissed every chance he got. Sorry, but I need closure, Rhea said. What are you, Kuroka? Rhea grabbed Kuroka's face then straight up French kissed her. Issei dropped his beer. Rhea broke the kiss and Kuroka covered her mouth. Sorry, but that was clearly as close as I'll ever get to kissing Issei, Rhea said. Rhea then went onto the couch and passed out. Both Kuroka and Issei go at the same time. The fuck? And that's the end of chapter 19, the 8. And that is where we're going to stop for now. So we just stopped at chapter 19 and the next part will be chapter 20. So again, thank you guys so much for your support. I know this wasn't the longest episode ever. It was around probably 33, 34 minutes. I just wanted to get another video out there. I'm sorry. I've been extremely busy and to be honest, I'm kind of going through something right now and I can't really get over it. So <laughs> thank you so much for the support. I'm, I'm no offense. Don't take this into consideration. I'm just never, I don't really like talking about my personal life on YouTube. You know, I love you guys and I just want to stay positive most of the time. So again, Thank you guys for all the support. It's been absolutely amazing. The support on this series is way crazier than I ever thought it would be. So again, let's try to hit 1,000 likes. And if you guys want to join, the little blue button right next to the subscribe button is my little upload schedule thing. So again, thank you guys so much for the support, okay? Seriously, we hit 24,000 subscribers. I think we're at 24,500 right now currently. And the video will probably come out today as I'm recording it, just as a little special thank you for how long I've been gone and enjoy the uh, NFL playoffs. And without further ado, Spartanic Arts DxD out. See you next time. What's up, guys? It's your host, Spartanic Arts DxD, back with another high school DxD related video. And today we have What If Issei Went Solo Part 5. And we've been killing it on the like goal, so let's try to go for 1,000 likes once again. Thank you so much for all those likes. It really means the world to me. And if you guys want to know exactly when I upload slash my upload schedule, click the little blue button right next to the subscribe button. I also added a new membership tab for $0.99. So that'd be wonderful if you could. You don't have to, of course. So again, thank you for all the support. I also have my channel. My other channel is going to be What Ifs on Goku mostly. And it's going to be called Ampow Pal. It's, it's called Ampow Palski, my bad. But it'll be linked down in the description below and on the channels tab. So thank you so much for the support. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. Chapter 20, The Queen. Now, this has 18 plus content. You guys can read this one at your own risk. I'm not going to be reading this part. I Basically, what happens, or the most important part, is that Issei was talking to Kuroka about how Rias was telling that she wanted to be his queen. And then they just started, you know, getting down and dirty. So let's go ahead and go to chapter 21. Chapter 21, Dinner and Stories. Almost a month has passed and Kuroka's friend will soon arrive. Issei was sitting on his bed thinking about what he'll say to Sir Zex. Kuroka joins him. What are you thinking about, Kuroka says. About how I'll explain eight members of the Chaos Brigade showing up, Issei said. Hmm, how about we strike a deal with him? What do you propose? What if I convince them to side with us, Kuroka said. I think that might be the only option. I'll call Azazel and Sir Zex, but one question. What are their favorite foods? Why do you ask? Making their favorite foods will show them that they are welcome here, Issei said. After eating nothing but crap in the Chaos Brigade, any home-cooked meal is good, Kuroka replied. Well then, we better go grocery shopping at least a few times, since eight people are coming. The whole day was spent shopping. After all, that Issei contacts uh, Azazel and Sir Zex for a quick meeting, the three of them are joined by Sarah Fall and Ajuka. Thank you all for coming, so I won't waste any time. All you know, 
all you know that Kuroki used to be part of the Chaos Brigade and knows eight members. She and I request you to allow the eight members to come to Ko and stay with us. Eight members of the Chaos Brigade? Are you crazy? Everyone said in sync. They're willing to cooperate with us in exchange for Mesty. Maybe even allies with us, Issei said. Kuroko, we trust you, but we know nothing of the eight. Sarah Paul said. Two of them are Longinus users, as I'm told, Issei said. Everyone looks at each other and agree to let them visit, but they have to watch them at all times. Issei accepted the term, so hopefully so will his guest. Issei went home and started to prepare dinner with Kuroka's help since they would arrive in a few hours. A lot of food needed to be prepared, so thank goodness for magic. The food was done just in time. Issei sensed eight people outside, but one of them sent shivers down his spine while the other angered him. Kuroka? Issei said. Yes, Issei? I think they are here. Issei went to the front door and opened it and ready to defend himself. He sees eight people, but since it's dark, he can only see ones in front of him. Hey guys, glad you could make it. Come on in. Hey, come meet my friends Volley, Keo Keo, Bikyu, Arthur, his sister Lefe, Orphis, and the two girls in the hood are... Hold on. Girls, you're in our home, so it's safe to remove the hoods. As the girls removed their hoods, Issei was surprised to say the least. One girl was with, had short blue hair with green highlights, and the other has long chestnut hair tied in twin tails. That's better. Now they are... Irna? Zenovia? Issei said. Both girls looked at him, wondering how he knew their names. Have we met before? You don't look familiar, Zenovia said. Of course you wouldn't look familiar since he went through so many changes, especially appearance-wise. No, I don't suppose you would have been some time now, huh? Issei said. Issei uses magic to change his appearance from dragon to his old human form. Recognize me now? Issei said. Issei, is that you? Zenovia and Irina said at the same time. Yeah. How have you two been? Issei replied. Both girls hugged him. Their five five frames hugging Issei, who's a foot taller than them. Issei just returned their hug, and all three shed tears of joy. Sorry to break up the moment. That's my boyfriend. Also, how do you three know each other? Kuroka said. Oh, do I have a story for you? Issei replied. Well, tell me over dinner since it's getting cold. Sure. Come on in, everyone. All of us clearly need to talk, Issei said. Everyone sits at the dinner table. So let's hear the story. Well, almost 10 years ago, Issei, Zenovia, and I were in the same foster home for a while. The three of us practically became siblings until one day Issei ran away and we were left at the church, Irina said. Issei, please tell us why you ran away, Zenovia replied. Because one night at the foster home, I couldn't sleep, so I decided to walk around. I saw our foster parents in a room talking about sending you two away to the said church. I hid in the shadows just as they left the room. I snuck in and saw the paperwork with your names of it, and before I could find out where you two were being sent, they found me and tried to attack me. I jumped out the window and had to avoid getting killed. They came after me, but, they came after me, but I lost them, and by the time I came back, you two were gone, and so were they. The house was burned to ashes along with any evidence of where you two were taken. I knew our foster dad, father, Freed, was crazy, but this was even insane for him. Everyone was shocked that the tragedy occurred. But I'm just happy to have you both back. So what happened at the church? We later heard that that bastard father Freed went insane and got himself killed, Issei said. We were actually sold to them. They trained us and used us as an experiment, Zenovia replied. That's because a couple of years ago, I found him trying to rape a nun, so my former team members and I killed him. He didn't leave us any choice. So what about the experiment? Is the Holy Sword Project by any chance? Issei replied, how did you know? Because almost six years ago, I was turned into a devil against my will. And one of my comrades was a test subject in that project until it was a failure. And they were all murdered except for him. He managed to escape, and I'm glad you do too. Freed was a part of it, Issei said. Lefay just said, wow. We ran away after we couldn't take it there anymore. But we did manage to learn a trick or two, Zenobia said. You two wield holy swords, don't you? Issei replied. Yuna and Zenobia take out their Excalibur Mimic and Durandal. Please put those away. You know I hate those things, Volley replied. Sorry, Yuna and Zenobia said. Everyone except Volley and Orphis talked. Arthur and Lefay Penadragon 
talked about their life in England, and him being forced to marry against his will, so he ran away. Le Fay loved her brother more than her so-called home, and was quite the mage while Arthur was his swordmaster. Buka is a descendant from Sun Wukong, was a traveler, and loved to have fun. Keo Keo may look arrogant, but was quite humble. He mentioned that since he wielded the true Longina spear, the expectations were too much and became a target. Kuroka noticed that the tension between Issei, Volley, and Orphis. Alright, so now that everyone shared their story, let's address the main issue here, Kuroka replied. Alright, so the biggest one concerning everyone is that you all can stay here, but under the conditions that you'll ally with us and that you'll no longer be labeled as terrorists. You guys can live your life without having to run or hide. Issei said, Who gave these conditions? Arthur replied, Sir Zex the Devil King, Lady Seraphal, Ajuka, and Azazel. Issei replied, Oh wow, all four of them agreed, LeFay said? Yes, so what do you say? It's a damn good deal. Issei said, We accept, Arthur replied. That's great. I'm quite relieved. I do not know why you guys left the Chaos Brigade, though, Issei said, because the ones in charge were just using us after shoving the nation of a great cause down our throats and wanted us to use Orphus's power, Volley said. Speaking of which, how come the Dragon of Infinity is here? I thought the Dimensional Gap was her home, Issei replied. Great Red Force dropped by annoying Bed with his stunts and tricks. She came to us by chance and stuck around with us partly because of the fellow dragon, Biaku said. And that brings us to our final topic, Drake. A red gauntlet appears on his Issei's left arm. Hello, everyone. Hello, Albion. I know you can hear me, Drake replied. Two white and blue metallic wings appear on Folly's back. It's been a while, red one, Albion said. I knew you were the white dragon emperor, Folly. I sensed it the moment you came here, Issei replied. So, you know about our fate, huh? I do, but fuck it, Issei said. Excuse me? It's our destiny to fight until the death, Volley said. I've died before, and I gotta say that I'm not a big fan of it, Issei replied. How dare you, Volley replied. Enough, you two, Kroka said. You're right, love. We're having a nice dinner, so let's not fight, Issei replied. If you don't mind my asking, how did you two meet, Biku said. Well, it was about a year ago. I had recently quit being a devil, and with Drake's help, I became a full-fledged dragon. I stayed in the forest to train, and that's where she and I met, Issei said. We just clicked, even though it took a while for me to gain trust, Kroker replied. I suppose that's true, Issei said. But there's one thing you didn't mention, Arthur said. What's that? Your fallen angel powers, Arthur replied. Everyone looked at Arthur, then Issei. I suppose I neglected to mention it. But I think it's only fair that you all know my story since everyone here shared theirs, Issei replied. Issei looks at his queen. She created a barrier to avoid any prying ears and eyes. All right, I'll start from the beginning, Issei said. Issei told them his story, from his parents being murdered, foster homes surviving on the streets, murdered by Rainer, being turned into a devil, endured torment for five years and hanging on to his second life by a threat after each time, coming to his senses, fighting Riser after exposing him, removing eight pieces, turning into a dragon, half a year later, having to fight Cocaville and his fallen army including killing Rainer's revenge, nearly dying by Cocaville's light spear, replacing his damaged heart with Rainer's with Kuroka's help, his former abusive teammates turning over a new life and forgiving them one by one, learning to new his used powers, becoming the first fallen dragon king. Everyone had mixed emotions and completely stopped eating, Irina and Zenovia giving off bloodlust, Arthur being disgusted and Lafay nearly crying. Bioko held his hands, his face covered by a shadow. Orphus remained expressionless, but her attention was all on Issei. Kuroka could feel Issei's aura fluctuate from the dark memories resurfacing. Volley was too angry but controlled himself. Keo Keo tightly gripped his spear to the point where his hands were shaking. And that's my story. Any questions, Issei replied. Do you mind if I kill Rias? Zenobia said. I would love to kill her. One small cut at a time. Excalibur Mimic can turn her into a tiny needle. Oh boy, Irina said. Tempting, but don't. It'll cause hell to break loose. Literally, Issei said. How can you forgive them after what they did to you? Irina replied. I did so, so that I don't become like them. I want to be happy, Issei said. The last comment made them go silent. After a minute, So who wants cake? It should be done baking, Issei said. Cake? Orphus replied. You'll love it, Orphus. I'll bring it. Be right back, Kuroka said. As soon as Kuroka left, all the guys stood up. I'll say it before she returns. Issei, Kuroka is our sister by bond, so if you hurt her, then we will kill you, Folly replied. If I ever do that, I want you to. If she hated me, then more of this life, it isn't worth living, Issei replied. 
Kuroka comes in. Who wants cake? Um, why are you guys standing? All the guys go, no reason. They sit back down. Orphis just looks at the cake. Issei cuts a piece for her. As soon as she eats it, her eyes had a little twinkle in it. Her usually dull eyes now had a light in them. She was enjoying herself, and her face held a smile for once. Everyone was happy that the dragon of infinity was in the form of a little girl with long black hair and looked adorable eating cake. Cake is not a lie. It is now my life, Orphis said. And that is the end of chapter 21, Dinner and Stories. Chapter 22, Well-Deserved Laughs So, Kuroka, how is your relationship with Issei, Zenobia said. The best. We never get mad at each other or argue. It's almost perfect, Kuroka replied. Almost? Lefei said. We don't have kids yet, Kuroka said. This really got their attention. So did you guys do it yet? Irina said. Kuroka held her hands 12 inches apart. Just then, Issei entered with drinks. Zenobia, Irina, and Lefei look at him, but then between his legs. Get a nosebleed, then pass out. The guys enter at the same time and see the three girls unconscious. What the hell happened? Volley said. Why do they have nosebleeds? And they are smiling, K.O.K.O. replied. Everyone looks at Kuroka, who is on the verge of laughing her tails off. Kuroka, honey, what did you tell them? Take a guess. Why? That's private. Issei turned red. Did they know about... All 12 inches in the broken bed, Kuroka said. Issei drops all the drinks and fell onto his knees and so did the others. No, no, Arthur said. Kuroka don't go around telling that, Keokeo said. Just no, okay, just no, Volley said. No guy wants to know about the other guy's hose, Byuku said. It's not a hose, it's a dragon, Kuroka replies. What did he just say, Volley replied. Oops, please no more. I'm already embarrassed enough, Issei replied. <laughs> Messing with you guys is fun, Kuroka said. Volley now almost crying. Issei, please make your girlfriend stop. I ask you this as a fellow dragon. Please, Volley said. Okay, okay. Kuroka, I think they are punched enough. Also, why not show them what we worked on, Issei said. Oh, that's even better. Wake the girls up. I want to see. I want them to see this, Kuroka said. Sure. Duke replied. As they woke up the girls, everyone stayed down on the couch and paid attention to what Kuroka was saying. Okay, so this is important. As you all know... We should ally with the devils, so we should show them our power so they trust us. Understood, Kroker replied. Everyone said yes and sink. So who's up first, Issei said. Byoko showed off his extending staff in a flying nimbus, I along with excellent martial arts skills. Arthur, Irina, and Zenobia showed off their swords. Colbron, Excalibur, Mimic, and Durandal, respectively. Lefei was clearly a mage. Kao Kao showed his true Longina spear. Everyone was already knew about Orphis because, well, you can't hide that kind of power, but Volley was hesitant. Volley? Issei said. I'd rather not. I hate my heritage, Volley says. E Issei, even we don't know just how strong he is, Kroker replied. Volley, you need to give us a chance. Believe me, when I say that you won't like it, Volley said. Tell you what, show us and I'll show you what I am the fullest. Then we'll spar in due time, Issei said. Sparring, huh? Sounds fair, Volley replied. Everyone's thoughts. Battle maniac. Issei and Volley face each other and show their wings at the same time. Issei's scholar turns black, eyes glow green, his horns released a focused flame and twelve black wings with a red center of each feather. Volley's appearance doesn't change, but ten devil wings caught half of everyone's attention while the other half on Issei. I think it's time. My full name is Volley Lucifer, a descendant of the original Lucifer, Volley said. You hid your last name from everyone for a good reason, I'm sure, so I won't pry, Issei said. Thank you. And now you will honor our agreement, Volley said. Yes, I will, Volley, Issei replied. Ahem! Why should you two show off when I can too, Kuroka said. Of course, Issei replied. Kuroka takes a spotlight when she spreads her eight wings with slow flames of red and gold. She opens her eyes and the beauty captured everyone's attention. Even Orphus gasped. Issei once again couldn't contain himself and straight up kissed her after she powered down. All of the girls blushed at the sight. Both broke off their kiss after they saw everyone staring at them. Please don't stop on our account. It was just getting good. Ouch, Byuku said. Ina hit him on the head. Zip it. Issei, you really do love her, Arthur replied. Love. What we have is greater than some human word, Issei said. A flirt even in the presence of each other, Kuroka said. You know I have nothing to hide, Issei said. I just love being a queen. Jeez, get a room, you two, Lefei said. 
then you'll have to wait at least an hour if you know what I mean, Kuroka said. Kuroka winks and everyone goes red again. All right, Kuroka, you torture them enough. There are eight bedrooms here. Kuroka and I are occupying one of them. Feel free to choose your rooms, Issei said. Issei, Irina and Zenovia share a room. Orphis and Lefaith share one. The guys sleep in separate rooms, obviously. The next day, everyone was having breakfast except for Issei and Kuroka. They began to wonder where they weren't awake yet. I'll go check on them, Volley said. The instant Volley stood up from the table, Issei appeared from behind and was carrying Kuroka on his back. Kuroka, are you feeling all right? Issei, what'd you do to her? Volley said. Better question. What hasn't he done to me in bed? <laughs> I can't feel my legs, Kuroka said. It's eight in the morning, you guys. Please, come on, Keokeo said. The two looked at each other in the back to them. We're not sorry, Issei and Kuroka said. As the two enjoy coffee and breakfast with everyone, they share stories in their experience like they were with their family. At some point, Orphis sat on Issei's lap and ate sweets. Eventually, the time came and they all had to see the three devil kings and the governor general of the fallen, Azazel. They teleported and entered Serzek's office and started talking about an alliance. They all came to do an agreement without any issues, thankfully. Folly being a Lucifer was a shock, but a good one. I'm glad all went well, so and I have a suggestion. There will be one there will be a party to celebrate. Sarah Org's Bell's promotion to high class devil in the start of a raiding game, Sarah Fall said. He's finally a king, huh? I suppose it was a matter of time, he said replied. A cousin to the Gremory clan without any special powers becoming a king. Quite a rare feat, Kuroka said. Indeed. Even Lord Odin is coming to congratulate him personally. Cyrorg's personality is that type that earns him respect and admiration from everyone, Sir Zek said. I know that from personal experience. He and I are similar. I didn't have any special powers either, but he was kind to me as a fellow devil. He earned my respect right there and then, Issei said. What's the rating game, Zenovia replied. A tournament. Teams fight, to, teams fight to win, to put it simply. You can all join, but there is an issue. Irina, Zenovia, and Arthur, you three wield holy swords, but you still are human, thus limited in the fight. Forgive me if I upset you, but I don't want anyone to take a risk that they shouldn't, Ajuka said. I'm also a human, and so is Lefei, Keo Keo said. True, but you have the true Longinus, and it's the most powerful sacred gear there is. One cut from that, and no devil will survive. Lefaith can perform a great variety of magic, and her magic reserves are equal to that of a high-class devil. She has the chance to fight and survive, Ajuka replied. Can only devils join, or can fallen joins too, Irina replied. It's an open tournament. You can make a name for yourselves as you win. All you need to do is register as a king or any other one piece in a team. You can join them by registering. You don't have to become a devil or a fallen, Grafia said. In that case, Issei, I want to join your parage, Irina replied. Same, Zenobia said. Can I, Lefei said. Guys, let's talk about it, Issei said. You have a mouth until the raiding game. Enough time to train. You have a month before the raiding game. Enough time to train, Zerzek said. I love a good fight. Who are we participating, Volley said. Bale, Phoenix, my sister Sona, Rius, and you guys so far. The Norse might join the next time because they want to see how it works since the great since the great was had ended. But Rius doesn't have a full parage yet, Issei said. Yeah, about that. Zerzek said, Oh boy, here it comes. Rius asked me to talk to you about that. She's asking if you would be willing to team up with her. Issei just goes silent. I know you haven't forgiven her, but please, Issei, I only ask you to try. What do you guys say? Issei said, most hesitated to answer. I say we should talk to them about it. We don't have a full parage either, so teaming up might work, Kuroko said. Why can't I just say no to you? Issei said, because you love me so much, Kuroko replied. Too true. Everyone. Ahem. Both go at the same time. Sorry. We will know how strong they are, Keo Keo. This would be a good chance to test our strength, Arthur said. Also, Issei, we found that sh what Shalva was up to. He was really trying to enhance devils to the point where they weren't devils, but super devils, Sir Zek said. I don't like the sound of that, Issei replied. Super devils are what we are at our current power level. That's one of the reasons why we we're selected to lead the devils, Sir Zek said. I'm glad you did. The people love you, Kuroka replied. You're too kind, Ajuka replied. All right, so how about we go home and decide on who registers which piece? We need to become a full team, Volley said. Everyone go at the same time. Right. And that is chapter 22, well-deserved laughs. Chapter 23, sharing the memories of the past. 
As all ten of them teleported to Issei's new house, there were five people already waiting for them. Should I start by putting salt lines under the doors and windows now if you're going to start breaking in, Rias? Issei replied. Sorry, we just wanted to surprise you, Rias said. Breaking and entering, definitely not a surprise, Issei said. Oh, hush you, you're upsetting her, Kuroka said. Okay, fine, but I'm putting some barriers up later, Issei said. So there you are, you're a new friend. Nice to meet you all, I'm Rias Grimmery, Rias said. My name is Akino Hajima, I'm her queen. I'm Azia Hargento, her bishop. I'm Kiba Hyota, her knight, and Sharone Tojo, the rook. Everyone just returned her greetings coldly except for Sharone's. Their names instantly reminded them of what Issei endured, and they were having second thoughts about joining her now that they actually put the face-to-face -face name of Issei's former abusive master in team. From their looks and tone, Rias could tell that they knew about her. They know, don't they, Rias said. In order to make an alliance, we all had to share our stories. No lies, no details skipped over, Issei said. I see, Rias replied. Rias is saddened that even more people know of her actions. The killing intent coming from Irina and Zenovia was scary. Let's start. Only one month till the games. You five, meet Volley, Buko, Arthur, Lefe, Keo, Keo, Irina, Zenovia, and Orphis. The Dragon of Infinity? That Orphis? Akino said. Yep, the one and only, Kuroka replied. I know that you guys are nervous, but Orphis isn't the only reason, is it? Issei said. The four holy power signatures in this room are terrifying, Kiba said. We wield the true long giants and three holy swords, but fear not. We only use them on our enemies. We are allies here, so no need to fret, Keo Keo said. Thank you, Kiba replied. I'm also the White Dragon Emperor, FYI, Volley replied. And Team Rhea starts sweating bullets. They need to change the topic ASAP. So should we start planning? We can start off by seeing each of each other's strength, and then we decide to go on who can register as which piece, Akino said. I suggest sparring. Best way to know, in my opinion, Volley said. Sure. The basement door leads to the training dimension. Let's start there, Issei said. Everyone goes there and starts training. Arthur and Kiba were evenly matched, but learned from each other due to their very different techniques. Irina and Zenobia battled as usual. Orphis just sat there watching Azia, Lefei, and Akino practice magic since Azia really needed to learn new abilities and other than healing mag in basic magic. Byoko definitely gave Shirone a tough time with his martial arts. It was superior to her combat skills. Kuroka and Rish trained both in close combat. Kuroka had a bit of trouble holding back. Her sage flame magic overpowered Rias's power of destruction. From the sheer difference in the energy alone, Rias was badly bruised and beaten. You all right? Kroka said. I'm down for the moment, Rias said. Kroka began to heal her injuries using her sage magic senjutsu. If I had to guess then, I think you were almost trying to kill me, Rias said. Sorry, I'm not used to this new queen power yet, Kroka said. We both know that's not the reason, Rias said. You're right. A part of me is still angry at you, Kroka said. Can't blame you for that. The girls with the Excalibur and Durandal, their killing intent was strong. So who are they, Rias said. Kroka tells her their story. Rias was shedding tears now that she knows that those two were the only ones Issei had in his childhood and lost them again. Did Issei ever have a happy time in his childhood, Rias said? Only when R Irina and Zenovia were there, even though it was brief. I saw his memories and it hurt to see them rarely smile. Can you go ahead and read my memories? Maybe you can show him that I truly regret doing what I do to him. And I wasn't lying about anything for sure, Rias said. Sure, Kuroka replied. She calls for Issei and he shows up. There's something Rias wants to show you, Kuroka. What is it, Issei said. Kuroka places her palm on both of their heads. They're both seeing each other's memories. Issei saw all of Rias' memories, all of the shit she put him through. It made him angry. He saw it the moment he left through her eyes. Her feelings, her nightmares, her and hallucinations that followed, her feelings for him, trying to remove the light spear with his bare chest and not letting Kuroka help. All of it was real, but the memories of her being so arrogant, foolish, abusive, etc. was obviously pissing him off, and it was increasing as it went on. Her memories of getting cheated on and then trying to use him just because Ryzer was no longer good enough. Rias was seeing and feeling everything he did from his parents being murdered, seeing their dead bodies, the smell of blood, the orphanage, father freed attacking him, forced to live on the street in a cold heat for years, being stabbed in the chest by Rainer. She felt her chest burn as if it were a hundred fires were lit. Seeing her abusive self through his eyes, his rage, the hopelessness, being used by just about everyone except for Grafias or Zex, Sona, and a few others but still feeling alone. 
the release of all of his pent-up emotions, fighting Riser, feeling death approach after removing the pawn pieces, the pain from transforming into a dragon, going berserk with all of the thoughts of death, destruction, and other negative emotions. Being saved by Karoka, being happy with her, having a light spear damage his heart, having a heart transplant, then finally reunited with Irina and Zenovia met the new people who he always calls family. He no longer even considers her as family, but then again, could he ever call someone like that her family? She was completely overwhelmed by it and she saw him, Drake. She didn't just see him, she was literally in his presence and felt his clearly suppressed rage. Greetings, Grimmery. You saw it, didn't you? Drake said. Rias couldn't reply. She was out of her right mind right now. She felt another source of anger. That's Issei's rage. You can feel it, right? Like he's suppressing it. Best to leave, Grimmery. I was polite enough to you at the hospital, but my self-control is running out, Drake said. She was forced out. Kuroka stopped and she was doing and both Issei and Rias backed away and opened their eyes. Issei let out an angry aura while Rias was all on force trying to control her breathing. All of that was way too much and it only lasted a minute or two, yet it felt like a lifetime to her. She was crying when she caught her breath. Everyone saw Issei slowly releasing his bloodlust with an emotionally wrecked Rias on the ground. Kuroka gestured everyone to stay away. Kuroka, why? Issei said. He asked her. This is the first time he was angry at her. Why did you do that? Issei said. I am sorry, Issei, but it had to be done. You can hate me for it, but I don't regret doing that. You both need to see and feel everything, otherwise you'll never heal from that level of damage. I agree with her, partner. You need to heal yourself and said that you wanted to. Sometimes the healing process is more painful than the wound. Issei stopped releasing his bloodlust and calmed down. Rias, you okay? Issei said, no. Fuck. She continues to sob. You two should talk. Go outside, Kroka said. Both leave the training area and stand in silence for a moment. No need to worry, everyone. It's all good, Kroka said. They nod and go back to training as if the shit would have hit the fan. So you really were telling the truth about the nightmares and everything else, huh? Issei said. Yeah, Issei, was I a monster? You saw my memories, so you already know. I want to hear it from you, Rhea said. Yes, I saw you exactly how you saw yourself from my memories, Issei said. Compared to what you went through, my pain is nothing, Rhea said. Maybe it was a mistake that you saw them, Issei said. It was a mistake treating you like that and letting you die, <laughs> Issei said. I spoke to Dragon the Sacred Gear. Even he is livid. Us dragons tend to hold grudges, Issei said. You held a grudge before turning into one, but your anger really is like that of a dragon. How are we alive? I really don't know. Because Serzek, Sona, Grafia, and Syraorg are the reasons. I respect them as they respected me. Three of them are your family, and I didn't want to hurt them by killing you. Mother Nature knows that I wanted to, with every fiber of my being, but I'm over it now. You can thank Kuroka for that. If she wasn't here, I would have lost control and torn you all into pieces and mount the heads on spikes. She is the reason I let it all go. He smiled and blushed a bit. So you really do love her, Rhea said. I love her more than anything. She's the reason I want to find peace. I want to be happy, and I know that I'll never be happy if I don't let my anger go. It's not easy, let me tell you that, Rhea Issei said. So there's really no chance for me, Rhea said. No, Issei said. He shot her down instantly. He may have forgiven her, but the anger is still there. It's okay. I had my shot years ago and blew it. I shouldn't complain no matter how much it hurts. She thinks he had a chance? I call Albion shit on that, Drake said. Issei just said there's silence. Issei, I just want to know you are part of our lives, including my own, and I've learned my lesson. Have you now? Issei said. I felt everything you did all at once. You went through it all alone, and we were the cause of half of it. I'm sorry I'll do anything to make it up to you. You can hurt me if you want to. Just please forgive me, Rhea said. So she finally understands, huh? Kuroka, you work miracles, Issei said. I know, Rhea. You really did. Does that mean you forgive me? Under one condition. Rhea began to dread what it could be. Let me register as your pawn. But it's only for one time thing, got it? I'm only doing it so that I can fight Riser and Syraorg. If you fought them, then you're screwed. Also, stop breaking into my house and that goes for your team too, Issei said. Rias began to cry and laugh. She dumped on him once again, but this time she only hugged him. Anything, anything you want, Rias said. Issei hugged her back and both felt peace at last. Issei patted her on the back and rubbed her silky hair. 
they stayed like that for a while. You know, it's kind of pathetic now that I think about it, Rhea said. What is, Easy replied, that I was willing to become your queen or pawn or even your mistress if it meant that you would forgive me. Having two lovers would have been kind of fun, even if I was just a plaything, Rhea said. Polygamy isn't for me. I'm happy to have one lover. Two is way too much, Issei said. How come, Rhea replied. I'd sob someone of their... I'd rob someone of their potential life partner, and Kuroka will always be number one. I can't hurt her feelings like Ryze or her you. I really wish I got to know you better back then. Who knew that you were such a deep thinker and considerate, Rhea said. Being in love does one of two things, make you stupid or make you wise. It's up to you to decide. Now let's go back to training. This is becoming a bit too sentimental for me. Hey, if you're going to become my pawn, then what about the others, Rhea said. Kuroka can become your bush-up. Bioko as a rook, Arthur as the knight. I'll be your only pawn since that's where all of the underworld knows so far the others won't take part yet they told me in advance before we came here they just want to deserve for now but i know they'll hate us will they actually join ria said i'll talk to them it'll be okay red Issei said and that's the end of chapter 23 sharing the memories of the past that is going to be where we stop there on chapter 23. So thank you guys so much for the support on this series. Seriously, it's absolutely been amazing. I'm glad people like the thumbnail so much. Like I, I did take a while to make because I really wanted to make it cool for this one because what if Issei is solo or rogue? It's just a badass concept if you know what I mean. Now I do want to do another series like this but just switch up the title called like what if Issei went rogue just because I'd like... I feel like Rogue would be more of a dark, but I wanted to do Solo because this story kind of lightens up at the end, but he also has that super angry moment, so I feel that I would call it Solo. And yes, I am 100% going to do What If Naruto Was Betrayed, I actually need to make the thumbnail, and I'm just trying to find the right story because I want it to be absolutely just hit the top notch in the emotions department, if you know what I mean, because I love feeding into the emotions at like the end of the like you know the story things like that i just love reading them and as for ann popowski my other channel i'm going to be doing a lot of goku upsets or just talking about harem anime or just anime in general on that channel so if you guys do want to subscribe to ann popowski it'll be linked down in the description below along with fallen dxd which is my third channel a lot of people are wondering what that is fallen dxd will probably be my shorts or if you guys want me to do something different on there just let me know what you want me to do with fallen dxd but for as for ann popowski which was my original main channel but it's my backup channel now that spartanic's my main technically it'll always be my main in my heart but whatever um but yes, and Palski will be like, what ifs on Goku, because I, I just love Dragon Ball, I love Naruto, and I love High School DxD, and that's probably the weirdest combo you've ever heard, but I really do enjoy all of them. So thank you guys so much for the support. If you guys want to subscribe to all those channels, it'll be down in the description below. If you guys want to, you know, join that channel membership, I added a new one that's 099. It'd be crazy if you guys hit the join membership button, and thank you guys for the support, and without further ado, Spartanic Arts DxD, out. What's up guys, it's your host Spartanic Arts DxD back with another high school DxD related video. And today we have What If Issei Went Solo Part 6. You already know the like goal, let's try to hit 1000 likes, okay, because we've been smashed it the last couple of times. And if you guys want to know exactly when I upload slash my upload schedule, click the little blue button right next to the subscribe button. Seriously, thank you for all the support and I do have something special coming soon. Thank you for all the support on my What If Goku Was The God Of Destruction. Again, that channel will be linked down in the description below. Thank you for all the support, by the way. I really do appreciate that. It got over 100 likes. That was very cool to see. And I have something extremely special coming because let's just say I lost a coin flip and I have to stream with one of uh, the fellow girls at my school. And yes, I will do a face reveal at the same time so you will be able to see both of our reactions. We will be doing a tier list you know, so it's going to be kind of crazy. So <laughs> without further ado, let's go ahead and get into part six. Chapter 24, Chess. Issei and Rias joined the others. Both looked happier. So Issei, how did it go? Kuroka said. I've forgiven her. Now I can finally move on and so can she, Issei said. You two took over an hour. Did something happen, Kuroka said. Between Rias and I? Not at all. Then why is her scent all over you, Kuroka said. Kuroka cat scent smell picked up and she was annoyed. It was a long platonic hud, but if you hate it so much, I'll go shower, Issei said. Wise choice. Care to join me? Issei replied. He asked seductively. Fuck yeah, Kuroka shouted. Her shouting disrupted everyone's focus and chaos ensued. Those practicing magic lost control and their energy erupted in an explosion, leaving them covered in a black soot. 
Those sparring definitely got hit by the attacks. Issei and Kuroka left to avoid getting in trouble and had fun in the tub. As the nighttime approached, everyone went to bed from exhaustion except for Kuroka. She passed out from too much... <clears throat> This knight was so young, so he decided to go for a walk and then get some ramen at nearby stall. It was a favor it was his favorite place, since he was a devil. Issei ordered a bowl of ramen, and a young woman with a bob cut joined her. Hey Issei, fancy seeing you hurt, Sona said. Hey Sona. I used to come here all the time. What brings you here? Issei replied. I love the ramen here. I have been here for a year now, Sona said. After I left, huh? Yes, after your disappearing act from your former team, would come here frequently to see if you would show up here, and even when they thought you were all dead. Sanji missed you the most, you know, being a fellow pawn and all, Sona said. Yeah, I missed you guys too. Sorry for making you guys go through that, Issei replied. Don't be, but if you want to make it up to me, then how about playing chess with me? You're quite the smart fellow, so let's see if you can beat me, Sona said. I would love to play a game of chess. We can catch up while we play, Issei replied. Let's play in the student council office. I can get us in, Sona said. Both finish their ramen and pay to go to the student council. Both sit down and set up the board. What have you been up to the past few months, Sona said. Sona moves her pawn. I got promoted to king, Issei replied. Issei moves his pawn. Yes, I heard from my sister. Congrats on being the first fallen dragon king, Sona said. Sona moves another pawn. Thanks, I already have a queen, moves, Issei moves his knight. It's Kuroka, isn't it, Sona said. She moved another pawn. Yes, who else could it be? Issei replied. Issei moves another pawn as well. I heard Rias was willing to demote herself to be your queen, Sona said. Sona moves her bush up. She was willing to be my pawn or even my mistress, Issei said, and then Issei moved his knight. Oh gee, she clearly wants to be by your side, Sona replied. Sona moves her knight and Issei takes, and takes Issei's pawn. I rejected her advances and she accepted that I don't love her like that, Issei said. Issei moves his bishop and takes out her pawn. What about the others? Sona replied. Sona moves her rook. Shirone aka Konako is more open and Azia is doing better, Issei replied. Issei moves his other knight and takes out a pawn. And Akino? Sona said. Sona takes out a pawn using her bishop. We trained in the Gregor, and she's bonding with her dad again, Issei replied. Issei takes out her push-up using his rook. So she overcame her past, Sona said. Sona moves her other knight and takes out a pawn. Yeah, I've forgiven all of them, but it'll be like before. Issei uses his push-up to take out her knight. You just took out my knight, Sona said. Sona moves another pawn. Speaking of taking out knights, are Kiba and Tsubaki dating yet? Issei replied. Issei takes out her pawn using his own. I've caught them flirting a couple of times ever since you guys forgave him. He's become a better person, Sona said. Sona moves her rook. Did all of the girls fawn over him for the past year, Issei said? Issei takes out her knight using another rook. So about your friends, Sona moves her rook and takes out a pawn. Two of them are basically my sisters, from one from foster homes we used to be in, and the rest are good friends. That's all I can say until the raiding game is over, Issei said. Issei moves his rook and takes out another pawn. Understandable. Can't risk losing, Sona replied. Sona moves her queen. Glad you understand. Also, checkmate, Issei said. What? Sona replied. Sona looks at the board and notices her foolish mistake. She actually moved her queen in the path of Issei's rook. She face palms. I win, Issei said. I'm rarely ever beaten, Sona replied. Almost nothing looks more ordinarily than chess pieces before a match starts. The first move, however, begins in a spiral into chaos. After both players move, 400 possible board setups exist. After the second pair turns, there are 197,000 possible games. And after three moves, 121 million. At every turn, players can chart a progressively more distinctive path. And each game evolves into one that has probably never been played before. With stats like these, one can only win or go for so long no matter how good they are. You amaze me, Issei Hyoto, Sona replied. <laughs> we should get going. Both of our teams are probably waiting for for us, Issei said. It was interesting to play against you. We should do this again sometime, Sona said. I'd be delighted, Issei replied. Both went home. As Issei opened his door, Kuroka was sitting there waiting for him. So where did you guys go all by your lonesome, Kuroka replied. Ramen. I ran into Sona and there we had a game of chess. I won and I filled her in on what's happening. She is a friend after all. Issei said. You had ramen without me and with another woman, no less, Kuroka replied. Once again, she used her kitten face and Issei was guilt-ridden. That is annoying and lovable at the same time. Okay, fine. I'll take you to get ramen sometime. And Kuroka went up in excitement. 
And that is the end of chapter 24, chess. Chapter 25, sparring match. One week till the rating game. So far, Team Riser, Team Sona, and Team Beal, and Team Rius were participating. Team Rius' members. Rius as king, Akino as queen, Byoko and, Shiono, Byoko and Shirone as rooks, Kiba and Arthur as knights, Ozzy and Kuroka as bishops, and Issei as the only pawn. I can't tell you to begin how much this means to you. To me, thank you all, Rhea said. But there are two problems. One, humans can't enter unless they are rare exceptions. And two, if we become devils, then we can't use our swords, Arthur says. Then join my parage. I'm not a devil. Irina and Zenovia went in, Issei said. Irina and Zenova said, yup. Then I'll be a pawn, Arthur replied. Same here, Keokero said. I'm staying as I am, and so is Orphis, Folly said. I'm good as a rook, Bioka replied. Bishop, please, Lefay said. As you all wish, Issei said. Issei took out his pieces and picked them up. A bishop piece merged with Lefay, a rook piece merged with Bioku, and two knight pieces merged with Irina and Zenovia. Four pawn pieces merged with Arthur, and the other four with Keokeo. All of them now had wings like Issei's, but no physical changes, but their abilities boosted in correspondence with their pieces. All of them had three sets of wings. Nice, Orphus said. I don't feel any different, Bioka replied. Threw a punch towards me, Issei said. What? Why? Just do it. If you say so, Bioko throws a punch and Issei catches it before the force released, a shockwave that pushed Lefei to onto the couch while everyone else covered their faces. And that wasn't even your full strength. You held back, Issei said. Damn, Bioko replied. Wow, Irina said. Irina and Zenovia, since you're both knights, your speed has increased ten times their usual limit. So learn to control it and use it. Lefei, since you're a bishop, your magical powers have increased to almost Kuroka's level. Arthur and Keokeo, being pawns makes you both dangerous since you two can promote to any piece except king. I think everyone picked the perfect pieces for themselves, Kroka said. I agree. Arthur and Keokeo can do more than just wield weapons. Both are excellent fighters and can use magic. Their weapons are just their primary choices, Folly said. My team is almost complete. Just one bishop and rook remain. I also found out who will be fighting. Our first matchup is against Riser and it's Sona Citri versus Syra Orbiol. She's screwed, Issei said. Issei said, Issei, that's rude, but true, Croker replied. So about this Riser guy, is he strong, Volley said? Volley asked. Volley, I beat him using my balance breaker without boosting and same with Cocaville. So compared to us, no, he's not, Issei said. You didn't boost your power? Not bad, Volley replied. Although I haven't used my balance breaker since I beat Cocaville, Issei said. Issei, you had no choice back then due to the heart transplant, but now that your heart is stronger than you ever, you can go all out, Drake said. Then let's see if your balance breaker went through any changes, Kuroka said. I think now is a good time to train. Yo, Volley, want to spar? Now you're talking, Volley said. Oh, geez, we better put up a few barriers just in case they... Uh, then we should talk to Rias. Don't want to be around these two fighting, Kuroka said. Everyone agreed. Kuroka and the others leave to visit Rius and plan the match against Riser. Meanwhile, with Issei and Volley, I've been waiting for this, Volley said. Then let's skip the formalities and go all out, Issei replied. Both go at the same time. Balance Breaker! Both enter their balance breakers. Their armors are similar, but different in colors. Volley's being white and blue, and while Issei's armor is red and with a black outline on each of the tip of his trail, releasing a flame as well. Both don't waste time and launch a full assault. They only they only held back just enough to make sure the barriers didn't break. Drake already told Issei about the Divide Dividing Gear's main abilities, such as Divide and Half Dimension. Issei used his Light Spears to avoid contact and to inflict as much damage as he can. He used the spear to block and then launched it like a javelin straight towards Volley's swing and almost hit his head. You nearly killed me. Looks like I'll have to risk breaking the barriers if it means I can win, Volley said. Volley powers up and shows his true skill. He actually made contact with Issei and landed blow after blow breaking his armor. Divide! Times five. Issei's power diminished greatly, but Volley continues to assault him. He shot his demonic aura and buried Issei under rubble. Issei thinks to himself, if only I could use promotion like the old days. I need that power. I need it. Then do it, Issei. Show that white bastard what we can do. Boost! You still got some fighting left, yeah, huh? Boost! Times 30. Promotion, Sonic Welch Knight, Issei said. Issei launched himself from the rubble at the supersonic speeds, his armor thinner and more aerodynamic. Promote to Rook, Issei says. 
Change, solid impact, Drag replies. His armor morphed once again. It became more bulky, and clearly getting hit by that would mean that certain death to anyone who isn't strong enough to defend or dodge. Issei boosted his power and accelerated his fist using his elbow thrusters. Volley couldn't dodge fast enough and use his arms to block it. It was a direct hit, and he was sent flying and half of his armor broken. Promote to push-up, Issei says. Change, Welsh push-up blaster. Twin... Twin cannons appeared on Issei's shoulders while his tail went straight into the ground for support. Boost! Times ten. Drag. Fire. Two beams of pure energy fired and hit Volley directly. All of Volley's armor was all destroyed. Damn. I lost. You're stronger than I thought, Volley said. Issei's army dispersed. Thanks. I'm exhausted, Issei replied. Issei fell on his knees breathing heavily. So how long have you had that ability, Volley said. Since a moment ago, Issei replied. Damn, bro, you're crazy. I like that, Volley said. Issei reaches out for his hand except his help getting up. Never could I ever thought about armor being promoted that extent, Volley said. We're part of the supernatural, bro. Even the most senseless things make sense to us, Issei said. Well, you're not wrong. Volley replied. Our fight was short, Issei said, because we started fighting, no plan, no tricks, just straight up sparring, Volley said. Yeah, I honestly enjoyed it, Issei said. Orphus appeared. That was a good fight, Orphus said. Both Issei and Volley are startled by the little dragon god showing up out of nowhere. You've been here the whole time, Issei said? Yes, Orphus replied. Hey, there's something I need to know. How did you end up in the Chaos Brigade, Issei replied. I used to be their leader, but I grew bored, Orphus said. Issei just sat there in silence. Yeah, you get used to it, Volley said. Issei, chocolate, Orphus said. Sure, Issei just gives her what she wants. And that is the end of Chapter 25, Sparring Match. Chapter 26, Red versus Yellow. The first match between Team Riser and Team Rias was not far off. The team members were on their way on the waiting room. Guys, wait, Rias said. They look and stop at her. I was thinking about our team name. Instead of Team Grimmery, how about Team Red? Rias said. How come? Issei replied. Because the Grimmeries aren't the only ones associated with the color red, since you make your debut as the Red Dragon Emperor. You're also a symbol, so it's only right that this whole team should be able to be part of it, Rias said. Everyone smiles at her modesty. I like that idea, Akino said. If that's what you want to do, then let's do it, Rias, Issei said. Issei knows that what Rias said was only half the reason. He calls, herself, he calls her red in every now and then, but not as frequently as she would like to show this way. So she'd like to be called that again and again. She still wants to be close to him as possible, even if it's indirect. They waited for the announcement that finally came. It was Azazel. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first raiding game since the end of the Great War. So without any further delay, we will begin the first match. It's Team Rias vs. Team Riser. Each team will have 5 minutes to come up with a strategy. Begin. So got any ideas? I want to hear your opinions, Rias said. I'll take on the Bushups, Crook replied. Her queen is mine to fight. This time I'm ready for her, Akino said. So basically it'll be like before, Issei said. Everyone goes, yeah, but this time they won't hold back, Issei replied. But neither will we, Kiba replied. So this time I'll use Sage magic if needed, uh, Konoko said. Save it for the build team. I fear we'll need it there, Kuroko said. Fine, Sharona replied. Leave Riser to me. I know that he has trained since we last fought and he wants a rematch, Issei said. I wouldn't mind having a crack at him, Kuroko replied. You would fuck him up, but I can tell from the look in his eyes that he wants me since I broke his eco, Issei said. That was badass, Rias replied. Time's up, guys, Bioko said. All teams prepare to battle. Three, two, one, fight, Azazel says. Riser made the first move. He came in head first straight towards Issei. I'm glad you're back, Red Dragon Emperor. I wanted a rematch for almost a whole year now, Riser said. I can, you mean business this time. No holding back, huh? Issei said. I'm not making that mistake again, <laughs> Riser replied. You sure have changed, Riser, Issei said. As have you, Issei, in more ways than one. You're hiding your power level, Riser said. When you reach a certain level, it becomes so hard to do so, Issei says. Guys, the match has started, Rias said. Sorry, Rias, my bad. Now then, shall we? Guys, you know the plan. Don't hold back, Issei said. Everyone, right! Arthur and Kiba go full speed towards Riser's knights and the sound of clashing steel can be heard. Sharona and Bioko test their strengths against the rooks in Mortal Kombat. 
Shockwaves could be seen in the distance. Akano took this to the sky against the Bomb Queen, and the sound of bombs and thunder could be heard loudly as they took it higher and higher. Akano even began to use light spears. Azia stayed with Rhea since she wasn't a fighter, but Kuroka clearly was. She used her sage powers, which were boosted by the Queen piece, to deal some real damage. The crowd was cheering at how strong both teams and how they are holding their own against Riser and his team. How about we make a deal to make things more interesting, Riser said. Like what? Issei replied. If I lose, then my little sister Ravel, who will soon be a free bishop, will join you. She has taken an interest in joining your team, Issei. We both know that Lady Kuroka is clearly not your bishop, in reality, Rias. You knew, Rias said. Her powers are similar to Issei's. She's his queen, isn't she, Riser said. Just keep quiet for now, Issei said. Only Ravel and I figured it out and agreed to keep quiet until we knew the whole story, Rias, Riser said. You really have changed, Rias replied. After my pride, or should I say my ego, was shattered, I was finally able to see clearly. And thus, I'm sorry, Rias, for everything. I apologize to you as well as the Red Dragon, Riser said. And if you win, Issei replied, then we get to have a sparring match every now and then. Deal, Riser said. Oh, my friend would be joining us as well, Issei replied. Perfect, Riser said. Guys, the crowd is staring at us, Azia said. Then let's go, Riser, Issei replied. Both fly off into the distance. Balance break, Issei says. Issei now enters Balance Breaker and launched his fist towards Riser, who caught it. Please stop holding back. You have the boosted gear, so use it, Riser said. So be it, Issei replied. Boost! Times 18. Issei launched a fall on assault, and once again, any damage Riser had was healed instantly. Riser's released his flame wings. His aura was incredible, so much heat that even Issei could feel it through his tough armor. Riser only continues to power up and transform into a bird of fire, a literal phoenix. So you've trained the whole time since we last fought. I'll show you the new powers as well then, Issei said. Issei unleashed his 12 fallen angle wings and created his signature light spear. What the? Riser said. Didn't see that coming, did you? Issei said. But you're a devil. How can you create a light spear? Riser said. I haven't been a demo f devil for almost a year now, Issei said. The crowd went wild after seeing Issei's and Riser's powers. This was going to be a good match. You're really a unique existence, Riser said. I am the first fallen dragon king, Issei said. Then let's fight like kings, Riser said. Both charged once again. Issei used his light spear to block Riser's talons that were hot enough to cut through steel. Riser sent gale force wings from his wings mixed with flames that created a fire tornado. It sucked Issei in who boosted his defense but was sucked in. The flames were consuming the oxygen so that Issei to think quick. He used his strong fallen wings to create a counter tornado which spun in the opposite direction, this canceling both of them. Riser launched his flaming feathers like bullets, and they were too many for Issei to dodge. He immediately hardened his fallen wings, but they could defend they could only defend for so long. The relentless barrage of fire feathers went through his wings and armor wounding Issei. Rias ran over to help. No, this is my fight, Issei said. Issei, Rias replied. Issei gets back up and boosts his power again. Promote tonight, Issei says. What? Rias replied. Welt Sonic Boost Knight, Drake says. Issei, once again now in his anu uh, aerodynamic thin armor, flew at supersonic speeds. The sonic boom got everyone's attention on the field, and in the crowd, everyone else stopped fighting and just watched in awe. Issei boosted his speeds even more and impaled Riser via light spear. He promoted to Rook and punched Riser back into the air. Again, Issei promoted to Bishop and fired two energy beams at Riser, who was already roasted. He fell into the ground reverted to his original form. Issei was now on top of him and holding a light spear over his head. Give up, Issei said. Looks like you've beaten me once again. Yes, I surrender, Riser says. Riser Phoenix has surrendered. Team Red wins. This was truly a spectacular match. No holding back. Give it up for Team Red and our legend, the Red Dragon Emperor, aka the Fallen Dragon King, Azazel said. The crowd cheers. Irina, Zenobia, KOK, Ovali, and even Orphis were sitting there. They all cheered while Orphis just sat there waving a small red flag. Tomorrow's match is Team C3 vs Team Biol. Team C3 is known for their tactics and planning while Team Biol are walking powerhouse. Who will win? Find out tomorrow, as Hazel says. And that's the end of chapter 26, Red vs Yellow. Chapter 27, Seatree Gets Owned. The next day, Team Red, along with Irina, Zenobia, Keokeo, Vali, and Orphis, were invited to sit with the Devil Kings to watch a match between Seatree and Biol. I wonder how Saji will do against them, Issei wondered. 
Who? Kuroko said. He's a sacred gear user on Sona's team. He's the pawn and so far the only guy on her team, Issei said. So the blonde guy must be him. I can sense a dragon in him as well, Kuroko said. His sacred gear holds Vitra, the poison dragon, Seraphal said. I knew it, Orphis replied. Orphis said while sitting on Issei's lap eating chocolate. The dragon of infinity in form or little girl sitting on his lap eating chocolate. Everyone at the same time just had a surprised face. The atmosphere was getting awkward, but everyone thanked their lucky stars as the match had started. Welcome to the second match. Today is Team Buell vs. Tree. Each team has five minutes to plan. Your time starts now. Both teams have started planning. Team Buell members. Syra Org as king. Kesha Abaran as queen. Karena and Mesite as bishops. Liban and Barika as knights. Gandamana and Ladora as rooks, and the mysterious pawn wearing a hood and mask. That pawn is new and dangerous, Issei said. A sacred gear user, Volley replied. Maybe, Kuroko said. Team Citri members. Sona Citri as king, Subaki as queen, Momo and Rea as bishops, Tomo as her only knight, Subasa as their only rook, and Saji as her only pawn. I really wish she had a full parade, Seraphal said. Sona will be alright. Have faith, Serzek said. We both know the power difference is too much between them. As a devil king, I have to face facts, Seraphal said. I played chess with her a while back. She's cunning, so she'll put up a good fight, Issei replied. When did you two hang out, Rhea said. After she and I had met at ramen at our favorite spot, oh, how I missed the taste, Issei said. Now I want ramen, Kroka said. How about we all go after the place that you're talking about after the match, Sersek said. Everyone nods. Begin the match, Azazel said. Sona created several magical-based traps. Saji promoted to queen and summoned his sacred gear a black gauntlet on both arms and his eyes turned purple that's new Issei said father mentioned that one of Sona's team members was the Grigor but he didn't tell me why now we know because clearly Saji had an upgrade Akano said team Sona began to fight team Biel but Sour Org didn't neither did his pawn why aren't you in your pawn fighting Sona said I'm sorry Sona but I can't tell you that why not Sona replied would you share your secrets with your opponent Sarah said, fair enough, Sona replied. Sona's only rook couldn't fight both of Sarah Org's rooks at the same time, and one was giving them Gollum. Eventually, her pawn retired. Her only knight had the same fight and retired. Saja was about to fight Corinna until she started stripping. Everyone was just, oh boy. Corona strips to her underwear. I don't know what's going on here, but I'm not complaining, as Azel said. Issei and Serzex, oh boy, oh boy. Both Kuroka and Grafia covered their lover's eyes. Oh no you don't. Bro, let's not risk it, Issei said. Yeah, I want to live, Sir Zex replied. Back to the match. Um, what are you doing, Saji said. I'm seducing you, obviously, Corona said. Saji tries to cover his eyes but can't help but peek. Saji, just take her out, Sona said. Like on a date? That's not a bad idea, Saji replied. No, I mean eliminate her. Sir or did you know you? Come on, dude. Honestly, no. She said that she'll handle Saji, but didn't tell me how. Sorry, Sarorg said. Sona was red from embarrassment, and Sarorg just looked away. So what do you say? Want to go out? Corona replied. Only after you put your clothes back on first, Saji said. Done. You can take them off later, Corona said. Damn, Saji replied. Vitra in his head. Oh, she's good. Saji, if you don't ask her out, then I'll take your body and do it myself, Vitra replied. Every guy in the arena was whistling. Saji turned bright red. Now he definitely has a crush on her. Corona just retired. Please, this is too much, Sarag replied. Sarag was just as embarrassed because this was his first raiding game and this is what his push-up did. Sona had enough and smacked Saji to bring him back to reality. They continued to fight till only Sona and Saji were left. Saji tried to fight Sarag but to no avail. No cat could even damage him but one punch from him sent Saji flying into the wall. His broken bones proved that Sarag was too strong for Sona to fight. She was alone against him now and... Her, she knew her chances were zero. She surrendered. Sona Citri has surrendered. Team Beale wins. Now it's time for Grammy vs. Team Beale in tomorrow's match. See if you all at the finals, folks. Just one punch, Isair said. Scary, Azia said. I'm going to check on Tsubaki, Keeper replied. I'll come with you. I'll check on Sanji. Hey, Rias, Sona could use a friend right now. You coming? Isair replied. Uh, sure, Rias said. The three leave to visit their friends. They are in the infirmary. The rooks, bishop, and knights are passed out. Saji is currently getting his bones reconstructed as Issei found out through a nurse. Subaki only had minor injuries. Rias goes straight into the infirmary just as Kiba was about to follow. Hold up, 
Issei said, What's up? Kiba replied. Issei summoned his boosted gear and boosted a few times and transferred it to Kibo. Whoa, what a boost, but why? Kiba said. You'll need it for what's about to happen, if you know what I mean. That, the, what? Kiba said. You may be fast, but take your time when it comes to do the deed. Ah, uh, thanks, man, Kiba said. Follow her lead. You'll be grateful. See ya, Issei said. Kiba went to Subaki and both started talking. One thing led to another and both ended up in the janitor's closet for the saint for the some alone time. Issei was waiting in the room, then a nurse came and told him that he could visit Saji. Hey, Saji, Issei said. Hey, buddy, Saji replied. You're really in a good mood for a guy who got his bones broken from one punch, Issei said. Well, nothing can hurt a guy in love, man, Saji said. Pretty sure that's a large dose of morphine talking, so Corinna, huh? One hell of a way to confess. She's bold one and gorgeous. Saji said, I'll say, she's quite the bold. I thought you liked Sona. It's more of a platonic love, and she's my master after all. Man, there are some nice walls, Saji said. Both enjoyed their chat afterwards, and everyone went for ramen afterwards. And that's the end of chapter 27. Sea Tree gets owned. Chapter 28. A Real Match. Everyone is at Issei's house and discussing the plan. He punched Saji and Sona and saw just how strong Saira Org, but we all know that he's stronger than that, Issei said. He's my cousin after all. His abilities are not normal. He didn't inherit any abilities from his bloodline, so he trained to become a man he is today and the head of his family, Rhea said. What about his pawn? His aura was powerful and it felt like it could be become more so, Kuroka said. Let's check the news on the rating game. The media has ways to bring forth information on almost anyone, Akano said. They bring out their phones and made especially for this reason. Bill wins. Rhea's Grimmery's pawns beat High Devil King Riser. The Red Dragon Emperor is a powerful fallen with 12 wings. Has Rhea been hiding this all along? Issei's armor promotions at first in Red Dragon Emperor history. He may be the strongest Red Dragon Emperor yet. Corona stripped in front of everyone to get a date? Sire Org's response, no comment. Who is his new pawn and why doesn't he fight? That was all the headlines. So many headlines and yet no answers. That was a bust, Sharona said. Yeah, it was a waste, but Corona definitely took some of the attention off of us, Azia said. I'm thankful for that because I wanted to keep this ability as a trump card against him, but he knows and he'll be ready, Issei says. About that, how were you able to use Promote when you're a king and you were planning on using it against us if we ever fought in a match, Rhea said? First answer, I've had this ability. Since I sparred with Volley in second, the answer that there's a 50-50 chance whether I use it, meaning... Rias replied, you're not as strong enough for me to waste my energy by using that ability. Two, if you were, and I hated you like I used to, I would have gone all out, not letting you catch your breath for a second, Issei said. Issei created a small spear. He closed his eyes and had a smile that radiated pure fear while he spun the light spear between his fingers. Clearly, he was not kidding. Yeah, that's fair, Akino said. That stung a bit. Damn, Rhea said. But I still want to know who that pawn is, Issei replied. His spear disappeared. Same here, as Azel said. Where did you come from, old man? Folly replied. Show him some respect to your damn show some respect to your elders, you damn runt. Also, the door was open. Lock it sometimes, as Azel said. Like that will stop you, Kuroka replied. True, I'd barge in anyway. So back on topic. I sense a power that is almost equal to the heavenly dragons in that pond, as Azel said. His power is familiar, but I can't remember from where, Drake said. Keep thinking, Drake, Issei said. Even I can't remember. It's been a few hundred years, Albion replied. If Volley and I could participate in the battle, then we would stand a better chance, should he be so strong, Keokeo said. If we knew about this, then we would probably could have joined you, Volley replied. I appreciate the help, but it won't be necessary, because this is just a game. It's not really a life or death type of match. Yes, injuries are a part of it, but not death. Saror definitely control his pawn. That's an excellent point. Worst case scenario, we lose the match, and it's not like that it'll be the only time we'll fight. We don't really have much to lose, Kiba said. Except for our reputation, Kiba replied, uh, Rhea said. Yeah, except that, Kiba said. So Kiba, did it, how it go earlier, you know, Kiba turns bright red. It was bliss, Kiba said. Issei, what's he talking about? Oh, I just gave him a bit of a boost for, well, you know. You didn't, Kuroka said. He did, and now she's limping, yet happy. Too much information, Rias replied. Not you too, Volley said. Ah, I knew you could do it, Romeo. High five. 
Issei said. Ah, fuck it. High five, Kiva replied. Looks like Sabaki is getting some action too, Kuroka said. Yeah, sure. Rub it in my face, because why not, Ria said. You're still not over him? You had your chance to rub it, but you blew it in the wrong way, Red, Kuroka said. Azizel was trying really hard to control his laughter. Enough already, please. Look at poor Azia. She fainted. You can still see the mark on her head as she ran into the wall after catching you two breaking the bed during, you know, K.O.K.O. -K -O said. Poor Azia was passed out and almost everyone was beat red. Yeah, and now she wants more as soon as she can walk properly again. So, Issei, I got you covered. Let me know when you need a boost. Just use protection. Oh, come on, Drake said in his head. Hey, Drake, rename your boost to Thrust. <laughs> Albion replied. We don't use protection. It feels better. Speaking of which, Issei, I know we're doing it later, okay? Issei said. Till I can't walk, babe, Kuroka winked. Damn it. Enough with the sex talk, everyone said. We can't take much more of it, Irina replied. You're making us feel like we are missing out on so much, Anovia said. Then why not join, Issei? <laughs> Akino said. Sorry, but Issei isn't into playing with you, Kuroka replied. She's right. I'm perfectly happy with her and no one can come close. Sorry, Issei said. Do you really have to remind me, Ria said. I'm not sorry, Issei said. Azazel finally lost it. He laughed like a hyena and continued to his ribs still hurt. Okay, moving on, Arthur said. So what's the plan, Volley replied. I'll handle Sara Org since I'm the one who can match him in brute strength, but that pawn. Just who is he, Issei said. There's no point in dwelling on it if there's nothing we can do other than improvise, Shinorane said. I suppose that's true, Kuroka said. Then we just hope for the best, Zenobia said. The next day, just before the match, Team Grimmery now called Team Red, standing in front of Team Buell. All eyes on Sara Org and his pawn. Welcome to the third and final match, ladies and gentlemen. I know you're anxious to see the two strong teams fight. We can just feel the tension in the air, so let's get to it. Today's game will be different. However, each team can send one or two members of each team. The members have been selected by the people. Both teams enter the field. They enter the field to op op oppose each other. Yo, Issei, you ready? Saurorg said. Hell yeah, I am, Issei replied. After I saw your promotion ability, I have a trump card of my own, Saurorg said. You mean your pawn? Yeah, I figured you'd use something like that, Issei said. So let's hope you fight only one of us, otherwise you're a dead man, Saurorg said. Everyone goes, oh, snap. Someone's getting cocky, Issei said. All right, folks, enough trash talk. Let's start. The first way will be between all the night fight as per request of our viewers. Begin. All four knights immediately clashed their blades, each showing their skill and grace. Sparks fly with every clash. Kiba was battling Libyan when he saw a smirk. He felt gravity increase tenfold and was on his knees. What the hell? Kiba said. That's my sacred gear. I can amplify the gravity on my target as long as I can see them, Libyan said. Arthur sees Kiba in trouble and quickly uses his sword, Kalbron. He increased its energy till it scared Sarah Org's other knight and used it to take him out just before he could take out Kiba. Thanks, Arthur, Kiba said. Happy to help, Arthur replied. All right, the Knights of Team Red win. The crowd shears. Up next is Queen versus Queen. Both queens come forth. Begin, Azazel said. I won't hold back, Kushina. Neither will I, Kushina replied. Akuno spreads her fallen devil wings and takes to the sky. Wasting no time, she gathers her holy lightning and fires a massive lightning bolt. Kushina smiles and opens a hole, sucking it in. What? Akino says. It's my signature ability. Hole, Kushina said. So all you can do is suck it all in. <laughs> Akino said. Akino then fires more lightning and even a light spear only for them to get sucked into holes too. I can send them right back, Kushina says. Kushina opens a hole behind Akino and unleashed the lightning. It hit Akino, which burned her severely, yet she still remained airborne. As they say, spit don't swallow. I think you should have swallowed it. But is that all you got? Akino said. Looks like you forgot about the spear. Oh shit, Akino said. Akino was hit by the spear and it left a large gash on her abdomen. Being part devil made her weak to the own spear and thus she fell onto the ground only to retire. The winner, the winner is Kushina Adadon, Zazel says. No, not you, Akino, Rhea said. What the hell's up with the sexual innuendo and why so cocky, Issei said. Maybe after the training, you made her overconfident, Shironi said. Even if she wasn't cocky, I doubt she could have won. She's a magic user along with one range at that. It would have ended as it did. Sorry, Rias, but this one was not a winning situation. She and her team were upset at the loss. Up next is full-on rook battle. All four rooks enter the field. Are you ready? Azazel said. 
Shirna used the time to power up. Her cat tail became two and her cat ears appeared. Her training with Kuroka was showing excellent results. Byoko radiated himself. Sour Orc's Golem prepared and the other Rook followed Shirona's lead. He began to transform into a dragon. Oh, what a surprise. It seems that Sour Orc's Rook is one of the ex extinct 72 pillars who were famous for taming dragon and very few were able to become dragons themselves, Azazel said. Sharona and Bioko were now on alert. These two will be tough to beat. Sharona attacked first and punched the golem repeatedly, yet he didn't move. He didn't even flinch, Bioko said. The golem stands there gloating. I'll take the, it'll take effect soon, Sharona said. You, you sent Jutsu and chakra points, didn't you? Bioko said. For a monkey, you're smart. Zip it, pussycat, Bioko said. The dragon rook attacked with fire breath, which easily dodged. He flew towards Byoko and punched him. Byoko held his own, but barely. Shironi, once again having to fight the golem, continued to lay a beat down. Eventually, the golem wasn't as strong or as fast. Its movements were sluggish and weak. Shironi just came up to him and knocked him out with the powerful punch. Byoko used his staff to launch himself over the dragon that landed behind him, knocked him over on his back after taking out his legs. Before he could attack, the dragon Rook sent a fire breath and forced him back. Byoko had no choice but to stay behind and cover. He isn't immune to flames. Shirona snuck up behind the dragon and Rook punched him in the spine. The dragon Rook hit her with his tail and sent her crashing into the ground. The dragon Rook began to stomp on her. Her cries of pain nearly made Kuroka jump in. Byoko showed up, showed up and just before he could hurt Shirona anymore, tackled the Rook into the trees. He runs up to Shirona. Are you okay? Byoko said. Shirona gets up. In pain, but I still got a little fight left in me, Shirona replies. The dragon Rook appears, clearly battered and bruised, just barely hanging in there. I have an idea. Grab onto my staff and I'll give you a boost. Right, Sharona says. She grabbed Yoko's staff and he began swinging it in 360 degrees. He then extended his staff and then used a surgical force to send Sharona flying into the dragon rook. With her nice speed and strength, was she basically unstoppable? He kicked the dragon in the chest, broke his ribs, and damaged his organs, leaving him unable to battle. And the winners are the rooks from Team Red, as Azazel announced. Sharona falls to her knees after giving it all she had. Yoko picks up and gives her lift in his back. Thanks. It was a good move, Sharona said. The final attack, we're carrying you, Bioka replied. Figure it out, monkey, Sharona said. Pussycat, Bioka replied. I can't tell if they are flirting or insulting each other, Kuroka said. It's a bit of both, Issei said. Alright, so next up we have, oh shit. This is clearly the popular demand of the audience, and we'll receive one Phoenix tier for this. From Team Red, the pawn Issei in Bishop Kuroka. Was Cyroorg in his pawn? What? Team Red said. Looks like it's the worst case scenario for you, Cyrorg said. It's the other way around, bud, Issei replied. Begin. Cyrorg's pawn stepped forth and took off his hood. Shall I, master, the pawn said. Yes. The pawn smiles, then his body begins to change shape. His limbs and body were now more like animal. Claws all fingers and toes. His hair grew longer and his beard was now like a big cat. He continued to grow until he was over three meters tall. His entire body was now a massive golden lion. Meet my pawn, the Namian Lion, Cyrorg said. The crowd lost its shit. The Lion of Nenma is here? Isazel said. Oh shit, he doesn't wield a sacred gear. He is one, Issei said. What? Kuroka replied. For those who don't know, the Nenman Lion was the last of the 13 labors of Hercules. The Nenman Lion is now a sacred gear that can transform from lion into an axe whose swing is powerful enough to split the planet in half, but it's been missing for over 500 years. It's also one of the 13 Long Giants' sacred gears. I was fortunate enough to find him and tame him with my own will and power, Cyrog said. Damn, begin, Azazel said. You handle Cyrog, I'll handle the lion. Uh, I love a good cat fight, Issei said. Babe, I know, I know. Balance break. Issei entered his balance breaker and promoted to Rook. His now thick bulky armor was meant to for full-on physical attacks. Kuroka unleashed her eight wings and made her magic to keep the lion on its toes. Issei and Cyroorg were in a full-on fist fight, both dealing damage but none backing down. Bits of Issei's armor were flying off everywhere. Issei boosted his power and it did the trick. Cyroorg was having trouble keeping up and getting his ass handed to him. Cyroorg hit the wall after receiving one of Issei's boosted fists. Just before Issei could finish him off, it was tackled by the lion and his armor was changed. Master, please use me, the lion said. I told you no. I'll only use that if there's a threat to the underworld, Cyroorg said. Do it, Issei replied. Everyone looks at Issei. Are you nuts, Kuroka said? A little bit, Issei said. 
You can't be serious, Arag replied. I very much am. I want you to be at your best, so do it, Issei said. You really are an idiot, Kuroka replied. And yet you love me because I'm an idiot, Issei said. So you want me to beat my best, huh? I'll make you regret saying that. Balance break, Cyrorg says. The lion merged with Cyrorg and became an armor. Cyrorg was now wearing golden armor with the mark of the Namian lion on its chest and had large golden mane. His power was almost too much. Issei sensed it and didn't risk letting Cyrorg getting them the first punch. Issei boosted his power and sent a boost fist right at Cyrorg's face, but it did nothing. Oh shit, Issei said. Issei crossed his arms after he knew a powerful punch coming his way. Cyrorg did just that. He sent Issei flying through a border on the trees. Issei's armor was completely broken. Cyrorg came up to him and was ready to end Issei until he was hit by a barrage of magical elemental attacks. None of them had any effect. Kuroka stood between Cyrorg and Issei. He's too strong. Move, Issei said. We're both fighting him. You're not alone anymore, Kuroka replied. Admiral Bulb, you should listen to him. You can't beat me, Cyrog said. Kuroka refused to move. Cyrog appeared behind her, and before she could react, he knocked her out. Issei only saw Kuroka fall on the ground behind him. His mind imagined the worst case scenario. Did he kill her? Issei's rage was immense. He got up and Cyrog backed away. Kuroka lay there, motionless. How dare you? That's my Kuroka, Issei said. Issei's power boosted over and over again. There seemed to be no limit. The entire arena was shaking from his energy flaring. I'll beat you till there's nothing left. Promotion, queen, Issei said. Issei's armor changed once again. His armor had all of the attributes from the other three promotions, and this new power made the air sting. There was so much anger. Issei blasted off into the air and fired several energy bombs from two wings mounted cannons. They hit their target def definitely cracked the golden armor. Issei came down fast and just barely missing landing on his target. The fight continued on and Kuroka woke up. She was disoriented and at first Issei's energy snapped her out of it. She looked at him and saw his current state. Issei could be consumed by the anger and power if she didn't do something quick. Issei had beaten Sour Orc to the point where his armor was nothing but shards. Issei's new queen promotion was strong but unstable. Just as Issei continues to punch Sour Orc, he fills eight wings, cover him, and radiate warmth. Issei, sweetie, you won. I'm here, so please calm down. For me, Kuroka said. Her voice stopped and his armor dispelled. Kuroka? You're okay, Issei said. He was happy that she's alright. Yeah, I'm here, love. This is not a game, not life or death, Kuroka said. She kissed him and he kissed back. Issei then looked and saw Sarorg and said, Hey, you doing okay, Issei said. No, I'm not. I'm doing great. That was one hell of a fight, Issei. Ha! You really lived up to the hype. I can't... Fight anymore, Red Dragon Emperor. You win, Sarorg says. I can't believe it. The winner is Team Red, as Azel announces. The crowd goes wild. Issei helps Sarorg on his feet and takes his team. Thanks, Sarorg said. No problem. Just don't ever make me go through that again, Issei said. You thought I killed her, Sarorg? Yeah, Issei replied. I would never. Sorry to scare you, Sarorg said. It's okay. I'm just happy she's all right. So what's the story about you being fallen in her, Sarorg said. That's a story for another time. Perhaps over a drink, Issei said. Deal, Sarorg replied. Issei drops him off and goes back to his team. They all come up to him and congratulate him. Rhea straight up hugs him, thanking him repeatedly. Team Red win their first rating game. So Issei, now that you guys won, what now? Sir Zex said. Actually, there's something I want to talk about, but just the two of us, Issei replied. You guys aren't going to a strip club, are you, Kroka said. Kroka and Grafia admitted a killing aura. No! We choose life, both said at the same time, both hugged for their dear lives. Ladies and gents, you're Devil King and Red Dragon Emperor, everyone said. Everyone goes home and celebrate as soon as Akino recovers. And that is the end of chapter 28, A Real Match. And that is where we're going to stop for now. We are now on, or just finished chapter 28, The Real Match. So hopefully you guys did enjoy this little episode Please look forward to that stream, okay, that I said at the beginning where I'm going to be streaming with one of a fellow person or a fellow girl to be exact on the next stream where I also reveal my face at the same time. I bought a camera and everything for it. I'm going to make sure this is professional as possible, but it's going to be quite weird as well. So just be prepared for that and please try not to make fun of me because man, I'm a bitch. So, <laughs> so without further ado. Thank you guys so much for the support. If you guys want to know exactly when I upload, hit the little blue button right next to the subscribe button and that'll lead you to it. Remember to subscribe to my second channel or my main channel technically and Palpalski. I will be doing what ifs on Goku on there specifically. Thank you all for the support. Without further ado, let's try to hit a thousand likes. Spartanic out. 
What's up guys, it's your host Spartanic Arts DxD back with another high school DxD related video. And today we have What If Issei Went Solo, Part 7, The Finale. Let's try to hit a thousand likes, and if you guys want to know exactly when I upload slash my upload schedule, please click the little blue button right next to the subscribe button. And I miss said something about the stream last time, a lot of people are misinterpreting this. So basically what's happening is that yes, she is going to be sitting right next to me. So this is like an in-person stream, me doing the face reveal at the same time along with her next to me as well. And this stream will happen on Spartanic Arts DxD. I'm not sure about the exact date yet, but hopefully it's soon because unfortunately I had to go in quarantine due to some unfortunate events but don't worry I am fine what if Goku was the god of destruction part 2 is out on my second channel and Palpowski by the way and as I'm gonna say again Spartanic Arts DxD on YouTube will have the stream the YouTube channel I'm streaming on my YouTube channel just to make this really clear because I think a lot of people were confused and I will be doing a facial vote at the same time so yes thank you guys so much for the support once again, seriously, it's been absolutely amazing. Let's try to hit a thousand likes for the final part. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. Chapter 29, Internal Bond. Scene break, we're with Ajuka now. As Ajuka already unlocked the secrets that Shaoba left, he can't help but feel something is missing. You okay there, Ajuka? Seraphal said. Huh? Oh yeah, I'm fine, Ajuka replied. You sure don't look like it, Grafia said. <sighs> i just been feeling like we missed something. Shaba was indeed working on enhancements, but why? Most have an aptitude for certain abilities, then training is the best way, so why enhance them by force? Just what was his goal? What I've been thinking, if he wasn't dead, then we would ask him, Azazel said. Let's just hope it's nothing serious, Ajika replied. Well, you guys have fun. I'm meeting Issei at the Gregor. I want to study his new ability, Azazel said. Azazel leaves. Meanwhile, with Issei and the others... Alright, I'm meeting with the old crow at the Gagar. He wants to study my promotion ability, Issei said. Alright, everyone said. Issei teleports. Okay, now that he's gone, there's something I need to know, Kuroka said. She was dead serious and it worried the others. Which is, LeVay said? Issei's birthday. I know almost everything about him. From his taste in music, food, movies, etc. But not his birthday. And yes, I've asked him, but he just goes silent, Kuroka said. That's not a good sign, Arthur replied. Irina and Zenobia, you two are practically his sisters. When you were in the foster home, did he ever tell you? Kroka said. Now that you mention it, he didn't, Zenobia said. He never said anything about it, Irina added on. Damn it, Kroka said. Maybe his old team can tell us. Five years is a lot of time to get to know someone, Folly said. I'll go ask him, Irina said. Thanks, Irina. I'll try to do some digging, Kroka added on. Irina goes to visit Rias at the RC and knocks on the door. Come in. Hey, Rias, Irina said. Hey, Irina, what brings you here, Rias said. I want to know about Issei's birthday, specifically the date, Irina replied. Rias's eyes went wide. Again, she was reminded that in five years, she truly knew nothing about Issei. The other members weren't so different, for they didn't know as well. His school admission papers has a false date. Only the year was accurate. I'm sorry, Irina. I don't know. We only know the year, Rias replied. Then how do we find out, Irina said. Rias was now determined to put an effort to find out the date. I'll start looking into it and I'll call you, Rias replied. Okay, thanks, Rias, Irina said. Irina goes back to her team and Rias immediately goes online to search all of the hospitals in Co-Town, the whole list of every child born from the start of the year 2000 to 2002. You're really hell-bent on finding out, Akuna said. Of course I am. He was there to celebrate ours, but never once did we even think about him. It's time we fix that, Rias said. Better late than never. I'll help, Kiba said. Same here, Ozzy replied. I'll help my bro, Sharona said. I'll make some coffee. All of us will be there here for a while, Akuna said. As the team Rias signed researching on their phones and laptop, Issei reaches the Gagar and is welcomed by Barkul and Azazel. Hey guys, Issei said. Congratulations on being Sauriorg, Issei, my boy, Barkdale replied. Thanks, man, Issei said. All right, Issei, I want you to show me that one evil pieces that you have left, Azazel said. Only Rook and Bishop remain, Issei replied. Either is fine, Azazel said. Interesting. My theory was correct. You absorb the properties of the eight pawn pieces after rejecting them, and those properties were later transferred to the king piece since the evil pieces are the original containers. 
But why did they mutate? Issei said. It's because they took to your fallen and dragon powers, and after transferring to the king piece, the other pieces also did the same after its attributes were amplified to the point where even your balance breaker would have those attributes. It's beautiful. Such a unique occurrence, Azazel said. Beautiful, huh? Issei replied. Issei looked at the rook piece and looked at it the colors. They reminded him of his true love. I know that look on your face, Azazel says. Huh? You really do love her, don't you? You want to marry her, Azazel replied. No point in lying. Yeah, I would love nothing more. I need a favor, Issei said. You want me to go to ring shopping with you? Better ask Grafia, Azazel said. Not shopping for a ring. I need you to make a necklace, Issei said. I went from being a scientist and a fallen governor general to a jeweler just like that. Wow, Azazel said. It's one time thing, Issei replied. Come on now, we can do this young lad one small favor. We both know how he feels, Barkle replied. Okay, fine, you win. So what do you have in mind? Well, back with Team Rius, back with Team Issei and Team Rius, they met up and cross-referenced their findings. Find out anything useful, Keokeo said? Yeah, humans breed like rabbits, Kiva said. Well, you're not wrong, Volley said. No, there are too many children even searching using his name filters, Kiva said. Issei teleports home. Hey guys, what's up? Um, nothing. Everyone goes at the same time. Issei raised his eyebrows. I know you're lying, but I'm a bit busy. Any one of you still carry my old pawn pieces? I have two, Akino said. I need one. It's for a test, Issei replied. Akino tosses him a pawn piece. Issei catches it and smiles. Now you're up to something. Care to share, lover? Kuroka said. Issei looks at Kuroka, walks up to her, and kisses her. You'll find out soon, hon. I'll be back as soon as I can. Issei creates a portal and dives in. He's really ever that excited, maybe on the other hand in bed. For the love of mother nature, enough sex jokes, everyone said at the same time. Ha! <laughs> Kuroka replied. Issei teleports back to the Gregar and gives Azazel the piece. There's one more thing I need. Some of your scales, Azazel said. Why? Issei replied. Dragon skills are the most absolute, almost indestructible, so I'll make a chain out of it, Azazel said. All right, Issei replied. Issei pulls off some of his scales, which will take time to grow back. He gives Azazel the scales who began to melt them down, but I'll take, it'll take a while since Issei is a fire dragon and the scales are resistant. Azazel begins to use the rook piece and manages to copy some of the attributes into the pawn piece. Issei used his magic to change its shape into thin, long diamond. It came out just as Issei hoped. After a while, the scales scummed to the melting process and turned to a molten liquid. Azazel immediately poured it into the, a mold and let it cool. It took over an hour to cool down and then Issei and Azazel worked together to create the most beautiful necklace ever. A reddish black chain with a golden gem with red and black smoke like a pattern in it. As it was created by using Issei's powers and scales, only whom he loves and see its magnificent magnificence, glow, and beauty. Damn, that was hard work, Azazel said. Yeah, but it was worth it, Issei replied. Yeah, I'll admit. Well, you've been here for a few hours. Your friends are waiting for you, Azazel said. Thanks for everything, old man. Happy to help, kiddo. Issei goes home feeling all giddy. He hides the necklace in his jacket pocket and then enters through the door. Whoa, what happened to you guys with all the phones and laptops, Issei replied. Everyone was going through the list and still found nothing. Truth be told, we were looking up your birth certificate, Volley said. Why? Issei replied. Because we want to know your birthday, Rhea said. Again, why? Issei said. What do you mean, why? Because no one knows and it's important to you and us, Irina said. Issei was no longer feeling giddy. He looked through their research and noticed the dates. So you guys went through all the hospital lists in Co. from almost 20 years ago? You guys sure are dedicated, I'll give you that. But you won't find in any of the list at Co. hospitals, Issei said. What do you mean, Buko replied. I wasn't born here. I was born in a village where my mother's late parents lived. My birth records were misplaced soon after I was put in foster for obvious reasons. Sorry you guys wasted your time, Issei said. Then only know when your birthday is then, Zenobia says. Yep, but that's not important now. Come on, man. We spent hours looking for one bit of info. Please tell us, Keeper replied. Okay, but promise that you won't do anything about it, Issei said. Nope, no promises. Now spill it, Rhea said. Okay, it's today. Everyone goes at the same time. What? Yep, it's today. And not for long since it's only a few hours till the day ends, Issei said. Oh, like that will stop us. Sharona, you know what to do, Kroka said. On it, Sharona said. Don't you dare do what I think you're about to do, he said. Sorry, bro. Too many of you against us. Just give in. Ugh, 
Fuck it, let's just get wasted, Issei said. Everyone starts to party. Rias tells Cerzex, Grafia, Sona, Ajuka, Seraphal, Barkil, and Azazel to come right over. They all rush over in minutes with cakes in hand, along with beer. Lots of beer. All get wasted to the point where their blood ought to be replaced by alcohol. Issei controls his drinking to actually remember the night and eat some cake. So enjoying the cake, Sharona picked it. Kuroka said, She's the lover of all sweets, thus making her the expert. You got a little bit of cake on your face. <sighs> Kuroka licks the cape off Issei's face like a little kitten. Issei looked at his girlfriend looking and the last bit of her fingers and Issei was definitely aroused. Looks like the dragon is ready once again, Kuroka said. Let's go to her room. I need to show you something and it's not what you think, Issei said. Both go to their room and Issei pulls out a small box from his jacket. What the, Kuroka said. It's for you. Azazel and I worked on it, Issei said. She opened the box and fell to her knees. The necklace was the most beautiful piece of jewelry she had ever seen. This? For me? Kuroka said. Yes, the gem is made from an old pawn piece I took from Akino, and the chain is made from your in my, some of my scales. That's why you were gone for so long, Kuroka said. Yeah, try it on, Issei said. Kuroka wastes no time and immediately puts it on. The gem began to glow and gave off slow, like fl snow, slow flames like light. The same Kuroka did when she became her queen. Issei? Yeah? Do it. Make me your mate. Wait, you're talking about the mating bond? There's no going back once it's done, Issei said. I don't care. I wouldn't want to go back, so please do it, Kuroka said. Kuroka strips off her clothes and pushes him on the bed and she gets on top of him. I honestly feel the same way. I have for a while now, Issei said. Then why not tell me about it, Kuroka replied. Because I'm afraid that you'll love me one day and never... I'm afraid that you'll love me one day and never again the next. I've lost too many loved ones too quickly, so I just want to make sure, Issei said. Ah, uh, you were afraid. That's why you took so long to admit that we're dating, Kuroka said. Yeah, I apologize. Don't apologize. Prove to me that you want me just as much as I want you. Anything for my queen, Issei said. I'm forever yours, my king. And this is where the 18 plus parts, and I am not going to repeat that. Let's skip it. Kuroka, I love you. I love you too. And that's the end of chapter 29, Internal Bond. Chapter 30, The Plan and the Threat. Issei and Kuroka are now officially mates. The fallen Dragon King now has a partner. That will be very reason for living. Kuroka woke up to the next morning feeling happier than ever. She remembered becoming Issei's mate and saw three things that proved it. Her mark, her necklace, which was still glowing, and Issei himself who was smiling in his sleep. Kroka looked at the time and saw that it was past 10 a.m. She was too happy and just care and just snuggles to next to Issei. Even in his sleep, he knew that it was her and embraced her. Her peace was later disrupted when LeFay knocked on the door. Hey, what's up? Kroka said. Breakfast is ready. You guys coming? LeFay said. Kroka looks at still sleeping Issei. Nah, I think I'll stay here a bit longer. I'm happy here, Kroka said. LeFay can see that she really means it. She's happy and her brightful, joyful, calm aura is proof of it. All right, then I'll tell the others, LeFay said. Thanks, LeFay. LeFay leave and Kuroka lays back in bed. She touched the cat mark on Issei's chest and saw his memory. She saw the recent ones of the necklace being made. Flashback. So this gorgeous light can only be seen by those I love, huh? Issei said, yeah, even I can see it a little bit. You must really care for me. Ha! <laughs> Well, we are drinking buddies after all, Issei said. Your girl will love it, Azazel said. I hope so. I... But only one thing worries me, Azazel says. I know what you're going to say. What if my former team members can't see the light and they figure out what that means? Exactly. It'll hurt them, Azazel says. I may have forgiven them, but loving them is another story. Shonen will definitely be able to see it, since I see her as my little sister now, but the others, especially her. A part of them should expect this much. They may have changed for the better and do right by the five years of hell will definitely have a lot of pent-up anger, Azazel said. But I let it out. I held nothing back, Issei said. But still, the memories linger like phantom pain, Zazel said. It reduced after I forgave them, but it's still all there, Issei said. And nothing can be done about it. What's done is done. You have friends now, a girlfriend who might even become your mother of your children one day, Azazel said. Having kids with her would truly be the best thing to ever happen, but I don't deserve that honor. Just being in love with someone like her and having her love me is just... I can't even describe it, Issei said. You don't have to. You took a piece of your horrible last and made it into something of a kind and all for her. That, my boy, is pure love. And now that I think about it, you shouldn't give it a shit whether or not anyone else sees it. If they do, 
then they know they are loved, and Kuroka will always be number one. If the others don't see it, then they know where they stand and why. That's actually a good advice. That's actually good advice. It helped a lot. Thanks, Azazel. Now go get your girl a present. The end of the dream. Kuroko holds her necklace and it glowed so brightly the instant she touched it. The bright light caused Issei to wake up to some extent. Someone extinguished the sun, Issei said. Kuroko didn't give a damn about him being asleep. She grabbed both of his hands and pinned him on his back and then French kissed him. Issei was now clearly awake and loved the wake-up call. Both broke the passion of kiss because they needed to breathe. One hell of a wake-up call, I love it, Issei said. You took part of your dark past and made something this beautiful for me and I fucking love you, Issei. She now lay on his body and began to cry. Hey, 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 why are you crying? He says, said, I saw your memories from yesterday. You don't care how your old team might feel, huh? I only care about what you think and feel. You didn't happen to see anything else from my memories, did you? He says, said, like the part about having kids and not thinking you deserve that? Yeah, that. I saw it and believe me when I said that you do deserve to be with happy and as for the kids, well, I kind of want a lot of kids. Like how many, Issei said. As possible as there, because there's so few of us Nekomata left, Kuroka said. Wait, for real? What happened to everyone? The Great War killed off a lot of us. Sharone and I are just two of the few dozen remaining. Issei then smirks. Looks like then we'll be getting busy then. When do we start? In time. Now that you're up, let's go eat. I'm hungry, Kuroka said. Kuroka gets up and puts her on her kimono, but hardly came to her chest. She clearly wants to show off her dragon mark. Issei comes behind her and looks at her. Wow. Kroko blushes. Enough teasing, let's go, lover, Kroko said. Both go eat breakfast with the others, and they notice the mark on her chest. Issei and Kuroka explain, and Issei shows the mark as well. They all congratulate the two. While the other chat, Issei texts her Zex, and Grafia saying that he wants to talk to them. They set up a time for later. As the time came, Issei immediately goes after his team has a day off. So what's going on, Sir Zex said. I want to use that favor, but it's... Two-part favor, Issei said. Interesting. Go on. I want you to ask Kuroka to marry me. Grapefia begins to act like a little girl. Yes! 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 Grapefia said. I can't believe my little bro wants to get married so soon, Sir Zek said. Yeah, I'm ready for it. She even wants kid, but I believe marriage comes first. So Big Sis, I'll need your help getting the perfect ring. And Sir Zex, would you marry us off? It would be my honor, Sir Zek said. I know the perfect place for a ring. When do we start looking? It's best if you take Irina and Zenobia with you. They knows about her taste and jewelry better than I do, Issei said. That's a good idea, Greyfear replied. I'll distract her while the others prepare a setup. This needs to be a surprise, so we should take our time. We did just become mates, so why have all the fun right away? You really have grown up, Issei. It was about time I did, and I'm glad. All right then, Greyfear, go with the girls and look for the ring. I'll talk to the others about how to make the perfect setup, Sir Zex said. Right. Issei, I'll send the ring to you when we find it. Now let's hope I can control my excitement enough so that she won't suspect much, Issei said. With the mating bond, yeah, right. Best to not let her see your memories like before, Sir Zex replied. Better lock them up safe, Issei said. Let's sh start right away. I'll message with Faye as well. We don't want to leave her out. Gravia contacts them and meets them at the calf. She tells them of one of the plan and the girls almost squeal from joy. Sir Zex contacts the guys on Issei's team and plans for the way to distract Kuroka. They all decide to make sure the proposal is carried out after the party celebrating the raiding game win which was next month. Plenty of time to make Kuroka think about nothing is happening to some extent. Gravia found the perfect ring, a solid gold ring with flawless diamonds surrounded by rubies and sapphires. Issei kept the ring in his pocket dimension that he could only access. The guys told Issei to take Kuroka on a date while they prepare the decorations and music plus food and they come home. Eventually, the raiding celebration has come and everyone was looking quite fashionable. Everyone there welcomed Team Red, but shocked to see Keo Keo holding the true Longinus. All the devils cowered in fear until Issei spoke up. Everyone, please calm down. He's on our side and doesn't want to harm anyone, Issei said. They calmed down to some extent, but still stayed alert. The spear was capable of killing everyone in the ballroom, after all. I can vouch for him. He's part of my brother Issei's team. The crowd gasped. Sir Zex, we're doing this? Right here? Issei said. Yeah, we are. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention please? Today is not just a celebration of my little brother winning the raiding game, but it's official debut as a high class devil, even though I promoted him a while ago. Beale and Citra at the same time. What? Yeah, surprise. About time, Riser said. You knew? Sona said. He was too powerful to be just a pawn. It's only natural that someone would see that in time. 
Yoisei, meet my sister Ravel. It's an honor to meet you, Red Dragon Emperor, Ravel said. The pleasure is all mine, and please just call me Issei. As you wish. A gesture of goodwill. She hands him a small box of Phoenix Tears. Phoenix Tears? I can't possibly accept this, Ravel. No need to be modest, Issei. Consider it a small token of appreciation for helping us, Riser said. All right, then, if you both insist, thank you. Ravel, come meet the rest of the team, Issei said. Ravel introduces herself to Team Issei. So, Ravel, what made you want to join us, Kuroka said. Because a part of me feels like it's my responsibility to help make things right for what my brother did, Ravel said. That's not your responsibility, Ravel. It was his choices, not your burden. Don't force yourself. I agree, Kuroka said. But I want for personal reasons. I'm expected to be so much like my siblings, to be strong and fulfill everyone's expectations. And I was hoping that it would be different in your team. I'm sorry for my selfishness, Ravel said. Ravel, you need only ask. We treat each other like family, so if you want to be a part to be free of your burdens, then you're more than welcome. If you still wish to achieve such feats, then do it your own way, and we'll help, Kuroka said. Thank you all so much, Ravel replied. Welcome to the family, Ravel, Issei said. I only have one concern. She's a phoenix. If she accepts Issei's bishop piece, then won't she become a fallen, Bioka said. That's a choice Ravel must take, Arthur replied. You really are smarter than you look, monkey, Sharone said. Here? Really? Bioka replied. I'm okay with it. I'll be missing a phoenix. I'll be missing a phoenix, but I want some freedom even more than that, Ravel replied. I have an idea. Why not both? Issei said. What are you talking about? Issei, Rias replied. Think about it. My piece is mutated to suit me and my team, so why not modify the bushet piece a little bit? Issei said. You can actually do that? Akuno replied. I can try. Issei manipulated the bishop piece so that it won't completely change Ravel from Phoenix to Fallen. The piece began to admit black and golden energy and merged with Ravel. Her golden flame rings were now mixed with black flames. Whoa, Ravel said. I'm the first Fallen Dragon King and you're the first Fallen Phoenix. And I'm still part Phoenix, Ravel said? Yes, and if you ever want to go back to being a pure Phoenix, then you need to only tell me. I made this piece so that it doesn't latch on to your soul like every other piece. You want freedom after all, so why not continue being bound from one team to another, Issei said. Damn, that's some good thinking, Lafay said. Azazel and I will have a field day with that, ha, <laughs> Folly replied. Guys, look sharp. Lord Odin is here and he's coming our way. The All-Father Odin, Issei said? Red Dragon Emperor Issei, congrats on becoming a king officially and having a team. Oh my, who is this? Odin says. Odin said, looking at Kuroka, she's my queen, Kuroka, and my mate. Your mate? Rhea said. And just like you have my respect. Oh, I almost forgot. This is Rosvisa, my number one Valkyrie, Odin said. Rosvisa is a woman who has long silky silver hair with turquoise eyes. Her gentle white skin and beautiful face almost rivals Kuroka. Even her chest was just as big and slim figure would tempt any man. Her gorgeous one-strap dress left enough to just be imagination. Pleased to meet everyone, Rosvisa said. The pleasure is ours, Volley replied. Everyone was surprised to see Volley being the first to respond so quickly. They saw him trying to control his blush, and it was clearly the hardest thing he ever had to do. I want to come here to congratulate you personally, in hope that we would make an alliance with the Fallen and the Devils. Sir Zex already agreed, but I wanted to start with the Fallen Dragon King, hoping to create an alliance with the dragons as well, Odin said. I can tell your intentions are pure. Truly want the best for everyone, all father. I would like to work together. What do you say, partner? Drake said. Peace is everyone's goal, including my own, so yes, you can count me in, Issei said. This is the moment that changes our future for the better, Odin replied. Not for long. Incoming, Orphus said. What? Issei replied. Just then a portal appears in the ballroom. Norse magical circle, Arthur said. Loki, Odin said. Loki, the master of mischief, appears through the portal. I won't let peace exist, old man. Ragnarok is coming, Loki said. You stupid boy. Ending the world will be no good. Go back. Like hell, Loki said. So be it. Odin makes a barrier around Loki and seals him. It won't hold him for long. We only got a few minutes, Odin said. We need to evacuate, Sir Zex replied. Let us fight him. We got three long giant users right here. What about me, Saurorg said. You won't have the last lines of defense in case we fall. Like you said, you'll use the line in case the underworld is in trouble. Well, now it's in trouble. I'll help fight, Sir Zex said. No, stay with the others and create a bar barrier. You have the power to do so in the other Devil Kings, Kroka said. We can handle him. Orphus, will you help? I only observe, Orphus said. We'll help. We won't sit by and let you do all the work anymore, Rhea said. You know that he can kill you, Issei said. Better to die fighting than be a coward, Rhea replied. Fine. So is everyone ready? Everyone at the same time? Yes. 
I'll call Thor and tell him to send Melnir. It's a powerful weapon, enough to defeat Loki. Issa and Vali here, and strong enough to lift it. I'm sorry, but I can't bring myself to fight my son. Forgive me, Odin said. All Father Odin, it's his choice. I'm sure you tried your best to teach him the right thing, Zenobia said. We can handle him. We just need to move ourselves far away to, to avoid the others in the crossfire, Irina said. I'll teleport you guys and Loki to the barren lands a couple of miles out, Azazel said. The seal is cracking, Sharona said. On it, Azazel replied. Azazel teleports everyone there, including Loki. He breaks the seal soon after. Damn that old foo. What the? Odin in the devil fruit sent me mere children? That's just insulting. Loki says. Ross Faisa also teleports to the location. Loki, please stop. Odin might for still forgive you, Ross Faisa said. Loki scoffs and fires a magic blast to send her flying back. Folly catches her. You alright? Volley said. Ross Faisa blushes. Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you. Loki, you're dead, Issei said. Bring it on, Loki replied. And that's the end of chapter 30. The Plan and the Threat. Chapter 31. Loki. Issei and Vali go at the same time. Balance break. The heavenly dragons actually working together. Truly a sign for Ragnarok to happen sooner or later, Loki said. Keep making jokes, Loki, because they will be your last, Issei replied. Why not continue to make them? After my friends, take care of you and your team, Loki said. Loki summons three large wolves. One is the largest, Fafnir, standing ten meters tall. The other two are five and three meters tall, but still a threat. Next, he summons two giant serpent clones of Midgard serpent, Dromda. Both were easily over a thousand meters in length. Oh shit, Azia said. You can say that again. Oh shit. Everyone be careful. Those are his kids. Fafnir's fangs can kill gods, Rias replied. They can? Do wait, did you say that they are his kids? Issei said, yes, yeah, so? Loki is an animal fucker? Oh, I'm gonna be sick, Issei said. No wonder you're the problem, child, because that's just fucked up, Folly said. Kroka actually vomits right there and then. You alright, love? Issei said. Yeah, I'm just feeling nauseous after a bomb being dropped, Kroka replied. Issei could sense through the bond that something else was going on with Kuroka. Just before Issei could ask her, Loki threw a tantrum. How dare you merely and quims mock me like that, Loki said. Then how about, then how would you like us to mock you? We take request, Issei said. Remind you guys of anyone? Rias replied back at the ballroom. Achoo! Why do I feel like someone just insulted me, said Riser. Back to Loki. I will kill you myself, boy, while he takes care of the rest, Loki said. Loki creates a magic circle from a, out a person with long blonde hair and wearing purple armor. The sight made Kuroka's blood boil. How are you still alive, Shalba? Kuroka said. No thanks to you. Now I'm back and I'll kill you and your sister, Shalba said. Touch her and I'll finish what I started, Kuroka replied. Her power flared up and her wings spread. Hold on, Kuroka. He makes you angry, and you're not letting him get. And you're letting him get to you. Issei said. Kuroka controls her anger because of his words. You're right. Should we split up? Yes. Team Gremory will hold off the other serpents. Ravel, Lafay, Arthur, Bjorka can handle the other serpent. Irina, Zenobia, Keokeo, Vali, and Ross Vaisa can handle the mutts. Kuroka, you can handle Shalba, and I'll for Loki, and I'll handle Loki. Issei said. Finally, I get payback for the hell you put me through. Kuroka said. Don't think it'll be so easy, you damn cat. You're not the only one who was enhanced. You may have become stronger, but so have I, Shalba said. Kroka spreads her eight wings and powers up. Issei boosts his power by 10x and transfers it to her. Her power is now greater than she could ever imagine, but it's temporary. You better end the fight quickly, Vali said. But his death will be slow and painful, Kroka replied. Team Rias fights off the one serpents. It was taking their full strength just to do toe-to-toe -to -toe with only one. A clone, who was nowhere near the power of the original possesses. Kiba's sword birth could only scratch the scales. Akino's lightning and light spears barely did anything but hold its back. Rias used her power of destruction. It was going to be the most damage. It actually ripping. It was actually ripping and destroying the pieces of serpents, but only in small amounts. Their energy was being drained completely. Sharona used her Nekomata powers to a whole new level. Her training got to the point where she is now uh, where Kuroka was prior to becoming Issei's queen. Using all that Senjutsu caused her petty body to grow, and yes, this included her tiny tits. 
Her figure was now similar to Irina's in figure and her hair grew longer. Combine that with all the Haruk ability, she became a threat that even a high class devil won't want to fight. She tripped the scales in her favor by using her sage magic on the serpent's spine and used her strength to force it in repeatedly. The serpent was eventually put to sleep after its spinal cord shut down. Ravel, Arthur, Buku, and LeFay don't hold back. LeFay used one spell after one another. Arthur promoted the knight, promoted to knight and attacked one spot on the serpent's side again and was able to create a weak spot instead of fighting one. Buku and Ravel used their strength and flames. Ravel's new golden black flames were unique. Everything she would send, a fireball hit the serpent clone that had spot on world continued to burn. The continuous burning caused it great pain and no matter how much it thrashed in the dirt and the flames burned. The scales gave it some protection, but the weak spot Arthur made didn't. There was exposed flesh and Ravel burned it. Buko summoned his flying Nimbus and went sky high. He started a high speed dive and then leveled out the serpent's weak spot and extended his staff. The extending staff combined with his strength and speed penetrated its side and crushed its organs, causing the several and turning bleeding. Everyone backed off, and Ravel created a large pillar of black flames and sent it through the serpent's mouth, burning it inside out, leaving nothing but bones, which began to burn. They were exhausted after all that, especially Ravel. Team Rias joined them after seeing the dark flames. Ravel, was that you who turned the snake into bones? With the help of my team, yes. Nice job, Shrona said. Shrona, is that you? You look different. You look good, Bioka replied. Thanks. Nice job crushing its organs. Both blush at their awkward flirting methods. Oh, for the love of- Just go already! Jeez! Come on, guys. It's not like that, Bioko said. Oh, please. Even I, too, you like each other. Is it that obvious? Shrone replied. Yes, Akano said with a blank face. Shrone, will you go out with me? Bioko said. Sure. Woohoo! Keo Keo in the distance. Um, guys, I'm sorry for ruining the moment, but we could use some help here, Keo Keo said. On our way, Arthur replied. Keo Keo and the others were fighting one of the runts, aka one of the Fafnir's kids, aka Loki's grandkid. The mutts were stronger than the serpent clones, and put up a far better fight. Irina and Zenobia were fighting another runt while Vali and Ras Vaisa fought off Fafnir. Ras Vaisa summoned the chains of Glefnir to bind Fafnir. Vali divided Fafnir's power to make it easier for Ras Vaisa to bind him. That works perfectly. We make a good team, Vali said. Yes, we do, Ross Vaisa replied. In the distance, Issa and Kuroka were fighting Loki and Shalba. Issa used his queen form to hold his own against Loki, but Issa isn't a god. Even with the boosted gear, he can only fight for so long. Kuroka was doing better and was definitely ripping Shalba a new one. She broke every magical shield he used. He deflected and countered his every other attack and used her fingers to damage his chakra points. He felt his body slowly going numb and could no longer use magic. What the hell have you done to me, Shalva said. You should worry about that what I'm going to do you little by little, cunt, Kuroka said. She digs her claws into his guts and rips them apart. It was basically a fatality from MK. He died slowly and very painfully. Kuroka got her revenge at the last, and this time there will be no consequences. Loki saw Shalva being ripped apart. His serpents defeated, and the mutts were are also losing. He underestimated everyone here, and he knew he would lose if he had to fight them all. No, he would die. He won't risk it. Issei was about to blast him away. Enough, Loki said. Loki sent a shockwave that forced Issei to fall on his back, then flip on his gut. His armor was badly damaged. Enough of this foolishness, Loki said. Loki bound Issei using the binding spell and created a sword. Just before he could stab him, Kroka appeared and tackled Loki. Loki got up and saw that the others were in, on their way. Loki was now dead serious. The instant the others showed up, he cast a powerful gravity spell and bound the others on the ground. Kroka managed to not get caught and tried to undo the binding spell on Issei. No you don't, Loki said. Loki smacked her into the rock and transmutes the stone around her arms and legs. Loki, get the fuck away from her, Issei said. Hmm? Why is she so special to you, Loki said. I said get away, Issei replied. Ha, I see now. She's your mate, isn't she? Loki removes Kuroka's Kiyomo. Don't you dare touch me, animal fucker, Kuroka said. I love it when you try to resist. I must commend you, Dragon Emperor. Your mate is gorgeous. Loki, Loki began moving his fingers over her body. Mm, yes, very nice. Not bad at all for a Nekomana. What was that you said about me mating with animals? Do you wish to be on the receiving end, little cat? Leave my sister alone, Shirone said. Ah, another one. Not bad either. I think I'll keep you two around and let the rest of you die when Ragnarok comes, Loki said. Loki then continues to touch Kuroka, whose shoulders with ever is moving. 
Loki, I'm warning you. For the last time, let her go. Issei said, oh, come on now. You don't mind sharing, do you? Loki moves his hand over her abdomen and halts. It seems you already have been bred. Such a waste. A disgrace to use such a body to carry the seed of a filthy fallen dragon, Loki said. This caught everyone's attention. What? Kuroka, is that true? I'm going to be a dad? Issei said, yeah, I didn't want you to find out this way, Kuroka replied. Everyone was still under the heavy gravity spell and couldn't move. Not even Volley or Keo Keo, but were shocked to hear the revelation. No, Red Dragon, you won't be the father, Loki said. Loki grabs his sword and stabs Kuroka in the womb. Kuroka screams and so do the others. Loki laughs like a psychopath and lets Kuroka drop to the ground motionlessly. Issa looks in horror, everything in his slow motion. Seeing Kuroka laying there, bleeding, her clutching her wound and others screaming trying to get her. Kuroka, the one he loves. The one who made him happy, the mother of his unborn child, laying there bleeding, Kroka looked towards Issei and shed a tear. Issei just snapped. A massive power erupted. It broke the spell binding. Issei slowly got up and walked towards Kroka, and Loki was still busy laughing to notice. Issei used whatever sense he had left to pull out a phoenix tear and used it to heal his mate. She was fully healed physically, but what Loki did won't heal. Kroka wept and Issei spoke in a tone that frightened even her. You're all right now. I'm here, but I need you to do one thing. Free the others and run away, Issei replied. What do you, Kroka said. Kroka saw Issei's eyes and had nothing but anger and death in them. Dregs? What happened to Issei? Kroka said. He can't hear me. I can't stop him. He's about to activate it. Run, damn it. Run, Drag said. Kroka was scared and her life in the others. She got up and fixed her clothes as she went to the others. With the powers and stamina restored from the phoenix tier, with Loki distracted, his grip on the gravity spell was really weak and enough for Kroka to undo it. The others got up and saw Kroka perfectly fine. Then they all felt it. The killing intent. They looked at the source and it was Issei. Is that really him? Volley said. We have to leave now. It's happening and we can't stop it, Kroka said. You don't mean. Yes, it's the juggernaut drive and we'll die if we stay here. Loki finally notices the malicious aura coming from behind him. He looked at Issa and what he saw was tough. Was the stuff of nightmares. What, what in the name of Asgard, Loki said. And that is the end of chapter 31, Loki. Chapter 32, Juggernaut Drive. What are you? Loki said. Several green orbs of light appeared and surrounded Issei, who was unleashing aura so dark that it looked like it was absorbing the light around it. Several voices came from all the orbs, all in sync with Issei's words. I, who shall awaken. I am the heavenly dragon god who stole the principle of domination from God. I mock the infinite and grieve over the dream. I shall become the red dragon of domination. I shall drown you in the depths of crimson purgatory. Juggernaut drive. Issei's army self-repaired, and all twelve of his wings spread out, his horns releasing a long flame that jet ignited the air around it and created an explosive sound. Issei's armor began to change. It was turning from solid metal to almost organic. It changed from red to black, and with red cracks that showed power flowing through them, the power of enraged dragon. Issei began to grow in size until he was 15 meters tall. What followed next made Loki turn white from fear. A god was now afraid. Issei and his juggernaut drive roared while releasing a wave of energy that went on for miles. <clears throat> Loki in his state of fear included panic, looked for a way to escape. He got a glimpse of Fafnir and his pups. He released the chains on Fafnir and called for them. Fafnir and Runts attack now! Loki hoped that their fangs would kill Issei. Issei noticed the incoming wolves and gave them a death glare. The wolves immediately stopped after receiving the glare from being that was now far, far more horrific and powerful than their master Loki. Attack, damn it! Loki said. <clears throat> the wolves cowered in fear and literally shrunk to show submission in exchange for mercy. Issei looked back towards Loki and gave him the same look. Loki, now desperate, tried to run away until Issei seemingly teleported, but it was his speed alone that did it. Loki attacked, but his spells did nothing but piss him off even more. Issei used his tail to send Loki flying through several rocks. Issei put his speed once again and was standing right behind him. He boosted his power and thrust punched Loki into the ground, creating a massive crater. If it wasn't for the Asgardian durability, that it would have been a quick, merciful death. 
Loki now cursed his ability because he was begging for death and for being thrown around like a ragdoll. His pride shattered after one punch. His ego shattered in the wind. The humiliation from getting tossed around by a being he looked down on a moment ago was destroying him. Issei only continues to make it worse. He grabbed Loki by the side of his head and dragged it on the other side and his body threw the gravel. The force and friction eventually started to rip off his skin. Loki screamed from being able to, hand, able to handle the pain. Issei wanted to make him suffer more. The voices of the past boosted gear all tell the same thing. More. More pain. Make him experience true pain. He hurt your mate. He killed your unborn child! Issei separated numerous feathers from his wings and turned them into very thin wires and forced them through Loki's body. Issei heated the wires to cauterize any unwanted internal bleeding. They penetrated his skin and went into his spine, carefully separating the bones from the spinal cord. Loki was shrieking at this point from the truly agonizing pain. It could be heard of for kilometers easily. Issei was avoiding all the vital spots but hitting every nerve and Issei was just getting started. He wielded the wires into Loki's rape shaft and balls. All the nerves were going into overdrive and adrenaline was coursing through his veins preventing him from blacking out. Loki was basically vibrating from the pain. He could no longer scream or breathe. Issei saw this still burning bones of the serpent clone and had an idea. Issei created his signature life spear and impaled Loki through the shoulder. Issei walked over to the burning bones and held Loki over the flames. Issei was barbecuing a Norse god. Vali, Kuroka, Rias, and Serzek showed up just in time to see the horror that would haunt anyone. The sound Loki shrieking definitely got their attention. Loki could only focus on two things. The pain in Issei's face. The face of a dragon emperor that was the bringer of his death. The roar and growl coming from those jaws will be the last thing he sees and hears. Sir Zex was horrified at the sight. Oh fuck, Folly said. Rias fainted at the sight. Sir Zex caught her. Issei, Kroger replied. <clears throat> Loki's facial expressions was created from the purest form of turn and agony. Issei was burning Loki's limbs, first slowly cooked them, then moved up to his torso, then his spinal cord. Issei cracked Loki's skull and opened. He used the blood leaving from the brain and cooked the brain in its fluids. Sir Zex vomits at the sight. The putrid stench was way too much. Loki was finally dead and Issei let out a victory roar, then walked over to Fafnir and the pups were still cowering in fear. Issei threw Loki's body barbecued body to them. He commanded them in a voice that demanded compliance. And seeing Loki's barbecued body and face was all the more reason to obey him. Eat, Issei said. The three wolves smelled the meat and hunger got the best of them. They ravaged the meat off the bones and if it hadn't eaten in weeks. They finished quickly leaving nothing but bones and metal wires in the humanoid frame that show exactly where they attached to the body. The wolves bowed their heads in submission to Issei. We have to turn him back, Roka said. How? He's far more powerful than I could ever imagined him using the Juggernaut Drive. If one of us went near him, then we're dead, Volley said. What if we all try, Ross Vice said. I have an idea. I may be able to slow him down while Ross Vice uses the change of glide pair to try to hold him down. Volley, you can divide his power and Kuroka, we all know your voice can reach him. I know I'm asking for a lot what happened to you, but you can use the bond and calm him down, Sir Zek said. I already lost enough in my life. I won't lose him again. Let's do it, Kuroka said. Sir Zex teleports Rias and the others to execute their plan. Sir Zex called out to Issei who got their attention. Issei didn't even recognize them and attacked them using fire breath and energy blast. Sir Zex dodged them but didn't attack. He couldn't risk hurting his brother. Rasvaisu grabbed the chains and sent them towards Issei, began binding him and he clearly won't hold him for long. <clears throat> Volley, now! I who shall awaken, I am the heavenly dragon, who lost all the principle of domination. I envy the infant and long for the dream. I shall become the white dragon that masters the path of domination. I take you the furthest limits of innocence. Juggernaut drive! Volley says. Volley enters the Juggernaut Drive and charges full speed towards Issei. He clings to him and used his massive dragon jaws to rip Issei's armor to pieces. Issei breaks loose and Volley jumps back. Divide times 70, Albion sighed. All the power Volley divided was too much for him to contain and let it all out through his wings. All of the strain forced him to refer to his regular balance breaker. Kuroka, you're up, Volley said. Issei shrunk back down to his regular size but still in partial Juggernaut drive. Kuroka latches onto him. Issei, you have to come back to me, please. You won. You beat Loki. You beat him for me. Now just come back to me, please, Kuroka said. 
The mark on her chest begins to glow, and so does the mark on Issei's. He released all his energy, and a single fire breath attack straight into the air. The sky was now burning. Having no energy to maintain the juggernaut drive, the armor begins to crack and he falls apart. Issei opened his eyes and comes to his senses. Issei, thank heavens you're back, Kuroka said. Volley and Serzex got a slight headache after hearing heaven. I'm back to my old self, Issei said. So you remember what happened, Volley said. Not all of it, just bits and pieces, but I know what I did and what happened prior to it. Kuroka, did we lose them, our unborn children? Because I can't sense the change in the fell I felt earlier. Please tell them they're okay. Sir Zex looks to Volley who nods. Sir Zex is heartbroken. Even Ross Vice sheds a tear. Or two even only knew Kuroka for an hour or two. I'm sorry, he said, but I can't sense it either. We lost them, Kuroka said. No. No! Issei said. Issei fired off a few dragon shots at the bones and completely destroyed any remains of them. Both began to cry in each other's arms. The others soon appeared after no longer sensing Issei's haunting aura. They all saw the devastated looks on their faces of the two crying. Rias looked to Sir Zex. They all did thinking about the same question. Did they lose their unborn? Sir Zex sheds a tear, and that was the confirmation they hoped it would never come. They all sat next to the two. They all sat next to the two but lost what they could have been best blessing in their lives. Almost everyone cried. Ross Vaisa couldn't take the crying because she feared too much such a fate, and seeing it happen to her comrades made her cry as well. Volley was there too, and her was accepted his shoulder to cry on. The three small wolves appeared and walked over to Issei. Sir Zex was ready to kill them, but the wolves showed submission. They walked over to Issei and Kuroka and put their paws on them to comfort them. Even they understood what they were crying about. Issei and Kuroka saw only the one who provide support and accepted it. The wolves gave light kisses and tried to ease the pain. After the whole ordeal, they eventually went back home in distance. Orphus saw everything. Orphus didn't care about much or show much emotion, but seeing a fellow dragon suffer was something she wouldn't stand for. Orphus was pissed and opened a tear in a fabric of reality and entered the dimensional gap. Right in front of Orphus was Great Red, a large red dragon around a thousand meters with four wings. What do you want, Orphus? Great Red said. Your help to end the suffering, Orphus said. To see you asking for my help is a sign that there's a great threat. What do you need? Great Red said. Back at the ballroom, Issa and Kuroka walked through everyone without saying a word, and their team followed, and their faces meant that they should be left alone. Kuroka kept her hand over her wound where she was stabbed. Most people figured out what had happened because they saw it. Sona and Sarawag went to Rias, and they sat all together. They all went through and quiet a lot. As team... Issei had left, Sir Zex announced what had happened to everyone, and yes, even Odin. Odin couldn't hold it in no more. He cried at what had happened. He blamed himself for being weak. If he was better father or tried harder to help Loki, then things would have been different. Issei would have kids with Kuroka, and he was the reason that they lost their unborn child, or maybe even children. Everyone went home to process what had happened. Issei and Kuroka cried and wailed in their room at the loss, and the others just alone in the dining room. Ross Vaisa stayed with them to both hear Odin's choice and Odin's orders. Volley got a message from Orphis that caught his attention and made him very angry. Volley immediately left and followed by Ras Vaisa, who wanted to make sure that he didn't go doing something stupid. Everyone took turns to check the couple and made sure that they knew that they had their support. For a while, this continued. They mourned together. Even the wolves wouldn't stay with them and didn't leave their stide. And that's the end of Chapter 32, Juggernaut Drive. Chapter 33 The Aftermath Volley and Ross Vaisa went to meet Orphis. Volley, please tell me where we're going to meet or please tell me where we are meeting Orphis, Ross Vaisa said. We're going to the dimensional gap. She says that she has something important to show. The dimensional gap, Ross Vaisa said. Yes, Volley replied. Both go to the designed location and see what Orphis is waiting for them. You brought a friend, Orphis said. We can trust her, Volley replied. Very well. Come. There's something you should, two should meet. There's someone who you two should meet. Who might that be, Ross Vice said. Orphis had already opened a tan in the dimensional gap. That would be me young Valkyrie, Great Red said. Great Red, Volley replied. Greetings, host of Albion. I see you brought your girlfriend. Girlfriend, Ross Vaisa said, I just met her recently. You're jumping to conclusions, Volley replied. Volley tried to act cool, but his blush was hard to cover up. Ross Vaisa was no different. Stop teasing, Red. We need to tell them the plan, Orphus said. Ah, uh, yes. The plan to kill him, right? Volley said. Who? Ross Vaisa replied. The true leader of the Chaos Brigade. 
So Zach Scrafia, Team Rius, Team Riser, Team Sona, Team Biol, Seraphal, Ajukin, and Zazel all came to visit the couple in their time of sorrow. Issei made... Issei and his mate continued to mourn the loss, but Issei was troubled by something else. Him killing Loki was something he promised Odin that he wouldn't do, but he did it anyway. He took away that man's son from him, and forever, in being someone who just lost his soon his soon-to-be-born child could sympathize. The wolf shrunk to the size of small dogs and would sit on him in Kuroka's lap. Looking at them reminded of how Issei literally barbecued their master and their father and fed them to him, a cruel act he didn't know he was capable of. Others tried to comfort him, but to no avail. Kuroka didn't say anything because she couldn't do anything. A month had passed and things started to return to normal. At least it was for the others, but not for the unfortunate couple. What are you thinking about, Issei? Kuroka said. Odin, and what I'll say to him when I have to face him. I killed his son and that's worst, and I don't regret doing it because he nearly killed you and killed our other unborn. I don't know if I'm wrong or if I'm right. I just don't know anymore, Issei said. He tried to bring Ragnarok upon us, Kroka said. I know, but I still look away a man's son. I don't know if that will fuck the alliance with Asgard or not. I tortured and blasted and fed him to his own wolves, Issei said. You know... They seemed to like you more that they cared for your Loki. They never let out our side since the fight. Yeah. It helped a bit to ease the pain. They might be beast of legend, but they still crave companionship, Issei said. So why not make them our familiars, Kroka replied. If that's what they want, Kroka said. The wolves came to Issei and sat on his lap. I can only have a few... I can only have one familiar, you know, Issei said. I can take one of the little ones, but who will take care of the third? We will let them decide, Issei said. A family meeting will solve that. Yeah, let's go see the others. We've ignored them for a whole month now, Issei said. The couple came out of their rooms and called everyone. They all came running. You called, Pyoko said? That's an important issue we need to discuss, Kuroka replied, which is adopting one of the three wolves that they're familiar, Issei said. That's quite the surprise, to have one of the legendary beasts as the familiar. It almost sounds like a joke, Issei, Bali said. Well, it's not. Fafnir chose me, and one of the runs chose Kuroka, but who will be the third? Issei said. The third looked at the group, and walked around them. The third wolf eventually picked Volley. Well, Volley looks like you're his master now. Uh, I guess I am, Volley said. So, Byuko, I heard you asked about my sister, Kuroka said. Byuko was now sweating bullets. Yeah, I did, Byuko said. And what did she say? She said, yes, good. So be good to her, and if you're not, then you know what'll happen. Bioko and the others clung to the wall and so did the wolves from fear of a woman's wrath. Of course I'll be good, I promise. Kuroka returns to her usual self. Okay, perfect. So who's hungry, Kuroka said. You guys go ahead and eat. I got some errands to run, Volley said. You mean your date with a certain silver-haired Valkyrie? Everyone goes, ooh, I do like her, Volley said. We're happy for you, Volley, Arthur replied. I think we should start renovations. We'll need a few more rooms since Ravel joined the team and needs a place to stay, Issei said. I'm happy in sharing a room, Issei, Ravel said. It's up to you. We're building each extra rooms regardless. If you want to use one as your own, then it's fine, Issei said. Thanks, Ravel replied. So, Byuku and Volley, have you two went on any dates yet, Keo Keo said? No. After the fight with Loki, no one had the will to go out, Byuku said. I had just recently met Ra's Vaisa back then, so I didn't want to make it weird, Volley replied. You should ask her out. Both of you clearly like each other, so do it, LaFay said. But there's a problem that I don't know if it's alright. I get all flustered around here, Volley said. Then why not make a grand gesture, Irina said. Like how Issei did for Kuroka when he made the glowing necklace, Zenobia said. That's a good idea. Azazel can help, Issei said. Sounds good. How about a double date, Pyoko? I'm in, Pyoko replied. Things finally looked almost felt normal, but Issei still dreaded talking to Odin. Issei and Volley go to visit Azazel, who welcomed them in open arms. As the guys who told their plan, Azazel was more than happy to help. He helped create a set of earrings from the tiny pieces of gem left behind, the creating a necklace for Kuroka. Volley infused some of his hair into the substance for scale. The thin earrings were now silver and red. Time came. Issei and Kuroka went on a date to the park. Both their familiars and miniature states played together. Oh, how they loved to finally get to play. Kuroka and Issei couldn't help but envision a kid or two of their own playing with Fafnir and Runt. Are you thinking what I'm thinking, Issei said. We can sense what the other wants, so yes, I want to to try having kids, Kroka said. Byoko and Sharone went on a double date and Volley and Ross Vice after enjoying movie, both couples went their separate ways. 
So did you enjoy the movie, Volley said? I did. Deadpool 2 was hilarious. His fourth wall breaks are perfect, Ross Weiss said. They love Deadpool and Asgard, Volley said. They don't, but I love the MCU. It's my guilty pleasure, Ross Weiss said. I see you are a woman of cultures as well. Ross Weiss laughs and leans on Volley. It was now or never. I have something for you, Volley said. He hands her a small box. Ross Weiss looks and opens it. They are beautiful, Volley. You didn't have to do that. I wanted to. You helped us, and who knows what had happened if you weren't there, so thank you. She puts on the earrings with a smile and blush. How do I look, Ross Weiss says. Volley seems a shrine from the earrings, pure white light coming from red and white gems that com complicated her delicate skin and her soft silver hair. But what stood out more was her turquoise-colored eyes. They had shine in them that Volley just noticed. His heart skipped a beat. Too beautiful to describe. You're really sweet, Volley. Thank you. Rusvisa took the initiative and kissed Volley. Volley returned her feelings and has been waiting to do that for a while. Volley goes home and Rusvisa stay in the hotel room. She has liked him for a past month. Every day she would do her job and send reports about what was happening to Issa and Kuroka. The... That was the order given to her in half reason on staying on Earth. Issa and Kuroka had just finished their date, and they had both ended up with going to a place where they first met. The forest where Issei began his transformation, learning to love again. It was almost sunset, and the couple watched as it went down. Hey, love, there's something I want to ask you, Issei said. Yeah, Kuroka replied. Issei pulls out the box from his pocket dimension. Will you marry me? Issei said. Kuroka was speechless at his question. She stared at Issei, who was now on his knee and holding the open box revealing the ring tears streamed down in red shrieks and she laughed a bit when she said in a low voice yes kuroka said sorry i didn't quite catch that yes i'll marry you kuroka said isa was overwhelmed with the joy and put the ring on her finger kuroka looked at the ring and then jumped on isa then making out one hell of a way to end a date volley on his way home encountered orphis it's time Orphis said. Volley got serious. Now let's make it quick. The sooner he's dead, the better. Orphis and Volley go to the dimensional gap and meet up with Great Red. The three teleport together in the Chaos Brigade headquarters. Let's do this. Volley said. I have an idea, Great Red replied. What? Orphis said. I am the Dragon of Dreams. You are the Dragon of Infinity. Let's combine our powers and fuck up his mind and soul. We can create nightmares that would haunt him for eternity. Whoa, Volley said. Yes. An, an excellent idea. We shall make an example of him, then kill him, Orphis said. Great Red fires a fireball and destroys everything in sight. A being emerged from the rubble and came to face them. Hello, Grandfather, Volley said. Rizavim Lucifer, you messed up, Orphis said. Orphis and Great Red, just what is going on here, Volley? I thought we were on the same side, Rizavim said. You sent Loki, didn't you? Yeah, and he still hasn't returned. Where is he, Rizavim said. Dead, Orphis said. What? You hurt all my friends. No, you hurt my family and for the last time, old man. First my father and then my mother, Volley said. Rizavim smirks. I just first the Holy Grail out of the little vampire girl, and I didn't give her a choice. Either her or her little half-vampire friend. With this grail, I can alter reality, boy. What can you possibly do with the Orphis and Great Red? This, Great Red said. Both Great Red and Orphis combined their powers and shot a small bullet of energy towards Rizavim. He put up a shield but was too distracted to notice Volley already in his balance breaker and already behind him. Volley divided Rizavim's powers and the shield became too weak to stop the bullet. It hit Rizavim in the head and he fell to the ground. He started having sheezers and convulsions immediately. What did you do to him? And making him feel fear, Great Red said. Rizavim's mind was constantly being torn apart by the dragons and creatures of the dark. Images of his sons whom he killed appeared endlessly spewing words filled with venom. The pain he feeling was intensified endlessly, making him each nightwear worse than the last. Let's go take him to the Devil Kings, Orphis said. Wait, Volley replied. Volley picks up the Holy Grail Rizavim dropped and went to the lab hidden underneath the HQ. Volley sees the girl on the table, barely alive and even able to her sacred gear being removed forcefully. She immediately started showing signs of improvement. He placed it in her and emerged with her again. Volley looked around and saw the little vampire in the cage. Hey, you okay? What's your name? Volley said. My name is Gasper, sir. Please don't hurt me or Valerie, Vampir the vampire said. I am not here to hurt you or your friend. I'm here to free you. Rizavim can't hurt you anymore, Volley said. Is Valerie going to be okay, Gasper replied. She'll be fine. Do you want? Do you two want to have a home? Volley said. No, sir. Rizavim destroyed it when we tried to escape, Gasper said. Then come with me. My family and friends would love to have you in their home, Volley said. 
Gaspar goes with Vali, and they take Valerie with her. Orphis takes Rizavim to Sersex along with Valerie and Gaspar. Great Red said his farewell and went back to the Dimensional Gap. As soon as they arrive at Sersex's office, Orphis dropped Rizavim before him. Is that Rizavim Lucifer? Sersex said. Yes, my grandfather and the leader of the Chaos Brigade. He sent Loki. I'll call Odin here immediately. He needs to know this, Sir Zex said. Sir Zex calls Odin along with Azazel, and the Devil Kings ask him to come right away. He'll be there soon. Now, who are your friends, Sir Zex said. The sleeping girl is Valerie, and this is Gaspar. They lost their home to Rizavim. Pleasure to meet you, sir, Gaspar said. Likewise, Gaspar. Gaspar is quite young and us very shy. Sir Zex found him to be adorable and thought about their living situations. Gaspar, I'm sorry for what Rizavim did to you and Valerie, and hope you will accept my offer to help you find a new home. My sister is like a devil, and I would treat you like family. You don't have to accept right away. Take your time. As long as Valerie is with me, then I'm happy, sir. Glad to hear it, Gaspar said. I mean, Gaspar replied. Sir Zex said. Valerie wakes up, gathering her wits, and she is kept on to speed on the events. She's caught up to speed on the event. Sir Zex calls Rias and her team who show up in two minutes. Rias, there are two people who need a home. I think being part of your team would be perfect. Meet Gasper and Valerie, Sir Zex said. The introductions continue. They hit off perfectly. Both Valerie and Gasper accept her proposal to become part of her parage. Gasper was now her bush-up and second Valerie her pawn. Valerie called Issei and the others, including Ross Visa. Volley called Issei, my vibe. When they showed up, Odin arrived at the same time. Issei was dreading what he was now about to face. Grafia, Ajuka, Saraval, and Azazel also came. Hello, everyone, Odin said in a broken voice. Clearly, he was still heartbroken about Loki. Everyone bowed in respect. Issei avoided making even eye contact with him. I'm glad everyone is here. Vali and Orphis brought forth the end of the Chaos Brigade. The man squirming on the floor is Rizavim Lucifer. In the head of the Chaos Brigade, he also made Loki attack us. Everyone spent... I wide open and gasped. But why? Ajuki said. My grandfather was a beam here was of the old devil kings, a direct offspring to the original Lucifer. He wanted the new ones gone by using the Holy Grail, and that's where Valerie comes in since she wields it. He also planned to release the Triaxa, aka 666. I found those notes in his lab. Azizla choked on his scotch. <sighs> But Rizavim being a direct descendant is very strong. So how did you manage to do this to him? Sarah Fall said. Vali tells them what he and Orphis and Great Red did. If anyone would excuse me, I need to speak with the Red Dragon Emperor alone, please, Odin said. Those words made Issei stiff. And that's the end of chapter 33, the aftermath. Chapter 34, the unvoidable conversation and craziness. Odin walked into a room with Issei, and no one dared to follow. This was something both Odin and Issei needed to talk about alone. The doors sealed shut, and no one dared to even listen to their conversation. The silence was too much. Oh, father, I... Issei started. I don't blame you, Issei Hyoto. Loki was my son and my responsibility, and I placed that burden on you and your family because I was too weak in every way that mattered. My weakness caused the loss of your unborn and nearly your mate, and nothing can make up for that. I am truly sorry, Odin said. Why? Why don't you hate me? I killed him. I burned him alive and fed him to wolves so that you don't hate me. Why not kill me? Hurt me. Get some revenge or something. Do anything, Issei said. No, Issei. Loki made his choices that led him to his fate. He always was the black sheep of the family. Yes, I lost my son, but you're lost, you're unborn, your every soul nearly perished if Loki unleashed Ragnarok, and I'm partly to blame for that. If I had tried harder to stop Loki, then things might have been different. Issei just sat there in silence. His brother Thor really did treat Loki like a brother and his equal in hopes that he would change for the better. It's clear that Loki was a dark soul who meant to end up the way he did. I can only hope you can find in your heart to forgive this foolish old man, Odin said. There's nothing for me to forgive when you did nothing wrong, Issei said. Odin shed tears of regret and sorrow. Issei couldn't hold it anymore and hugged Odin. Issei kept repeating the same two words. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Issei said. Issei also cried and let out all of his frustrations. His guilt lessened when Odin also hugged him. There's something I would like to ask for you to do for me, Issei. Odin said. Anything, just name it, Issei said. Please take Ross Vysa into your team. I can tell just from looking at her she's happier with the White Dragon Emperor, Odin said. Only if you come to the wedding and visit us when Kuroka and I have children, Issei said. You're getting married at such a young age too? Odin smiled and laughed. 
Very well, I accept your terms, he say. Odin said. Thank you, he said reply. Also, I heard that Kuroka and Vali adopted the wolves, Odin said. Truth be told, they chose us. All they wanted was to stop fighting and enjoy themselves with those they care about, Issei said. You continue to amaze me and everyone in Asgard. To kill a god and make a legendary beast you're familiar. Truly the stuff of legends. Now tell me, where do you plan to get married, Odin said. Not sure yet, Issei replied. Then how about Asgard, Odin replied. Wait, are you sure about that, Issei said. I am, Odin said. I'm grateful for the offer, but worry not. Thor and I had a talk. He feels the same way as I and holds no ill will towards you. He would love to meet you, Odin said. Do you mind if I talk it over with the others? I had already asked Zerzex to marry us off. Of course, my boy, Odin said. Both shared a heartfelt hug and walked out the door. Everyone was there waiting for them. Tense atmosphere was gone. Both Issei and Odin had found peace. Everyone waited either Issei or Odin to say something, but Kuroka was most relieved that Issei wasn't hurt. Sorry to keep you waiting. I'll get to the point. I hold no grudge against Issei and Serzex. The alliance will exist between us. That's what I assume you expected to hear, Odin replied. Honestly, I am relieved and confused at the same time, Serzex said. Anyone would be. I accepted my mistake, which was not handling my son's actions. I placed my responsibility as a burden to the young ones, and they paid the price for it. And for that, Kuroka and Issei, I am sorry, Odin said. There's nothing to forgive, Kuroka said. The very same words Issei said. Also, you can have your wedding in Asgard as a start for making things up to you, Odin said. Kuroka and everyone else. A wedding? In Asgard? Wait, a wedding? Kuroka showed off her ring. Yeah, he offered, and I wanted to ask you guys if you were okay with it, Issei said. Grapia grabbed Issei by the collar of his jacket. You already proposed and didn't tell us, Grapia said. Everyone except Odin, Ross Vice, and Orphis, including the vampires. Yeah, why didn't you tell us? All of the girls went shopping for the ring together, and you didn't even tell us? Kuroka said yes. When did you propose? Where? Details, bro, Irina said. I proposed at our favorite spot in the forest. Issei replied. He did it just as the sun set. It was quite romantic, Kuroka said. Wait, sunset? As in yesterday, Lefei said? Yeah, why? And you didn't tell them, Issei? Ross Weiss said. At the moment, Issei knew he fucked up. Oops. I'm going to kill you, Grapheus said. You all went ring shopping without us, Rhea said? Accurately without you three, Sharone said. Rias, Akino, and Azia look at Sharone. You knew? I helped them pick the ring, Sharone said. That left the three with Dark Cloud over their heads, and it was a great choice, Sarone. Issei said. Thanks, bro. Odin can't help but laugh at the sight. He sees Ross Vaisa and Volley laughing together in the corner. B walks over them and says, Ross Vaisa, I need you to do one last thing for me, Odin said. Of course, all father. But what do you mean by one last thing? Be happy. Join Issei's parage and quit being my guard. Choose your own path, but I think you already know what you want, Odin said. Odin said, looking at Vali. But all father, I'm Valkyrie, sworn to protect Asgard, Rasvaisa said. You did. Loki was always the biggest threat to our home, and now he's gone for good. You have fulfilled your duty and live your life. Vali, I trust you take care of her. She may have been my guard, but she doesn't mean I don't know how a beautiful soul when I see one. Take care of my dear. I have to go back now, Odin said. Now tearing up. Thank you, all father, Rasvaisa said. And thank you. Everyone in this room will have songs sung in their names, including you, the only Valkyrie that helped stop Loki and Fafnir, Odin said. Odin teleported, and the others bid farewell. Guys, I wasn't included in the ring search either, Seraphal said. She was hurt by being left out. Seraphal may be a devil king, but she's still a young maiden in a heart, one to enjoy life. Oh shit, everyone said. Well, how about all of us girls go looking for a bridal and braids dresses together? Just us girls while the guys look for suits, Kroka said. Grapheus' eyes had stars with alarming grin. When do we start, Grapheus said. In a month or two. I want to enjoy engaged a little longer, Kroka said. Yeah, it's the best to enjoy every bit of it, Ravel replied. Everyone slowly started to leave. Ajuka and Azazel asked Issei visit them at the lab later. Now only Issei and Rias were left. Rias? Issei said. So you're getting married and soon. Just last year, you were a thin, scrawny guy. Now look at you, a high class in love and getting married, Rhea said. Yeah, quite the change. Issei, am I invited to the wedding? Rhea said. Of course you are. Why would you ask that? Because I want to know about the gem that Kuroka wears. The amount of light you can see from it depends on how much you love someone, Rhea said. Issei just sits there in silence. I overheard the others talking about it. They could see it, but I couldn't, Rhea said. Rhea Issei just sits there and says, Rias, I know you don't love me, but by now I had hoped you would a little bit.
Rias said. Ise said, Rias. Do you not love me? Not even a little bit? Just a little bit isn't too much to ask? Rias started to not weep. Rias! Ise said. Ise shouting got her attention. Do you have the pawn piece? Ise said. Always. Ise takes the lawn piece pawn piece from her and transfers some of his energy into it. Now you do the same. All right. Rias does as she's told. The pawn piece is now black and crimson. Rias didn't understand what it meant. It has both of our signatures on it. We are linked in a small extent. If you ever feel in trouble, then hold the piece and call out my name. I'll be there, Issei said. So are you my pawn again in a way? Rias said. No, more like partners and fellow kings. See you around, Red. Take care of Gasper and Valerie. You got chance to do right by them, Issei said. Issei teleports home and leaving Rias alone. Rias looked at the piece and it was glowing. She smiled. Thank you, Issei. Kuroka, be good to him. I sure wasn't. Kroka said, and that's the end of chapter 34, Unavoidable Conversation and Craziness. Chapter 35, New Beginnings in the Epilogue. As time went by, everyone was at peace knowing that the Triaxa won't be released and Rizavim is basically a schizophrenic now and forever. He was later used as an example for all those who wanted to cause trouble. The crime rate dropped significantly. During more meetings between the leaders of Devil, Fallen, and Odin, they all grew closer and the alliance was strong. After a month or two, a happy couple was preparing their wedding. The guys had already picked suits, but the girls took their sweet time shopping. Issei, Vali, and Gasper were training just to kill time. What's the way to get stronger, Gasper said. Well, one of the tricks is to pretend you're stronger than your opponent, Issei said. Is that what you do? Oh no, my power is no illusion. I can fucking demolish you, Issei said. Gasper just looked up in surprise. Vali, Albion, and Drag laugh internally. So I gotta ask, will you accept his offer to get married in Asgard, Gasper said? Honestly, I'm not sure. For Odin to be so kind after what I did, it feels wrong if I did just accept but I hurt him and I refused, then I'm just insulting him, Issei said. It's quite the dilemma, Drake said. Issei, what if Kuroka says yes? What would you do for her sake, Albion said. I would do anything for her, Issei replied. Odin offered it to both of you. Yeah, he did, Issei said. As the guys conversed, some of the girls came back. We're back now, guys, Kuroka said. Hey, babe, there's something I need you to talk about. Uh, there's something we need to talk about. It's about Odin's offer, isn't it? You know me so well, so I need to know. Is it the right thing to accept it? I can't understand how you feel after what happened, but I think we should. It might be some good we can imagine, Kuroka said. That is a possibility. You should do it, partner. For once, I agree with Drake, Albion said. All right, then if you guys say so, now what I'm all think about. Getting married in Asgard. I never imagined that I'd be get such an aw. Believe it. Even Ross Weissett thinks that it's the best thing ever. That reminds me. Back in the office, Odin asked me to tell you this, Folly said. Tell me what, Issei said. Accepted Ross Weiss into your team. Wait, what? Issei said. Vali told him about what Odin said, and Ross Vaisa was happier to hear. Issei was constantly being surprised by Odin's kind actions. Anything. If she's happier here, then so be it. I owe Odin a lot, and this is a good start, Issei said. Vali texts Ross Vaisa the good news, who showed up right away. Is it true? You want me in your parade, Vaisa said? Yes. Three reasons why. One, Odin wants you to be happy. Two, you yourself wants this. Three, Vali clearly loves you, and that makes you family. Those earrings were custom made for you, out of courtesy of Vali. Vali was now giving Issa the death stare for spilling his secret. Issei takes out his rook piece. Welcome to the family, Ross Vaisa. Issei says, Thank you for accepting me, Ross Vaisa replies. The rook piece merged with her, and three pairs of black fallen wings came out of the flecks of silver instead of red. Vali was memorized. Ross Vaisa felt amazing and began to fly. She looked at Val Val Vali midair, who would gesture for him to come up. Vali spread his ten devil wings and flew up. So these earrings were custom made, huh? Ross Weiser replied. Yes, I wanted to give you something beautiful and unique, Vali said. Oh, really? Well, then come back to the house. It's finished and has extra room, so let's check them out quick, Ross Weiser said. She winks and smiles seductively. Vali smirked and agreed. They immediately flew home and started to get into their rooms. Vali closed her eyes for a minute and don't open until I tell you, Ross Weiser says. Vali said, okay, sure. Vali covers his eye and then heard the sound of clothes being changed and he couldn't but he helped but peek. After doing so, he removed his hand and his jaws dropped. Hello, Vali. I told you not to open your eyes, you naughty devil, she teased. Now... That you saw it, how do I look? Wow, just wow, Vali said. Now let's have a little fun. 
basically they have sex. You're welcome for spoiling that part. I'm not going to read that shit. Um, both got right to it and didn't give a shit. Too bad poor Ravel and Shred is sitting in the next room were blushing and shaking after writing the Pegasus comet. Poor girls, and it only got worse after hearing Issa and Kuroka in the other room doing it too. Hey, I got a surprise for you. Check this out, Kuroka said. Holy crap, Issa replied. Come and wrap your present lover. They got right into it. This time, Ravel's head caught fire and Shrona's tails were stiff and let out a purr. She clearly getting the wrong ideas on what to do with Biyoku later. After the day ended, Issei went to visit Odin and talked to him about his offer. Issei told him exactly why he was hesitant and Odin smiled at his honesty. Odin insisted that they get married in Asgard and Issei asked what he wanted to do. Alright, I'll accept your offer, but we have... But we want to we want you to be the grandfather of our kids when we have them. I would love that, Issei. Having one or two little ones playing around would be nice, Odin said. There might be more than one or two. She and I want a big family over time, Issei said. Ha! I love kids. The more the merrier, my boy, Odin said. Also Rosvice had joined us. She and Volley are happy together. I'm glad to hear it. When is the wedding? Odin said, in two weeks from today. Okay, I'll see you all there. The hall is grand and large enough for everyone. Just come to Asgard and see yourself. We will handle the decorations, Odin said. Thank you all, father. And thank you for making me part of your family, my boy, Odin said. Both share a heartfelt hug and go their separate ways. They prepared for the wedding and decorations are complete. The time had come and the happy couple were officially married in front of their friends and family. Sir Zex and Odin officiated the wedding together in making them an official married couple both in Asgard and the Underworld. The ceremony wasn't perfect, was went perfectly and everyone enjoyed. Sharone was the maid of honor, Gasper was the ring bearer, and the three wolves of the Lion of Nemo played in the open fields. Orphus and Great Red joined the party, scaring quite a few people, but everyone vouched for him as it was all good. Everyone danced and enjoyed themselves. The newly married couple looked at Vali and Rasvaisa dancing that saw they both secretly hoped for, the mating bond. Celtic markings appeared on Vali's hands, while ten small devil wings-like markings appeared on her back. Luckily, she was wearing a blacklist dress, just like the other bridemaids. They also spotted Saji and Corinna having a good time. Looks like another wedding isn't too far off, Kuroka said. Yeah, I wonder how he will propose. I hope better than my original plans, Issei said. Original plans, Kuroka questioned? I wanted to propose at home, but that was too cliche, and then maybe at a party before Loki, but I didn't. How come, Kuroka said. Because that moment was ours alone, and if I did it in front, so many people of peer pressure would have been cruel. I didn't want any outside force making you guys say yes or no. It was your choice alone to make, Issei said. You really amaze me, lover. The place where we got engaged was a perfect place, Kuroka said. Yeah, it was truly the perfect place. If it wasn't, then we would have made it so. I got you something, Kuroka said. Issei opens the small box inside his pregnancy test and it's positive. No way, Issei said. Yup, we're going to be parents. Ha, <laughs> our family will just be a whole lot bigger, Issei said. Issei was happy, and so was Kuroka. Sir Zex and Gravia show up. How are the newlywed married doing, Sir Zex said. Issei shows them the pregnancy test and they barely contains their composure. Would you be their godfather? Gravia can be their godmother, if that's okay with you, Kuroka asked. We would love to, at the both at the same time. I always wanted to be a godmother, Gravia said. She was no longer acting like a composed queen. What's going on here, Odin said. All oh, father, you're about to become a, the all grandfather, Issei said. The drummer among the musicians couldn't resist. But dum I like the sound of that. Congrats, you two. Issei and Kuroka at the same time. Thank you. The news spread like wildfire, and everyone congratulated them and cheered them on. The warriors of Asgard bound respect to Issei the Fallen Dragon King, a god slayer and tamer of Fafnir. Songs were written about everyone who took part in stopping Loki. They all became legends. In time, they enjoyed their honeymoon. Issei went to Azazel and found out why the Juggernaut Drive looked different as compared to the past users of it. His king piece allowed him to use it without using his life force, but a time limit existed in its place. Issei could only use it once a month, and Issei and Kuroka had five kids right off the bat. Most of them were girls, but all had tiny fallen wings and cute cat ears while their son had mostly dragon and fallen features. Vali and Ross Faisa also got married after two years and had two kids of their own. Kiba and Tsubaki also got engaged and so did Byoko and Sharone after three years. Odin was now a proud grandfather and very happy. The kids absolutely loved him. The wolves played with the kids and protected them. Members of Team Rius were practically their aunts and uncle while Gasper and Valor 
Kyrie were elder siblings by bond. The remaining members of the team Issei bonded with Team Rias to the point where Arthur and Keo Keo, Rias and Akuna respectively. Keo Keo, Arthur, and LeFay later became devils to live a long life. Saji and Corinna got married and had three kids of their own. Since all of them were supernatural beings, they all lived a very long, a very long and happy life. That is the end of the Fallen Dragon King. Chapter 35, New Beginnings. That is the end. Thank you so much for all your guys' support, and that it will be the end of the story. Remember, please stay in tune for the next stream. What if Issei found out the truth will be the next series? I am recording this currently today. I did see the poll. I know it won by like a whopping 68%. Remember to please stay tuned for that stream. I keep forgetting to mention this stream will be on Spartanic, my YouTube channel, by the way, just for specifics. And no, yes, the girl will be sitting right next to me. This isn't like a Discord call. This is like a real life thing. So once again, subscribe to my second channel if you haven't already. What if Goku was the God of Destruction Part 2 is out. Once again, thank you all for the support. It's been absolutely amazing. Please, let's try to hit a thousand likes for this bomb ass part. And once again, I really do appreciate all the support. It really does mean the heart. It really helped me out of the hard times, if you understand what I'm saying. Thank you so much for all the support once again. Without further ado, Spartanic Arts DXD out. <laughs>